Okay, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to day two of the um, Crofts programme here in the main arena. We've got the most fantastic day yet again for you. We've got agility, we've got Hewitt to music, we've got tons of displays. So make sure that you do visit us throughout the day. So we're going to start now with our first competition of uh, today, which is the Crofts Novice and Medium ABC. Obviously, though, we do need a judge, so let's put our hands together, please, for Mr. Bill Glover. So as you can see, the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that we don't have any contact equipment in the arena at the moment. So that's the A-frame, the seesaw, and the dog walk. And the reason for that is that this is a jumping competition. So we have jumps and weaves and tunnels. And uh, later on today, we'll have part two of this competition, which will be the agility. And then we'll put the two results together and we will come up with one winner. So we're ready to start with our first handler. This is Karen Young with Natta, working bearded collie. Roxanata is the full kennel name. So Karen leading out. She's gonna show us which way the course goes. So the long jump has gone down, so that's five faults. And that's a, a refusal there. And another refusal, so we're on 15 total. So if we get three refusals on the course at any point, that does mean an elimination. So we're on two at the moment. That's our third, unfortunately. So that is an elimination there for Karen and Natta. So what does ABC stand for? ABC stands for anything but a collie. So if you're watching agility events throughout the year or any of the other events here, you'll see that it's often dominated by collies, border collies that is. And um, so we have this competition to show that actually there's other breeds that are brilliant at agility and uh, can enjoy it as well. So that's what the ABC stands for. So next to go is Richard Britton. And his dog is called Neville. This is a Springer Spaniel. Neville the Nutcase, apparently. So there's that left turn onto the long jump. way around, down through the kennel club, jump into the weaves. They have to go into those weave poles with the first pole on their left shoulder. Into the tunnel. <laughs> Just getting those turns in. Jersey's all about speed and accuracy. So kind of trying to cut those turns down as much as possible to make the time as quick as possible. So here we go, into the final straight. Well done, Richard. 38.485, that goes into first place. Well done. So next to go. This is Debbie Prince with Poppy. North of the border again. And uh, this is a Labrador. Working Labrador. Highfield Princess is her full kennel name. She's going to turn left on that jump. Handlers can choose which uh, way they handle things as long as they follow the numbers in consecutive order. So you'll see all sorts of different options being used by our handlers depending on how their dog runs, etc. So down to the tunnel. Around the back of that one. Down into that final straight. Oh, well done, it's another clear round. Well done, Debbie. 40.915 goes into second place. Well done. Okay, so. <laughs> Look at that celebration. Just got to do it again later as well. Well done. Okay, Gemma Swan is on the line. This is Harry Bobo. Is his uh, pet name? This is Jack Russell. 
Ollie's little halo kid is his uh, full kennel name. He was competing here yesterday, actually. I believe in the novice. Might have got that wrong. But he was definitely running in the main room yesterday. Wow, that was a good jump. Later will be running reverse order, so Gemma's trying to do her best to get a good time. Come on, Gemma. Yeah, well done. Well done. 35, 6, 1, 0 is the time, goes into the lead. Well done, Gemma. So, next to go, Kirsty Campbell. With Inka, this is a Hungarian Vista. Jason do Napos or Napos. So that's five forms for the pole. Kirsty will know that she needs to keep going. Because you just never know what everyone else is going to do when you are accumulating the results. She still has to go through those two wings. Even though the pole's on the ground. Coming down to the tunnel. It's a good time. That's a lovely turn there. Come on, Kirsty. Well done. 36.291 with five forks. Okay, next to go. This is Isaac Hartley. This is uh, Kira. This is a crossbreed. Kamikaze Kira. So that was a refusal on the long jump. So he picks up five faults. Took the obstacle the wrong way. Well, went past it actually. So that is a refusal. I think Isaac was running in the YKC ring yesterday as well. So he's uh, had a good craft. Oh, he won it apparently. I've just been told. So that's brilliant. Well done, Isaac. Here we go into the final straight. Oh, a lovely run. 36.816 with five faults. Well done. So, next to go, Elaine Sherwin, Kamikaze Kira. Sorry, wrong dog. I was looking up there. Sorry, this is Gavin, the pointer. My apologies. Penwest Phoebus at Tarmok. Just picked up five forts there from the pole. So Elaine does a lot of canny cross. Um, if you like running with your dog, it's a, kind of like a new sport in, uh, in dogs, and it's absolutely brilliant. You can do 5K, 10K, children can run. And uh, Elaine is a little bit of an expert, competes in Europe, etc., with her pointers. And her poodle. Two to go, one more. Well done, Elaine. 38071 and five forks. Okay, Tracy Hunt is next. This is another Hungarian Vistla. This is Loki. Russell Valley Rakos. So just getting settled on the start line. And uh, actually he won last year. So that is the one that he set himself. Down to those wheels. Very nicely through there. Okay, so 
Next go. Tracy Morrell, Zebedee, German Shorthead Pointer. A.T. Harvest Harlequin. So this is a German Shorthead Pointer. And uh, if you're inspired by the agility that you're watching today, if you'd like to give it a go with your dog, then just go and talk to the Kennel Club officials at the Kennel Club stand and they'll be able to tell you all about the clubs that are uh, in your area and how to register your dog so that you can compete. Oh, lovely run. 36.925. Well done. That goes into second place. Well done, Tracy. So, time to beat is 35.610. Next on the line, Kirsty Dix with Purdy, the Labrador. Pilning Polly is her full name. That's a nice turn there. Left, left, left. A bit wide. But no faults in Kurt, just lost a little bit of time. Down into the tunnel. Kirsty swapping sides there. Put the brakes on to make this turn. Well done. Getting a good turn there. Down to the tunnel. Driving nicely into that. Around the back of this one, two. Go on, Kirsty. Go on. Yeah, well done. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. By point one. By point one of a second goes into the lead. Well done. That's why in agility we have three hundredths of a second on the clock because it can be so close. That's cracking run, even with a, a slight waste of time as well. Down in the far corner. So Kirsty Dix goes into first place with Pilming Polly. 35.594. And that was the large dogs. As you can see, our ring party are putting the jumps down to medium. So the mediums will start. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. We'll start a new competition. And our timers just making sure that the timing is all set for the new height. So all the dogs in agility are measured, and that's to make sure that they are jumping and a, um, a height of jump and hurdle appropriate to their size. So we're ready to go with the mediums. So first on the line, this is Lara Staplehurst. This is Alfie, the English Springer Spaniel. Alfie's surprise. And uh, he's a rescue dog. So again, in agility, you don't have to have a pedigree dog. You can have a mixture, Heinz 57, rescue, and they can be pretty much any size. Lovely, into that tunnel. Come on, Lara, you've got four to go. Let's have a flying finish, two to go. Yes, well done. 34.021 is the time. Goes into the lead. So, next on the line, Angie Edwards. This is Flossie, miniature Australian Shepherd, nine years old. Dynalong's got to be crackers. Fifth time competing here. That's a good record. She's going to bar all the way around the course. So, nicely into those weaves.
Okay, yeah. next to go. Yeah. Helen Anderson, this is Demon, Kelpie Cross. He's 11 years old, can you believe? Agility yeah. champion, a dinky yeah. demon of Down Under. Just goes to show agility, keeps the dogs fit, keeps the handlers fit. And it's absolutely a great way to enjoy an activity with your dog. All oh, very nicely through there. This team have been in this main arena several times. As you can see why, has become flying down to the tunnel. Oh, the post guard are on five. Still all to play for though. Still one round to go. Well done, Helen. Oh, look at the time. 31, 277. Uh, with five faults though, so goes into second place. Okay, so next to go, Hayley Telling. This is Teal, Shetland Sheepdog. Three years old, new illusions by enchantment of five colours, the full colour name. So looking to beat 34021 on the clear round. I'm sure Hayley is going to give it a good go. Getting that front cross in early, telling the dodge is going to turn. Giving those verbal cues for a right turn as we go down to the tunnel, round the back. Three to go, come on Hayley, one more. Yes, look at the time, 31.985. On a clear round, well done, goes into first place. That is the new time to beat, 31.985. Okay, next to go, Chantel Carita with Savannah. Nico Satira, my sun seeker. Five years old. Represented GB in Spain last year. And her third time in Crufts. Getting those crosses in early. Giving the dog all the information it needs to make tight turns. We're coming flying down to the tunnel. Come on, Chantel. Three to go. Come on, let's see. Come on, come on. Oh, just beat. 31.761. Well done. What a cracking run. Goes into the lead. Well done. That was a cracking run. Okay, so next to go, Marita Davis, this is Harvey Spitz, Harvey Bird, first time agility, another rescue dog, those turns are good, Okay, so next to go, Abigail Doxford. This is Wickfield, working Cocker Spaniel. Okay, so my apologies. This is Sarah Woodley, Vasily's General Lucius. Great turn there. Three to go. Come on. Come on, Sarah. Wonderful. Five faults and 33.97. Okay, so next to go. Abigail Doxford. This is Wigfield. This one's Wigfield. Working Cocker Spaniel. 
That's five faults there for a refusal. Just got a little bit distracted. So, time to beat. 31 7 6 1 on a clear round. Come on, Wingfield. through the tyre, one more, well done, 38-5-6-5, goes into seventh place. So, next to go, on the start line, Sam Lane, this is Dime, Cocker Spaniel, Agility Champion, Woodhouse, Quartz of Dimonic. Agility Champion. As you can hear, he's going to shout his way all the way around the course. Come on, Sam. Into those wheels. So, time to beat 31 7 6 1 on a clear round. Oh, the pole's gone. We've got to keep going. You just never know what's going to happen later on. So, we're on five forks. Let's see what the time would have been. Come on, Sam. Well done, 33.061. Five Force goes into seventh place. Okay. What a cracking competition we're seeing here this morning. Next to go, and our final dog in the novice medium ABC, this is Julie Dunlop with Bert. Michael Cocker Spaniel, Hillside Gems Topaz. So that's uh, refusal there, that's five faults. Okay, so come on, Bert. Those weaves proving to be a little bit of a draw down there. Two to go. Wonderful. 37, 7, 6, 6 goes into eighth place on five faults. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes our novice and medium ABC. Stay with us. We've got the presentation coming up, and then we're going to go straight on to the Cruff singles and heat.
My husband decided we were going to go to Battersea Brands Hatch and I'm thinking, oh my God, we're getting a dog. What's it going to be? This big white barrel came flying at me and I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm in love. What is this? This is mine. I'm taking him home. He was sent to me, absolutely sent to me. My name is Sally. I'm 27 and this is Bowser, my English Bull Terrier, who is three. <laughs> The speculation is that I've had multiple sclerosis for over 10 years. It wasn't until November 2015 that I got the official diagnosis. Multiple sclerosis is a disease of the nervous system. Every day I have to take about six pills in the morning, six pills at night. Every month, every 28 days, I go for a chemotherapy infusion. Because of the way the lesions are in my brain, it reduces my sense of feeling in my hands, which Bowser helps with, because I can feel myself touching him, even though the sensation isn't as good as it used to be. It also affects my legs, motor functions, my short-term memory is affected. 
So having the memories and building the memories with Bowser, it gives me something to link to, so I'm always remembering something happening. We'd not long had Bowser, and we'd been for a big beach walk. I came back and I wasn't feeling very good, and I'd passed out on the sofa, but his dad was outside in the garden doing some gardening, and he said, he was just insistent, you've got to come inside, you've got to come inside. There's something wrong, barking at him, chewing on the stuff that he was trying to use and when he came in and found me it was it was a medical emergency and when I'd got sorted and I was sleeping so much Bowser was just laid with me, laid on me, laid on the areas that hurt. He seems to know where the pain is and pressing his weight against me and pressing himself against me. He was just there. He wasn't interested in sitting with anybody else, he just wanted to sit with me. He gives me, he gives me joy. It's more important than what he does for me physically and, you know, nudging at me because certain things don't smell right or don't seem right to him. He's walking along this journey with me and just gives me a desire to put one foot in front of the other again. I am uh, Joel Sir and this is my assistant dog Caddy. I am uh, inflicted with uh, autism, ADHD, uh, and it's kind of com complicated and hard uh, to be yourself when, when uh, you, you have uh, two disabilities uh, that basically affects uh, every single uh, part of you. He finds the world hard, he finds everything hard. It was hard because everything was focused on Joel, you know, where was he, you know, how was he doing, how was he coping. He couldn't go for walks because he would, you had to hold on to him. We needed help being a normal family, a normal family. Paddy was almost like a light, a light at the end of the tunnel. It was like, you know, yeah, people can see now you know, that we need help and Joel needs help. He goes uh, almost everywhere with me. Wherever I go, he follows. From the minute Joel wakes up, Caddy's there, to the minute he goes to bed, except for when he's at school, we, have, we drop him off. Wherever Joel goes, Caddy goes, and they're attached. And Joel's karma, Joel's karma walking around. A lot of times, Joel was left out. Joel, Joel was excluded from things and still is in a lot of ways excluded from things and that's why having Caddy there as a constant companion for him is, you know, is brilliant for him. The difference for Joel is their smiles, whereas before it was just pacing. Caddy's helped him communicate loads, loads, especially as, you know, is, is bringing his words out and everything and talking to people and actually interacting with other people. Caddy's done that uh, via if we're out with Caddy and somebody actually comes and talks. The difference now in four years is unbelievable. Paddy senses Joel's not coping before any of us, and he's the one that grabs the toy and he will run upstairs or run wherever if they're not in the same room, and actually that alerts us that Joel's not coping, and then we can get to Joel. But Caddy's always there for us, always there for us. With Caddy by him side, Joel's whole. Joel can connect with the world better. Cad Caddy is, uh, well, my guardian angel. If, I, if I, he wasn't here, I wouldn't be here either. working dog Charlie. Charlie's seven years old and he's an English Springer Spaniel. Um, Charlie's an AES dog which means um, arms explosive search so it basically means he can search pretty much any type of terrain, um, buildings, vehicles, 
anything like that, and we can go and search for weapons and explosives. So I had Charlie now for two years. Um, I picked him up um, at 102 Squadron um, when I completed my AES course, so I've become qualified to handle him. And he was um, the dog that I got allocated as soon as I got back to regiment. Me and Charlie will only deploy as a team, so the bond's there, especially when it comes to things like when you're doing, when you're firing on the ranges, you can really see the trust between the handler and the and the animal. And when he's searching, he's just a big game to him. So what we're doing is we're putting all that trust into that dog, and that's where the training comes into it. So he's been out on operations now a couple of times, um, different tours of Afghanistan. Um, and what he'll do is he'll just um, give that level of assurance to the, um, to the guys out on the ground looking for IEDs and the bombs in the ground. And that's his just sole purpose, really. I'm sure if you ask any of the guys that have worked with military working dogs before, like any of the infantry call signs, what they'll say is that they love the dog. It's that, it's that level of assurance that a human can't give or a bit of kit can't. The guys are just so much happier with the dogs being out in front of the patrol and got a dog handler with them. You ask him to do a lot of things normal pet dogs probably wouldn't do in this trade, and he allows you to do it, especially that bond, and he really does like to please the handler. And I'm quite lucky with him really, he's good. Um, he really does work hard and he really and he really does enjoy what he does. Okay, welcome back to the Genting Arena here at the NEC on day two. It's fabulous Friday day, of course. Okay, can you put your hands together, please, for our judge this morning, Mr. Bill Glover. Super course earlier on this morning, which Kate commentated on. And you've now got myself, Nigel Davis, now commentating on the singles, craft singles. So this is part one this morning and the uh, part two this afternoon at two o'clock. So if you're interested in watching the agility and fry balls throughout the day, clock the times as you walk out the arena, they're all written down there. So, our first competitor this morning, someone's got to go first. We're starting off with the medium dogs. It's Nicola Wildman with Zuna Kelpie, agility champion, and this is uh, going to be their last Crufts. So, Crufts will be a big retirement point for them. 11 years of age. And Zoom, as you can see, thoroughly enjoying it. Nice testing course as well. Bit of work here and a bit of work there. Fairly flowing on other parts as well to make the time up. So we're coming across now, pulling back through towards the tunnel and flowing nicely at the moment. Back up and coming towards the end of the course now, pushing the dog to the left-hand side of the tunnel nearest the commentary point and we're turning with three to go. Come on Nicola, come on Zoom, can we finish on a clear? We can. 40.11, the time to beat at the moment, they go in at first place. Next to go, we should have Becky Sargent working Dolly, Border Collie, seven years of age, obviously another agility champion. Now, Dolly's the most perfect pooch of a lifetime. Privileged to be on the green carpet with her. She gets her fuel from Wolf Tucker and her power from Maria Johnson. So a lot of support out there. First dog I ever competed with was a Merle, and as they always said to me, Merle's have got a bit of a mind of their own. This is looking like it's got a good mind. It's flying down those weaves. Super set of weaves up to the top corner of the arena. Pushing around for number nine, nicely handled. Oh, 
lost a little bit of time there, a little bit of a wide turn, so I'm sure we can make that up somewhere else on the course, hopefully. So pushing out again. In the tunnel, but the right entrance, we're okay, we're coming out over 17. I think Handler's having a little bit of a look as we're going around reading the map. Over the last obstacle, yes, 35.78. Becky and Dolly going into first place, well done, super run. So, next to go, we've got Linda Cummings working Cooper, working Sheepdog, seven years of age. First show since October last year as he's coming back from a tendon injury. So, Linda and Cooper, let's see what they can do. So, nice flowing start at the moment, great weave entry. Really nice, we can see the handlers staying by the obstacle and sending them onto the weaves like that. Used to dream of that years ago. Nowadays, it's common part of agility. And unfortunately, we rolled the pole and got into the wrong end of the tunnel. So we've got an elimination, unfortunately. They'll continue working around, obviously, uh, as Linda's put there, Cooper coming back from an injury. And we've got it right now. So, two parts to the uh, competition. And uh, Linda will be back later on with Cooper for part two. So, next to go, we should have Natasha Wise working Dizzy, Border Collie, 11 years of age. Dizzy, likes all, like all dogs, is one in a million, and I'm honoured to be her owner. Super partnership, these two. Super partnership. So, we're away. Nice and quiet, as you can see. Everyone's got the different methods of handling. Natasha, they're pushing down a little bit more there to the entry of the weaves. Great set of weaves as well. Flowing nicely, the out command there. Dogs with a bit of verbal as well. Got to get the dog in the right pace now. We're all right, we're looking good. We're turning back into that tunnel. Coming back up the line to push out, pulling the dog round to the left, and coming back to the walls, that tunnel again. We're in the right entrance. We've got four to go. We've got three to go. Come on, Natasha. Come on, Dizzy. Yeah! Super run. 31.838. 31.3 out, and they go into the lead. That'll be the time to beat at the moment. Next in the mediums, we should have Stephanie... Spezia, I'm going to say Spezia. Apologies, Stephanie, if I pronounce your surname wrong. Working Luna, a pug cross to Chow Cross. Interesting, four years of age. He was a rescue dog from near Detroit, and now been living in the UK for the last three years. First time at Cross has qualified for both singles and teams. If I had more time, I'd read the rest out. But we want to watch the run, so we're away. Unusual crossbreed as well. Let's see how we go. So, Lula was a little bit verbal. And Stephanie taking it easy on the vocals. Again, plenty of encouragement pushing the dog down to the weave entry rather than hanging back, making sure they get it right. Now, here at Crufts, the biggest and the greatest dog show in the world. If they can get that clear round, which will send them on this afternoon to hopefully then go in on to maybe a position, a trophy or a rosette at the final later on. We're in the top. She's having a quick look. It's one of those courts, this is where you've got to remind yourself when you get in that middle bit. We're in the right end of the tunnel. Come on, we've got four to go. We're looking pretty good at the moment for Stephanie and Luna. How we do? We want to go. Yes, 40.65. Puts them into fourth place. Well done, Stephanie and Luna. So, next in, we should have Abigail Doxford working Wigfield, working Cocker Spaniel, six years of age. Wigfield's a rehome Spaniel and can be a bit of a handful to train. So, they're del she's delighted they've qualified for Crofts. I think I remember right recognising that pink collar. I saw this one yesterday. Very nippy little dog, tight on the turns as well. Oh, flipping heck. I heard the weave command from here, but obviously maybe a bit of body language there, a bit of bending towards that tunnel, you never know. Dog picks something up and we've got an elimination. What a shame. So, continue working around. Obviously, they may as well uh, make use of the service and etc. The, the atmosphere obviously a little bit quieter than it is going to be later on this afternoon. That's not a problem. We're in the tunnel. We did have a look at the wall though. So, let's give them a round of applause. They come across the uh, finishing line and lucky there. We will see them later on for Abigail and Wigfield. So he's back again, it's Steve Richardson working Libby, crossbreeds to ten and a half years of age, agility champion. Libby's been such an amazing dog to own and train and doesn't own me one single thing. 
So, Steve and Libby away. Steve's one of these dogs that tends to be with his dog a lot of the time, pushes on, and Libby goes with Steve, as you can see. Again, he's come down towards the entry to the weaves, making sure he gets a good weave entry. First cop, Paul's got to be always with the dog's left shoulder, as they say. So, speed's picking up now, he's turning around now, back over 12, into the tunnel. He's got no problems memorising where the course goes at the moment. So, we're coming towards the end, how are we looking? We're into the right end of the tunnel, which is the newest one to me. 17, we've got three to go. Come on, Libby. Come on, Steve. Super arm, 35.75, and goes in a second place. That's more like the Steve Richardson we all know. He had a bad day yesterday, Steve. He's back on form now. So, next in, we should have Sean Ellingworth working, maybe. Border College, seven years of age. Maybe one Crofts champ in 2015. European, yeah, European champion 2013, also won Olympia in December. So here's another one to watch. Oh, we just had a little bit of a flick there on the long jump, but we're okay, it didn't go over, we're okay, it's still standing, that's the main thing. It's a bit like if a pole bounces up and lands on the cup. It's not passed as a fault. So, nice commands, nice handing, which we can wide there towards those moves, but we're all right, just picking maybe up now as we come towards the end of the course. We're in the tunnel, we had a look at the wall. We're going back over 17, we've got three to go. Come on, Sean, come on, maybe, yes. 32.69, I would imagine that's in the second place. Super run there from Sean and maybe. I think it's oxygen time. So she's back again, it's Linda Cummings again, working Phoenix, working sheepdog, five years of age. So wide turn there, a little bit of time lost obviously there between two and three. Maybe we can make that up. Oh! That was obviously very close. The judge hasn't moved, so we're okay at the moment. We obviously decided we were going for that tunnel, but we didn't go down it, that's the main thing. So as you can see, a little bit wide on the turns, and as you know, if you do compete, if you don't compete, obviously it's not very new to you. Um, it's all down to the hundreds of a second, a bit like uh, anything athletic. We had a look at those wheels again. I definitely heard right, but we're dicing with death. Oh, we've rolled a pole, what a shame. Nevertheless, we're not eliminated. Well done, Linda, for steering Phoenix around there. I think you deserve a Blue Peter badge for that. Unfortunately, I haven't got any with me. Next to go, this is the last of the mediums. Joe Gleed working Rumble, a crossbreed, four years of age. Rumble's four years old, a Springer cross, Cocker Spaniel, second year at Crufts. Very honest and easy going dog. And by far the chilled out part of our partnership. So the dog's chilled out. And Joe's sometimes getting a bit stressed by the looks of it, but what a sound of what I've just read. But at the moment we're looking all right, nice steady start. Okay, the quicker dogs you kind of think that's going to be miles quicker than some of the steadier dogs, but the, small, the slightly slower ones sometimes make up the time because they're not quite going that wide on the turns. We had a look at the weaves. We're coming towards the tunnel. We're in the tunnel. We're going back over 17 and we've got three to go. Come on, Joe. Come on, Rumble. Yes. Clearing 37, one, two, and gone into fifth place. So that concludes the medium dogs. I'm just going to pass my paperwork over to the ladies. And we'll be back very shortly with the large dogs. So without the, throughout the day today, as I say, if you uh, don't already know, you might as soon as you walk down to the arena from uh, Hall 1. There are the big notice boards up, the big signs there, which the KC provides to let you know what's going on. So we're on this morning, uh, at the moment, obviously, we're, obviously we're on the uh, medium, small and medium and large Croft singles heat. That's followed by the Croft team, okay? Medium, it's a medium final. Uh, later on today, as far as agility goes, we've got a rescue dog agility as well today. That's worth watching. And agility on at two and five past th three, if I remember right, and fly ball as well. So, our first dog is at the top, we're just getting the timing sorted out now. It's great to have electronic time. As you can see, we also have Rob. Rob's a bit of a fixture here, I think he's here 12 months of the year, waiting for every year, a bit like us all, really. So we have a backup there with a stopwatch as well, just to be on the safe side. 
So our first competitor is Dave Munnings, working boss, border collie, seven years of age. And he does say that boss sometimes struggles a bit on the carpet, but I don't know whether this has changed since last year, but I must admit the surface to me feels a lot more like what you would have outdoors. Nice start at the moment. It's quite spongy and it's not quite so hard. Nice flowing start there for Dave and Boss. Lost a little bit of time on the two, but we're all right, we're picking it up. So, we're coming towards this rigid tunnel. We're in the right, correct side, over 17. We've got three to go, what do you reckon? Are we going to be clear? I think we are, yes, 34.49. Dave and Boss setting the time there for the large dogs. Next in, Anthony Clark with protest. Border Collie, four years of age. So, a fairly young dog. Anthony with protest. So, nice steady start. See, they're Anthony not putting too much into it. All he needs to put in, keep the dog motivated. Nice wee entry. <laughs> slightly ahead of the dog now, encouraging it round for the wide turn. Over number nine. Now the speed's picking up. This is where they need to make a bit of time up, maybe if they have got a little bit steadier. Good tight turns into the rigid tunnel. Picking the dog out, pushing out, picking up again, and we're coming towards the tunnel. We're in the right end. We're over 17. We're turning around to the left hand side with three to go. Come on, Anthony. Come on, protest. Super run, 33.550. And they've got into the lead. So, next to go. We have Natasha Wise working Pebbles, Border Collie, four years of age. Pebbles, first time in senior class at Cross Qualified after just three months of eligibility to compete. He's truly a very affectionate dog off the agility course, and we're very excited to be running across. This is the first time I've seen uh, Pebbles go. And there we are, Pebbles decides the tunnel's away. Look at those weeds though, oh my word. That was quick, that was low. We'll obviously be seeing a lot more of this dog over the uh, years to come. The dog's enjoying it, that's the main thing. It's the experience, first time at Crufts. Into the tunnel, we're on the right side of the tunnel. 17, we'll give them a big round of applause as they come across the finishing line. Unlucky there for Natasha and Pebbles. But as I say, early days yet, four years of age, and I'm sure we'll be seeing more of the two of them. Definitely Natasha, obviously. So, next to go, we should have Natalie Mitchell working Teak, working Sheepdog, seven years of age. Teak is, and I would like to thank the Smart Veterinary Clinic and Grunch Dog Food for their great support and help in being here today. So, Natalie and Teak away. A nice, steady, quiet start. Nice set of weeds. Pushing around for number nine. Good turn. Back up now towards number 12. Flowing nicely at the moment. An ideal world, the clear in this stem puts them in that chance, but I say for later on this afternoon. We're in the tunnel. We're over 17 and we've got three to go. It's a nice steady run. We're looking like we're going to be on a clear round. We are 34.83 into third place. Super run from Natalie and Teak. So next to go, Heidi Cleland with DJ. Border Collie, six years of age. DJ's an honest and talented boy and always tries to get it right. I really couldn't ask for more. So, Heidi and DJ just picked up a five folks there for a roll pole. So, round number nine. Ooh, very well, well handled that was. I think we were supposed to go to the left, dog went to the right, but we recorrected it. Good handling there from Heidi. It's not me barking, by the way. OK, over 17 with three to go. They've got five faults at the moment, but a good time otherwise. Nice run, well done, 35.00. Puts them into fourth place, there you go. Just caught that pole on the back leg there, just as we came over. 
So, next in we've got Dan Shaw working Geek Border Collie, four years of age, and just going by the dog's name Geek, don't think this dog's a geek, it's not. Are you ready for him? Four years of age, another youngster. So, we're away. Over number four. And of encouragement there from Dan, direct to the dog. He's got his dog down to the weeds. You can see that at the entry. Pushing around nine. Both picking the pace up a little bit there for that so sweeping curve round to number nine. Nice turn again round from 11 to 12. We're in the tunnel. So we're going to push out, pull back through over that to 12 on the other side. Into the tunnel. Bit unsure. Oh! Just unsure there, a little bit of verbal, a little bit of hand, he wasn't quite sure. We've done five faults in a good time, I reckon, of 35.19. Five faults and puts him in a fifth place. Well done, Dan and Geek. So, next to go, Karen Marriott with Puzzle. As you can hear, very vocal. That's the dog, of course. Nine years of age, Crofts is one of their favourite competitions of the year. Very grateful to be proud and qualified for this competition. Puzzle has competed here for the past few years and always has lots of fun. Just to let you know, that's just Puzzle like letting you know that we're on the course. And we are. Great weave entry. Just saving Karen a little bit of leg work. She's pulled the dog around to the nearest side of that wing. Different way of handling it, everyone's got their own ideas. Oh, it just rolled the pole us. Well, it's 17 from where I am, but obviously it's not 17 on the course. So five faults at the moment, obviously they've got to put the dog through that, through, through the wings, even though there's no pole there. And we're coming with three to go with five faults at the moment. Nice run there from Karen and Puzzle in 35.63. Puts them into sixth place. He's back again with a large dog. Now it's Steve Richardson again. So, Steve Richardson working Digit, crossbreed, five years of age. This is Digit's first time competing at Crufts. Let's hope she enjoys it as much as I do. So, Digit, first time at Crufts. Just roll the pole on number three, so five faults at the moment. Beautiful weave entry, Steve's about halfway up. Great into the weaves, swapping sides again. He's pulling around to the left side of the hurdle. Maybe that runs better for him, also for Karen as well. Over 12. Plenty of vocal there from Digit. Steve again, vocal pushing the dog across. He's coming towards the tunnel. Digit has a quick look, we're all right, we're 17. We've got five faults, but it's a quick run. Two to go. Come on, Steve, come on, Digit. 33.98 with five faults into fourth. He's definitely back on form this morning. Right. Next to go, Matthew Griffith with Quincy, Border Collie, eight years of age. Quincy's an awesome dog, one of the nice happy chappies. Represented Great Britain in the European Champs and the FCI as well. Again, another hand who's uh, very quiet with his hand. He needs to use the vocals when he needs to. It was a point sometimes, I remember years ago when we used to take classes, you'd teach people to do agility and they'd be shouting like, don't do it, do it with no voice. And they'd go, I can't do it without a voice. You can, it's surprising. Into the tunnel. A little bit wide there, we're going towards the far side, but we're all right. It's a nice clear at the moment. We've got three to go. Come on, Matthew. Come on, Quincy. 34.41. Puts him in a second place. Super run. So, next to go, we should have Heather McLean working shock all the way from Scotland. They're here again. Uh, working shock, uh, working sheep dog, five years of age. She says, my fate dog, Donna Kane, played that card well. Donna has some lovely rescue dogs, I must admit. Pushes the dog out for number seven. Beautifully worked through those weaves. Sweep in turn, handler hanging back, beautifully handled there by Heather. So we're back on course now. Lost a little bit of time there. We need that clear. We can get that clear. Give us a shout later on. It's steady at the moment, flowing nicely. Oh, we had a quick wall, bit of, bit of bit look at the wall, but we're okay, but unsure, but we're all right. We've got three to go. We've got 
Well, that caught me out. Unfortunately, that's elimination because we skipped the last one. Oh, what a shame. I was just about to say two to go, wasn't I? Oh, dear me. Right, next to go in the large. We have Lauren Langman working Fiji, border collie, six years of age. She says Fiji's full of herself. She's a super fun dog to work with and is part of the 2016 GB squad. So you are watching what I would term as the cream of the cream as far as the UK. Agility goes, agility champions. And when I say the UK, I don't just mean England. Obviously, we've got Scotland, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales. And this is looking nice. I'm going to hand the mic to Alan in a minute. He's going to have a go. Unlucky there for Lauren. That was nice until that bit there. We'll see him later on. Right. I think I might say nothing on this one. Next to go, we've got Dave Munnings working fame. Border Collie, five years of age. And he says, Fame's an incredible dog and I'm very lucky to have her. She's a real character at home and always tries her hardest. Wow, nice wee entry. Smooth and turn. Top corner now, pushing around for number nine. And Dave keeping the vocals fairly quiet. Over 12. So just using the voice when he needs it. In the tunnel, looking good. I'm going I'm to say in the tunnel, we're all right. Yeah, super run, 32.98, I do believe. Dave's taken the lead, super run for Dave and Fame. So, next to go, we should have Sean Anningworth working Image, Border Collie, four and a half years of age. Image's second time at Cross, she came third in the singles last year. So they've been here before and done this, they know how it works. Just roll the ball, picked up five faults. It's okay, we can cope with that. Just don't want the elimination scenario. Ow, 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 ow. We have to do that. Dog's got to do it. The pole's off the ground. Obviously, if you are agility, uh, let's say knowledge, knowledgeable, you'll know how it works. But they still have to do it with the pole on the ground. And the dog, obviously, as you can see there, jumped it as well. So two to go, one to go. Over the line. It. Whoa, what a time! 32.83. That would have been very close. But Sean will be back later with Image, I'm sure. Well, what can I say? Here he is, he's back again. 27th year at Crofts. 27th year at Crofts. It's Greg Derrick, working rehab, border collie, eight years of age, and Greg's informed, Greg's informed me earlier on that this competition has now been going for 25 years, because he won the first one in 1993. So there you go. What an achievement, though, to be a handler competing here every year. So, Greg and rehab. Are away. So a nice little bit of opal air from rehab. I don't tend to hear Greg say too much to his dogs. Again, he's another one of these handlers that likes to put a lot of leg work in, keep the dog motivated. And he's coming to all the left hand side nearest the commentary point around the obstacle there rather than the other way around. A little bit of a wide turn there coming around towards number 12. We're in the tunnel. Greg pushing the ground now, looking like we're in the right end of the tunnel. Over 17 with three to go. Come on, Greg, come on, Rehab. One to go, 35.50, nice steady round, put them in contention later on this evening. So, next in, Laura Chudley working Troy, Border College, six years of age. There you go, I didn't know Laura was here, she's had a... Uh, a son in her, only a few weeks ago. And she's here competing, fair dues. Plenty of vocal air from Troy, as you can see. Not well here, I should say, let alone see. So, Laura pushing Troy out for number nine. Sweeping round a 12, into the tunnel. See, that's the only time he goes quiet when he goes in the tunnel. 
in the tunnel again. Nicely angled. Tighter turn. Come on, two to go. Over the finishing line. 34.11 in third place. Well done, Lauren Troy. And our last large dog to go. And it's Bonnie Quick working Ivy, Kelby Cross College, six years of age. Was that the Scottish tune on there? I like that, but it does say on there she's from Somerset. At any rate, Bonnie and Ivy, cheered on by everybody, I'm sure. Always nice to have the Scottish group here. The most vocal team around, without a doubt. Sweeping turn into those weeds, obstacle number seven. Out, she says. Out, indeed, we get there with Ivy working nicely. Bit of a wide turn again. Lost a little bit of time. A big jump, that was, as well. Interesting, we actually rolled the pole. So, as you can see, through the wings. Ooh, that was close from where I'm standing. Three to go with five faults at the moment. Come on, Bonnie. Come on, Ivy. 36.28. Pops them into 13th, but I'm sure we'll see them later on. So, we're going to go down to the small height now. So, uh, as you can imagine, obviously, the small dogs can't jump the larger heights. Although, there's probably going to be one or two out there that probably can for all I know. You never know. So, just going back to what else is on today, I'll just run through it just in case you haven't read the board outside. Uh, rescue dog agility is on at 25 to 2. 2 o'clock is the Croft Singles Heat. That's the small, medium, and large, and that's the agility that's back with me. Then, Kate's on at uh, five past four, I believe, believe it is, with the Cross Large Novice and Medium ABC final. That's agility again. And then we've got somewhere 13, 14, 15, I think it'll be times. Fly balls on following the agility and finishing the afternoon off with heel work to music, the competition winner. And then obviously there's a break there till five o'clock when we come back with the agility, the Cross Singles final. That's obviously the small, medium and large. So, well worth staying. If you're here all day, obviously, make the most of it. It's an experience and a half, as we all know. It's a good day to come today. It's not quite so busy. Last year, they were queuing for an hour outside on Saturday and Sunday to get into the main arena. And that was only basically to come here and listen to me and Kate talking, which was nice. Right, just making sure our timing's right. We are nearly there, I do believe. We're happy. Excellent. So, our first competitor in the smalls is Clive Foden, working Poppy, Shetland Sheepdog, six and a half years of age, celebrating Clive's 21st year since he competed at Crofts. 21 years ago was the first time he competed. Wow. Poppy's competing for the third time here. Now, again, just going back to days of when you kind of do some training, which I used to do many moons ago, trying to get a man to do what Clive does with his voice. Blokes were like, I'm not doing that. I'm not making that noise. So Clive knows where to use, let's say, the deep voice. And Clive knows where to use the higher voice. There we go. A little bit of encouragement there. And it gets the dog encouraged. Straight in the tunnel, no problem at all. Come on, Clive. Come on, Poppy, you've got three to go. You've got two to go. Yes, 37.51 on a clear. Well done, Clive. So, next in, we should have Stacey Irwin Burns. Working Sam. And they're already away. Six years of age. Jack Russell, Cross Cavalier. This is Nippy. The dog's quick as well. Ooh, lost a bit of time there. We had a look at that tunnel, but we're all right. We're OK. We're back on track, as we say. Ooh, I thought we were going to go the wrong side over that jump then as well. Always interested from a commentary voyage where you did what you do see from a handler's point of view as well. So, Stacey and Sam. Sam working his way around vocally. Stacey doing what she needs to do to come over number 17. And we've got three to go. We've got two to go. Come on, yes, 36.33 for Stacey and Sam. Obviously, they've gone into first place at the moment.
And our next geo in, it's Lauren Langman working Blink, Cocker Spaniel, three years of age, Blink's a dream dog. And I will say, this dog, don't blink, because you'll miss it. It's quick, as you can see. Look at it go. Small dog, obviously. Beautiful, look at that for a turn, wow! Plenty of vocals, I've been using that dog's competing, doing this at the speed it's doing, and it's got time to bark as well. So, nice bit of encouragement there from Lauren, nothing too much, just all she needs. Need the right entry in the tunnel. Yes, we're in. Over 17 with three to go, this is going to be very quick. This is going to be seriously quick. Yes, 33.13. Obviously into first place, superb run, and I did tell you not to blink, didn't I? So, next in, we've got Louise Clayton working Mabel, Jack Russell, Cross Staffordshire Bulls Terrier, local lady from Sunny in Ashfield, up the road. Their first time at Crofts, hoping that Mabel will love the crowd as she likes to show off. Oh, just rolled a pole there, that's okay, we can cope with that, as I've already said. What we don't want is an E. We stand a fair shout of being in tonight, well, this afternoon's uh, final on five faults, but they're going. Oh my word, I thought we were going to go over number nine the wrong way. We had a slight detour, but we're all right, we're back on track again. We're over number 12. We're into the tunnel. A jumping dog into the tunnel. Always makes me laugh sometimes when the dog jumps in the tunnel. And we've got an elimination. It's their first time at Crafts, it's an experience. Obviously, let alone the hand the dog doesn't realise, but there you go. Give them a big round of applause. They will be back later, I'm sure. Well, you never know. 41.25. And unlucky for Louise and Mabel. So, next to go, Lucy Osborne, working Flamingo. Yes, Flamingo. OK, Flamingo. When it was up there, just it had a pink coat on because it had the pattern on the uh, Yukonuda sign there. Quite interesting for her, I'm standing. Four years of age, a German, a German splits climb. And again, another vocal little dog. And we've got an elimination. I presume we may have possibly missed a weave out, but don't quote me on that. I'm not the judge. So they'll continue working the course. Enter eight, which they are rather rapidly. So over 17. Coming around with three to go. Big round of applause, Enter eight. They come across the finishing line. Unlucky there for Lucian Fling. And so our next competitor is Bernadette Bay, working Zaz, Shetland Sheepdog, eight years of age. Zaz has been a member of Team GB, winning medals internationally, both individual and team events. I'm going to stop there, because uh, these are, well, I like commentators on everybody, to be fair, at the end of the day, but I can't say she's not my favourite Bernadette when she's competing with the dogs, but she's one of them at the day. Such a smooth hand with the dogs, seem to work so well, being obviously competing for many years. And at the moment, flowing nicely. Into the tunnel. So plenty of verbal encouragement now coming across into the tunnel, which we were looking towards the far side, but we're all right. Over 17, we've got three to go. Come on, Bernadette, come on, Zaz. Yeah, super finish there. Nice steady run, 35.06. We'll be seeing them later. Pops them into second place. So, next to go as the other dog comes over the fishing line. Well done. Ashley Butler working with Sullivan, crossbreed, four years of age. Sullivan's first time competing at Crafts. Obviously not Ashley's. So, over the Ukanuba start line. And we're away. I haven't seen this one before. I like this. This is nippy. There you go. Great weave entry. Look at that dog weave. Superb. It'd be great if you could get a picture of that on the. Uh, on the TV, on the camera, but coming down the weave line. Oh, that would have been one going left and right three times, I reckon. Over 12. We're into the tunnel. Pushes around to the left-hand side. Interesting, gives him a better angle, maybe. Probably did as well. Time's looking good. Come on. Three to go. Two to go. Over the finishing line. 32.22. First place there for Ashley and Sullivan. First time competing at Crofts on a carpet. There you go. Wow, fantastic.
Next to go, I'm going to say now, all the way from Scotland, we got Mark Bruce working Cindy. Jack Russell Cross, eight years of age, their third year in a row at Crufts. First time in the singles. Cindy's won two champ tickets to compete in the UK, Ireland, Spain and Belgium. So well travelled. Well, well travelled. Ooh, well corrected. Ooh, and again, oh my word, this one's going to have me on the end of his seat, except I'm not seated. Oh, these Scottish people, they get me going, don't they, eh? Blow it out. So let's push out round number nine. That one we're all right with, we're away. I think we're getting our route now, we've got the route sorted. Mark and Cindy now. Cindy got plenty of vocals, but then Cindy, it's Cindy, it's the names here, isn't it? There you go. Cindy from Scotland, I like that. So we're coming towards the Rigid Tunnel. Beautiful. Over 17, what do you reckon? We've got three to go. Come on, Mark. Come on, Cindy. Yeah, Scotland have got a clear 39.17. Super on. I need a pair of trousers like those. It's no good. I'll have to get some of them. Oh, dear me. OK, next in, we've got Rosie Cavill working Spice. Cocker Spaniel, 11 years of age. I keep thinking it's time for Spice to retire, but she has other ideas. Spice is one of these dogs that is just consistent. Just goes and goes. And at the end of the day, we all know when uh, it's the time to call it a day with our dogs, as far as, let's say, competing goes, and obviously in other matters, unfortunately, but Spice, been around a long time in the agility circuit. And working nicely there with Rosie, coming down the line. Big jump, big jump. Over 12. In the tunnel. Nicely flowing moves at the moment. We're in the tunnel again with Spice giving Rosie a little bit of commanding as well. Come on, I want to go quicker. We've got three to go and two and a one. And we're on 37.61 with a clear round. Well done, Rosie, and well done, Spice. So, next to go, Charlotte Harding. She's back again with a teasel, working Cocker Spaniel, six years of age. And she's very grateful for Claire for letting her run teasel in the past year. I'm going to stop there because I love watching these two as well. OK, we had a bit of a sweeping turn there and a bit of a pole knocking session on number three, but we're all right at the moment. Quick little dog, as you can see, a bit of a wide turn again. We can make that up, though. I was watching yesterday and these two were flying around. There you go. Nice turn. Oh, look at that for a tight turn. See, I think that's good. I think that's very, very good. That's probably made up a second there. That's going from a wider turn. In the tunnel. Straight in there. Over 17. We've got three to go again. What do you reckon again? Two to go. Come on, Charlotte. Yes. 33.93 takes them into third place for Charlotte and Teasel. And I do believe we have our last dog. I was, getting, I was getting, just about getting into it now as well. Last to go. Zoe Council, working Jesse, working Cocker, six years of age. This is Jesse's second time at Crush. She's also competed at Olympia. But more important, Jesse is just the sweetest, happiest little dog you could ever hope for. What a nice flowing start, nice and quiet, hardly heard anything. We spent a little bit of time making them get the entry there to the weaves. So we pushed down a little bit, making sure we get them right. And we did. Now we're coming around to the left side nearest the country point there, rather than going around the far side. And that's worked. Over 12, into the tunnel. And the stay on the left, kind of blocks the left-hand side of the tunnel, so they don't go down the wrong side. Straight in. No! Oh, my word. We've missed an obstacle out. We missed 17 out, so they get an elimination. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Unlucky there for Zoe and Jesse. Thanks for staying with us for the last however long we've been here on doing agility. We're going to do a presentation very shortly, and you're most welcome to stay with us next um, for the Crufts Medium Team Agility Final. Presentation coming up soon.
Well, the, as, as Nigel says, the presentation will be up shortly, but keep your seats, folks, because we've got something rather interesting happening right next event, right after the... Uh, we built the course for the next event. We've got some celebrity agility, and I think it's going to be very amusing and serious at the same time. So celebrity agility is coming up. So keep your seats, folks, because I'm sure you're going to really enjoy it once that get underway, especially as we've got Mr. Alan Carr with us. So keep your seats. It's all starting soon. Are you happy? Everyone happy? It's presentation time! And presenting Bill Glover, the judge. What a great course that was. First place in the smalls was Ashley Butler with the clo Closet Monster of Ashburn. What a great kennel club name. Ashley, first place. Second, Lauren Langman with the duty champion, Sam Sir Blinking Brilliant. And it was Blinking Brilliant, let's be honest about it. On to the mediums. In first place was Natasha Wise with agility champion, Rianne's Flippy Neck. Second place, Sean Inningworth with agility champion Arne Priories or Priors Maid of Honour. And on to the large dogs. In first place, Dave Mullins. What a run, Dave. With agility champion come by and away, ready for the whatever it is at the end. And second was Anthony Clark, Rajaf El Fatel Protest. I wish they made these names better for a commentator's view. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together because very, very shortly. In fact, we'll go for it now, shall we? It's lap of honour time!
Well, I did say we've got something a little bit different, folks, and it, it sure is. So our next two competitors in the, in the course you can see now are going to walk it because this is a deadly serious competition. I'll, um, I'll never forget the day Hutton and I first met this young puppy, this lively, uh, excitable puppy. Um, and I just knew at that point it was going to be a match made in heaven. My name's Nathan Edge, I'm 22 years old from Mansfield and with me I have my guide dog Hudson. My eye condition originally um, sort of generated when I was just six years old. Uh, I was diagnosed with a condition called uveitis and I was left with about 20% vision. As I turned 18, um, I then started to get additional problems with my eyesight. Uh, the, I woke up uh, in February 2014 and uh, it had gone overnight into just complete darkness. For several weeks, a couple of months, I just went into a shell. Um, I didn't um, leave the house, I didn't speak to any friends, I, I just shut myself off from the world. Although he has, probably has no idea what he's done for me, he is the one that pulled me out of that difficult place that I was in. With him by my side every day, I had that comfort, him being right there and unconditionally loving me and just caring for me. It made the world of difference to me. Since the three years that Hudson and I have been in a partnership, um, I probably would say I've done more in these three years than I probably ever would have done in my whole life. Um, it's amazing to think I've gone from being in a, in a room locked away with, without a life to then doing all the things we're doing now. Uh, because now my dream is to hopefully one day represent the Great Britain in the Paralympics. It's difficult to put into words the bond Hudson and I have. The relationship is just, I didn't know it was possible to have a relationship like, like what we have with a dog. He's given me the life that I have now. The future for Hutt and I is looking very, very bright. I now feel that there's nothing holding me back. You know, I feel free to go on and do the things you know I want to do. I don't feel like there's any barriers anymore. Um, you know, we can just take on the world and do everything that I've always dreamt of. My husband decided we were going to go to Battersea Brands Hatch and I'm thinking, oh my God, we're getting a dog, what's it going to be? This big white barrel came flying at me and I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm in love, what is this? This is mine, I'm taking him home. He was sent to me, absolutely sent to me. My name is Sally, I'm 27 and this is Bowser, my English Bull Terrier, who is three. <laughs> The speculation is that I've had multiple sclerosis for over 10 years. It wasn't until November 2015 that I got the official diagnosis. Multiple sclerosis is a disease of the nervous system. Every day I have to take about six pills in the morning, six pills at night. Every month, every 28 days, I go for a chemotherapy infusion. Because of the way the lesions are in my brain, it reduces my sense of feeling in my hands, which Bowser helps with, because I can feel myself touching him, even though the temptation isn't as good as it used to be. It also affects my legs, motor functions, my short-term memories affected. So having the memories and building the memories with Bowser, it gives me something to link to, so I'm always remembering something happening. We'd not long had Bowser and we'd been for a big beach walk. I came back and I wasn't feeling very good and I'd passed out on the sofa. But his dad was outside in the garden doing some gardening and he said, he was just insistent, you've got to come inside, you've got to come inside. There's something wrong. Barking at him, chewing on the stuff that he was trying to use. And when he came in and found me, it was there was a medical emergency and when I'd got sorted and I was sleeping so much 
Bowser was just laid with me, laid on me, laid on the areas that hurt. He seems to know where the pain is and pressing his weight against me and pressing himself against me. He was just there. He wasn't interested in sitting with anybody else, he just wanted to sit with me. He gives me, he gives me joy. It's more important than what he does for me physically and, you know, nudging at me because certain things don't smell right or don't seem right to him. He's walking along this journey with me and just gives me a desire to put one foot in front of the other again. I'm uh, Joel Sir and this is my assistant dog, Caddy. I am uh, inflicted with uh, autism ADHD and it's kind of complicated and hard uh, to be yourself when, when uh, you, you have uh, two disabilities uh, that basically affects uh, every single uh, part of you. He finds the world hard. He finds everything hard. It was hard because everything was focused on Joel. You know, where was he? You know, how was he doing? How was he coping? He couldn't go for walks because he would, you had to hold on to him. We needed help being a normal family, a normal family. Caddy was almost like a light, a light at the end of the tunnel. It was like, you know, yeah, people can see now you know, that we need help and Joel needs help. He goes uh, almost everywhere with me. Wherever I go, he follows. From the minute Joel wakes up, Caddy's there. To the minute he goes to bed, except for when he's at school, we, have, we drop him off. Wherever Joel goes, Caddy goes, and they're attached. And Joel's karma, Joel's karma walking around. A lot of times, Joel was left out. Joel, Joel was excluded from things and still is, in a lot of ways, excluded from things. And that's why having Caddy there as a constant companion for him is, you know, is brilliant for him. The difference for Joel is their smiles, whereas before it was just pacing. Caddy's helped him communicate loads, loads, especially as, you know, is, is bringing his words out and everything and talking to people and actually interacting with other people. Caddy's done that via, if we're out with Caddy, and somebody actually comes and talks. The difference now in four years is unbelievable. Paddy senses Joel's not coping before any of us, and he's the one that grabs the toy and he will run upstairs or run wherever if they're not in the same room, and actually that alerts us that Joel's not coping, and then we can get to Joel. But Caddy's always there for us, always there for us. With Caddy by him side, Joel's whole. Joel can connect with the world better. Caddy, Caddy is, uh, well, my guardian angel. If, I, if I, he wasn't here, I wouldn't be here either. My name's Lance Corporal Denslow and this is military working dog Charlie. Charlie's seven years old and he's an English Springer Spaniel. Um, Charlie's an AES dog, which means um, arms explosive search. So it basically means he can search pretty much any type of terrain, um, buildings, vehicles, anything like that, and we can go and search for weapons and explosives. So I've had Charlie now for two years. Um, I picked him up um, at 102 Squadron um, when I completed my AES course, so I've become qualified to handle him. And he was um, the dog that I got allocated as soon as I got back to regiment. Me and Charlie will only deploy as a team, so the bond's there, especially when it comes to things like when you're doing, when you're firing on the ranges, you can really see the trust between the handler and the and the animal, and when he's searching, it's just a big game to him. So what we're doing is we're putting all that trust into that dog, and that's where the training comes into it. So he's been out on operations now a couple of times, 
um, different tours of Afghanistan. Um, and what he'll do is he'll just um, give that level of assurance to the, um, to the guys out on the ground looking for IEDs and the bombs in the ground. And that's his just sole purpose, really. I'm sure if you ask any of the guys that have worked with military work and dogs before, like any of the infantry call signs, what they'll say is that they love the dog. It's that, it's that level of assurance that a human can't give or a bit of kit can't. The guys are just so much happier with the dogs being out in front of the patrol and got a dog handler with them. You ask him to do a lot of things normal pet dogs probably wouldn't do in this trade and he allows you to do it, especially that bond, and he really does like to please the handler. And I'm quite lucky with him really, he's good. Um, he really does work hard and he really, and he really does enjoy what he does. This is a
Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go with the medium team final. So uh, we do need a judge, obviously. So uh, we have Bill Glover here. Please put your hands together for Bill Glover. And we are welcoming our first team into the arena. This is the Burnham Bombers. They have qualified to be here today. So it's a relay race. There's a baton change. And there's some rules about um, one dog on the course at a time and um, staying behind the start and finishing lines. But basically it's a relay race trying to get four dogs around the course, clear and fast. Unfortunately, that's five faults there on that first dog, which is Jarvis, the working cocker, and Vicky Merry. Vicky Merry is running for Jarvis. Did you get the joke? Working cocker, Jarvis cocker. Clever name. Almost 11 years old, can you believe? So we've had an elimination. That incurs 100 faults. That gets added to the total. So Dez is running next. He's handing over the baton. And this is Dino. Patadel across Cocker Spaniel. What you got, Dino? Is his full kennel name? Second time at Crufts. Nicely through those weave poles. So they've got to hit the white bits on each end of the contacts. That's a safety rule. Make sure they uh, don't launch off the top. Same with the seesaw, has to hit the ground. So we're on 110. And Des is going to take the baton from Julie. So, Julie Dow with Betty, the Jack Russell Cross Poodle. Here we go, better boot. Down over that long jump into the tunnel. Got to get that first pole on their left shoulder. Very nicely done. Onto that dog walk. Our judge making sure he gets the contact, which unfortunately doesn't on this occasion, so that's five faults. That gets added to the total. Round to the seesaw. So taking over the baton from Simon. This is Simon Crick and Rhea, Staffordshire oh, Bull Terrier. As we uh, look at the score, which is 124 at the moment. To the tunnel. Oh, making sure he gets it right. Well done. Gets the contact. Round to that seesaw. This is the last dog in the team. We need a quick finish. Come on, Simon. One more to go. Well done. 120 faults for our first team, the Burnham Bombers. So, next to go, the Canine Kinetics. All the way from Shropshire. First to go is going to be Steph Matthews with Connie. The working Cocker Spaniel, the angel of Salamanca Coco. It's a long name. So at the moment, we're looking to not get eliminated. Into that tunnel number eight.
Hampton from Pauline. This is Pauline Weston with Rose. Border Terrier Cross English Springer Spaniel. It's an unusual cross. Rosie Posey Pudding and Pie is her first name. I don't know who you are over there looking at me. You've got to concentrate because she's going back over there again. Nope, she says, I'm just going to give them one shout as I go past. On to the A-frame. Onto that seesaw. Straight line into the tunnel. Just picks up a refusal there. And takes the baton from Carol. So this is Carol Stone and Maddie. A Cavalier King Charles Spaniel cross border collie. Another unusual cross. Maddie Licious, full kennel name. Picks up five, so we're on five fours. That's, that's pretty, pretty good when you're trying to get four dogs around clear. So let's see if we can keep it at five fours into the tunnel. And Carol is taking the battle from Amanda Hampson. This is Rogue, Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. Represented GB. Many times abroad into the waves. So turning right onto the dog walk. Gets the contact. Turning left onto the A-frame. Come on, Amanda. Got to hit the ground on the seesaw. Does into the tunnel. Oh, just deviated there, but we're okay. Two to go. Come on, Amanda. Yeah, well done. Ten points. One eight two one three nine is the time. Goes into the lead. So that is the bar, ladies and gentlemen, at the moment. Ten forts. Ten forts is the time to beat. So our next team. He's lining up and uh, just going to take the opportunity to welcome everybody on Facebook. And uh, just remember, if you're on the live stream as well, you can follow all of the cross information on YouTube and watch the runs on YouTube and on the live stream. So welcome to all of you in Cyberland. So this is Kidderminster, Karen Gibbons running with Willow, the Shetland Sheepdog. Onto the dog walk. Missed the contact, picked up five. Five in credit at the moment as we go down to the seesaw. Picks up another five on the seesaw, so we don't really want any more faults from this team. This is Sue Powell. This is Spice. Nice little Shelty. Just got a little bit in front there. Nicely into the tunnel though, we've recovered well, into the wheeze. Oh, look at that, very nice. Lead through there, turning right, onto the dog walk. Nicely, making sure she gets the contact. Oh, goodness me, that was close. On it, on it, wait. Get the contact. Got to get the seesaw. Nicely done, she does, into the tunnel. Two to go. Sue takes the button. From Nicola Garrett, this is Zed. Another Sheltie, another Sheltie, Sheltie Sheepdog. Again, another person who's represented GB over the years. Nicely through the weaves. That's what we call a running contact, very nicely done there. Onto the A-frame, gets that. Onto the seesaw. Missed that as well. Into the tunnel. So, two to go. Well done, Nicola. Takes the baton from Liz. So, this is what we call the anchor dog. The pressure's on. You're running last. 
And it's all to play for. We're on 10 points at the moment. So this is Liz with Kira. She knows she has to go as quickly as possible. Because they want to beat the other team on 10 points on time. Which oh, they still can do. They still can do it. Come on, Liz. On to that seesaw. Nice. Into the tunnel. Come on. Time to beat is 182. Come on. Yes, well done. One, five, four. Goes into first place. Well done, ladies. Well done. So we have a new target. Ten faults and one, five, four, eight, six, three to build. To So, next on the line, this is the QB Spanners. Going first is Sam Johnston with Juice. Just making sure he's nice and settled. She, I think, she, she is nice and settled. So it's like they're going for it into the tunnel, into those weeds. Nicely through there. Onto the dog walk. Gets that very cleanly. Nicely over there. Come on, Sam. Into the tunnel. One more to go. That's a great start. Takes the baton from Martin. This is Martin Cavell with Oakley, working Cocker Spaniel. Nice turn there, into the tunnel. Turning right onto that dog walk. Our judge checking that he gets the contact. Onto the seesaw. Come on, Martin. Two to go. He's going to take the baton from Sam. This is Sam Lane with Dime. So it's a good start. Turning left. Oh, oh he's missed it. Wow. Unfortunately, that's an elimination. So we're on 100 faults. for the whole team, which is slightly different to an elimination for an individual dog. But as you can see, Dees has no idea whatsoever that the team's been disqualified. It's a cracking run. Well done, Chloe. Well done. Would have been a good time. So, still 10 faults to beat in first place. Okay, so, 
that's a good start. So taking the baton from Duessa, Duessa Lipley and Darcy, the English Springer. He says there was something odd on the floor there. Somebody's left lots of uh, paint marks. <laughs> So unfortunately that's an elimination there, just taking the wrong course. Turning right there onto the dog walk. There you go, onto that ace frame. So we're on 100 faults at the moment. To that tunnel. So Michael taking the baton, sorry, giving the baton, I should say, giving the baton uh, to Duessa. This is Timber, the English Springer. so he's got to come back and do the weaves again to stop the whole team being disqualified. Is that a good call? Has to carry on on the course. So make sure, ladies and gentlemen, you uh, come back to us today. We've got loads more agility, so I'm just going to check out the public while I'm here. Very suspicious lady sitting there. <laughs> okay, takes the baton. This is Melanie. This is uh, Pepper, another English Springer Spaniel. So that's a run by and an elimination. So uh, well, that would be 105 faults. So we're on 310 faults. So three dogs have been eliminated. It's not easy. Getting four dogs round clear with all the pressures that it involves in being in a team. And uh, often the dogs get more hyped up because they're in a team and they're watching their bodies run first. And they've got all of you guys watching as well. Wonderful. Well done, Melanie. So that was the Diamond Dogs. They've gone into fourth, actually. So next on the line is Cranbourne. And this is uh, Caroline Green with Rosie, working Cocker Spaniel. Run, run, Rosie. This is a rescue dog. Well done into those weaves. Nicely through there. Contact, very well done. Oh, keep going, keep going. Oh. Well recovered. Don't think it was quite in the plan, but it still worked. Onto that seesaw. Into the tunnel. Turn right, there you go. Still wagging her tail there. Takes the baton from Stephanie Spezia. This is Luna Joe. This is actually a pug cross chihuahua. We're seeing some interesting crosses here. She's full of it, isn't she? What a lovely little dog as we go into those weaves. Very nicely done. Oh, but you don't want to go that way. Ah. That was pilot error, navigation area. So we're going back to do the jump, stop the uh, team being disqualified. So we're on 100 faults. Nice contact. Another nice one. No, no, no. So round to that seesaw. Another nice contact. So that was Stephanie. 
And uh, she is taking the baton from Jilly. This is Tico. This is a crossbreed. Not sure crossbreed, but I'd hazard that there's some uh, collie in there. Very nicely through the weeds. Onto that dog walk. Gets that very nicely. Turning left onto the apron. to the seesaw. Another nice contact. Well done. Into the tunnel. So Jilly is going to take the baton from Sue. So this is Sue and Ting. Van Davidozi star Ting. Into the tunnel. Nicely through there. To that contact, waiting for them to catch up. There you go. Turning left. That's the A frame. It's a good run onto the seesaw. Come on, Sue. Two to go. Nicely done. Well done. 140 total. 176 seconds goes into third place. Well done. Okay, so running order number seven this is. We've got two teams after this. This is Dark Destroyer Diamonds. Cho Lam Seng is our handler. Pet name of the dog is Terry, it's Cocker Spaniel. Golden of the Glen is the kennel name. Picks up five. Oh, took a scenic route back. There we are, we're in. Okay, so onto the seesaw, five faults as we go down into the tunnel. Remember, 10 faults. As long as we get within 10 faults, we're okay. So, next on the course is Liz Balderstone. This is Amos, the miniature poodle. Come on, Liz. Lorix Ebony Amos. Second time at Crufts. Nicely through there, wonderful. Come on, onto that dog walk. Turning left. Okay, go. Go on. Onto the seesaw. Nicely done, Liz. Come on. Two to go. So Liz is taking the baton from Colette. That's good. Colette is with Kiko, the Tibetan Terrier. No faults incurred, so we're still on five faults. Come on, Tico, Kiko. So turning right, what a lovely little dog. That was a cracking run. Well done, Colette. This is Helen Honeyman. This is Molly, the Springer Spaniel. Right, right, right. So, you're still on five folks. Oh, another uh, lovely dog. Into those weaves. Very nicely. Out the other end. Into that dog walk. Our judge, Bill Glover, checking that he gets the contact. And to that A-frame, down onto the seesaw. Into the tunnel. Two to go. So, Helen. 
Go on. Well done. Well done. Goes into first place with that five faults. And a time of 185.853. That was the Dark Destroyer Diamonds. Well done. There's that lovely Tibetan Terrier just doing those weaves again. So, next to go. Ah, oh, Stanford ready to rumble. Wendy Gilpin is on the course. This is Brooke working quicker. Crossing sides there, into the weaves. You'll see our handlers uh, in agility often cross sides. That's to give the best line possible in and out of obstacles. So the handlers on the left now, because there's a left turn coming up. Down to that seesaw. Oh, missed the tyre, picks up five. And again, so that's um, two refusals there. So we're on ten faults. As we take the baton from Kevin. This is Kevin Cox with Coco. Trevor, the Chinese crested powder puff, six years old. So, team score at the moment is 15 faults. Well done, Trevor, nicely through there, turning right on the kennel club jump. so far into the tunnel. So Rachel is taking the baton from Cameron. This is Cameron Bunce, this is Jay. This is Jay the crossbreed. Getting those turns in. Nice into the weed pulse. Turning right, down onto that dog walk. Gets that. Around that long run to the seesaw. Got to hit the ground. Well done, guys. 187212 is the time with 15 forks. Goes into fourth place. Well done. Okay, so the time to beat, 185.8 with five faults. And this is our last team, so these are the last team to be able to top our current leaders. This is the Cornforth Crackers. From north of the border, I believe. So Jackie Tarn is going first with Jessica, working sheepdog. Into the tunnel. Jessica, Jess, Jess. Yeah. Hanging on, locking those weaves down to the tunnel. Jackie crossing sides there. There's a right turn coming, so she wants to be on that side of the dog. Crossing again because she's got a left turn coming. Get it, get it. There's that dog walk contact onto the A frame. 
Get it, get it. Go on. Onto the seesaw. Got to hit the ground. Which it does into the tunnel. Two to go. So, first dog clear. Next to go, Linda Cummings with Phoenix, also working sheepdog. Taking her time, making sure the dog was nice and settled. Oh, just went a bit wide there, but just a little bit of time lost. No faults incurred into the weaves. Nicely done, turning right, swapping sides again. As the dog walk. Turn onto the A-frame. Wait, look. Get a Down to that seesaw. Go into the tunnel. Ooh, that's a wide turn, but we're okay. One, two down. This is Louise Rain with Paris, also working sheepdog. Into the tunnel. Ooh. That was a shame. Wasn't quite quick enough to get into position to make the turn. So unfortunately that pushed the dogs into the weaves. So that is 100 faults there, unfortunately elimination. straight on to the presentation. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the Crufts Medium 2017 final were the Dark Destroyer Diamonds.
Well, we've got a fascinating display next, folks, and very instructional as well, all about being a good citizen, and I think you'll really want to see this, and I've got Mr. Good Citizen himself to tell us all about it, it's Mark Dallas. Thank you very much, Dave. Well, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, uh, welcome to our short demonstration on the Kennel Club Good Citizen Dog Scheme. In our Right, welcome to the Kennel Club of Good Citizen Dog Scheme. But choosing a puppy is probably the most important thing that we start with on our career through having dogs. So we're going to start with our puppies here in the middle, looking at what they're doing. We've got puppy socialisation taking place. Very important to socialise our puppies from an early age. It's the foundation and the building blocks for our future training. So we're looking at socialising the dog with an adult. Different noises. We've got to get our dogs used to different noises and other dogs as well. So here we see all our puppies having fun in the middle. Moving over here to this corner, we're looking at walking the dog. Now it seems a simple thing, doesn't it? We get the dog, we walk the dog. But we've got to teach the dog how to walk nicely and properly, to be socially acceptable when out in public. So we're looking at our puppy walking on the lead and getting used to different surfaces. We see the puppy on paper, on a mat, and on this artificial surface. Our bronze dogs. They've got to learn to walk on the lead and walk through a door or gate under control. We don't want the dog to be ripping off our arm as we open the door. And this could represent your front door, your gate, your car door or something like that. Our silver dogs have to walk on lead on the road because the Good Citizen Dog Scheme is geared to everyday life. It's about what we do with our dogs on a daily basis. And our gold dogs walking free beside the handler as we see over here, ignoring all the other dogs. You can see that these dogs have been well socialised right from a young age. Going to have a look at the examination now. Here we have a number of dogs, first of all being groomed and then being examined. So the puppies are towel drying. 
Our bronze dogs were running their hands over the dog's body. We're feeling for lumps and bumps. We're going under the tummy. We're going around the nether regions, down the legs, spreading the paws. So the dog gets used to being handled in this way. We then got a stranger examining our silver dog at the end. Again, looking in the eyes and ears and mouth, just as your vet would. And the gold examination requires the dog to be examined probably by the vet. We're going to look at the recall now, the puppy recall on the lead. We start with the puppy learning its name and being attentive to his name, and then progressing, calling it to you as we walk away. And then we see that extended further with the bronze dogs. We've got two different types of recall. One's using a slip lead. I think this time, leaving it in the stay, and then off we go. And one using a toy to send the dog away and then recalling it back. And at our gold level, we're looking at returning to the handler's side as we walk away from the dog. So various different levels here of recalling the dog. And finally, we have stays. We've got to teach the dog to stay. At the puppies, it's the basic puppy positions that we get them used to, ready for their training into bronze, where we have to stay on the lead for one minute. And that stay can either be in the sit, stand, or down. Silver dogs, sorry, bronze dogs have to stay in that place for a minute. The silver, we're looking for two minutes. And our gold dogs, we're looking for up to five minutes, two of which must be out of sight. And we notice a dog in the cage. This is what we call relaxed isolation, where the dog's left in isolation, the owner's away out of sight, but the dog's confident that they haven't been left forever, that mummy will come back at some point soon. So that's a very, very quick and brief look at how we uh, progress through the various stages of the scheme to adapt to skills for everyday life with our dogs. Well done, folks. Now, following on from that, car safety is a very important part of a dog's life and an everyday part as well, because we're often taking the dog in the car. Often it's going to the vet, so the, the dog doesn't have a good experience in the car going to the vet. So we need to change that perception. We need to make sure it has a good journey, but we need to keep them safe in the car. So here we have our three people out on a trip in their car. Let's see how they get on with road safety. Oops, we've had an accident. But as you can see, the dog was being carried on the passenger's lap. Unfortunately, had an accident, these things happen. But the car's in bits, the dog has gone flying through the windscreen, out on the road, and possibly something quite unthinkable has happened to the dog. We don't want that to happen to our dogs, do we, folks? So at the Good Citizen Dog Scheme, and at the Silver level in particular, we look at safe travel in cars. So here we see it again, different method. We're now having a crate or cage in the back of the vehicle. Dogs are secured within the cage. And then we're gonna go for another journey. I wonder if Paul's driving will improve. Oops, second accident in a week. You'll get one of them phone calls now. But as we can see, the dog stays safe in the car. They might be a bit shaken up and a bit concerned about what's happened, but the dogs have stayed safe. So we need to teach them and get them used to car travel and safe car travel as well. Well done, everybody. Now, next we're going to move on to something that uh, we call food manners often, it's, or food refusal. It's about having well-mannered dogs not picking up food. And there's nothing worse than going to a park or an open space with your dog to enjoy the, a great day of walking and sunshine and fresh air, all those healthy benefits, only to find inconsiderate picnickers and other people have discarded their refuse and food and what have you, and it's there for your dog to take. And of course, once your dog smells a bone, it's after it. So what we're gonna do now is look at how we manage our dogs to ensure that they don't take food from uh, other sources. And we've turned it into a bit of a game. We call it Temptation Alley. So in a minute, and this is where you guys can help. We're gonna have a race, and we're gonna have two dogs running down their respective alleys, and they've got to avoid the temptations. Now we've got bowls with food in, we've got squeaky toys, fluffy toys, balls, all sorts of things to tempt the dogs to stay. So please cheer for the dogs on the respective sides. Make lots of noise, because the more noise we make, actually, the more noise you make, the more it usually goes wrong. But 
hey, let's see what happens. So, handlers, you know the drill. Leave your dogs, please. And I will say, ready, steady, go, and that's your mark. So, handlers, it's very tense, folks. Be ready. Ready, steady, go. Oh, very good food manners on both sides. Put a wind just on that side. Oh, no, 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 that's cheating. Second one, ready, steady, go. Oh, very good refusal, very fast with the collie on this side, but in his own time, came back to mum. Very well done so far. Oh, now we've got the Labrador and the Retriever. This could be fun. Handlers, ready, steady, go. Well, well, well. Yeah, this is good, Dad. They give you food, they give you toys. No, no, hang on, I haven't finished the bowl yet. He hasn't even spotted the ones on the other side. Have we got any replenishments? No. Right, leave your dogs. Handlers, ready, steady, go. Very well done with our young Jack Russell. Oh, he's now decided to get all the temptations. That's cheating, Mum. I was surprised he went for the toys. Usually that one goes for the food. Handlers, ready, steady, go. <laughs> Look at this mum. He doesn't know which toy to take, does he? Look, there's so many toys. I love this place, mum. Bring me next year. <laughs> and our last dogs to go now. Jen, stop tr trying to encourage it. Handlers, ready, steady, go. Oh, and very quick back with our Spaniel. I ain't got a feeling that the lot on this side didn't feed their dogs on the way here today. So ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that was Temptation Alley, our food manners exercise, which is prevalent throughout the Kennel Club's Good Citizen Dog Scheme. Now I mentioned earlier that the scheme is geared towards everyday life. And part of everyday life is going out and about. So let's see what happens with our dogs and their handlers when they're out and about in the park. Well, here we have a typical let's park scene. Look at that little out. I spoke about little outs sand. earlier. Just throwing rubbish everywhere for the dogs. We've got lots of dog walkers. And parks generally throughout the UK and open spaces are used by families and children for sport and recreation and dog owners to exercise their dogs. And they can get along with sharing parks quite well. So we see a number of things happening here. We've got a number of people playing, we've got people flying kites, people fishing. We've got balls being thrown around. We've got push chairs, lots of distractions for dogs. We've got dogs being walked, some on the lead, some off the lead. We've got a picnic going on in the middle with two very well-mannered dogs, not trying to steal food from the picnic. We've got dogs off of the lead, walking at different paces. We've got joggers. It's a very, very busy scene, but it's typical of our parks and open spaces. And again, what the Good Citizen Dog Scheme is teaching us is how to have well-mannered and socialized dogs in public. And here is a great example of lots of things happening all at once and very well-mannered dogs taking part in that exercise. Well done, everybody. Excellent park scene, thank you. You can have your own set of wings With your feet on the ground, you're a bird in... Now, another part of having a well-mannered and socialized dog is sending it to bed. Now, sending your dog to bed is not a punishment. Its bed is a safe place, somewhere for the dog to go, where it can be safe and secure. And there might be a number of reasons why you'd send your dog to bed. Perhaps you have visitors that don't like dogs or are allergic to dogs. Or you might just want a little bit of downtime from the dog. Might have dropped a bottle of wine or something in the kitchen and there's glass everywhere. So sending the dog to bed is a very important and integral part of the scheme. And again, we're going to bring this to you in the form of a race. So we're going to have three dogs in each race. And on command, they're going to be sent to bed. And let's see who the good dogs are that go to bed when they're told, and who the stubborn ones are that perhaps want to stay up a little bit longer. One, two, three, four, so let's have the beds in place. Handlers, I will say, 
send your dog to bed and please release your dog on the command bed. So handlers ready, send your dog to bed. Send your dog to its own bed, not somebody else's bed. All right, I'm not going to bed, Mum. I'm going to sleep here. There we go. We finally got to bed. Give him a round of applause. You can make lots of noise during this exercise, folks. It's always great fun. Next three dogs ready, please. Now remember, send it to their own bed, not somebody else's bed. No cheating. Don't care about the size. Handlers, send your dog to bed. Oh, very well done on that side. Oh, look, I'm gonna remake it, Mum. I'm gonna shake the crumbs out of the bed. I'm gonna murder the bed before I get in it. Well done. Three more dogs. Handlers, send your dog to bed. All oh, very good. Oh, pretty good, all three of them. Yes, very well done. And our final two dogs to go. We've got Dougal the Yorkie with a massive bed. And we've got Gatsby with his bed. We do promote and appreciate equality even within the Good Citizen Dog Scheme. <laughs> Handlers, send your dog to bed. Oh, bless him. Well done. Big round of applause for every dog and handler there, folks. Well done, everybody. And that was the send the dog to bed exercise. Now, we'd next like to show you what we call stop and recall. First of all, we're going to stop the dogs on command. And because it's our 25th anniversary this year, we have a 25th anniversary flag, which we've placed in the middle of the arena. And we're going to try and get the dogs, dogs to stop on recall on the flags. So this could be interesting. A number of reasons why you'd want to stop your dog. You might see some imminent danger when you're recalling your dog and you need it to stop immediately. It could be that you can see that there's glass on the floor when you're recalling your dog. You don't want it running up to you through the glass. It could be a vehicle. It could be anything. We need to stop the dog urgently. So we should have two dogs that are going to stop on command. We're going to try and get them on our 25th anniversary flag. That's it, leaving them in the stay. And again, whilst they're doing this, there's lots of distractions all around the arena. There's all the other dogs there. So these dogs could be tempted to run off and play with their friends. They've been left in a stay. And they're going to be called and then stop on the flag. All right in the corner. <laughs> we missed the flag there, didn't we? Almost on the flag. Well done. Give them a big round of applause, folks. That was great. Right, we're next going to do the recall across the arena with all of the dogs at the same time. And we're going to do the first one from the sit position. So we're going to leave all of the dogs in the sit. Command your dog to stay and leave your dog. This is where I have my fingers crossed at this. Oh, we've got a creeper. There's a creeper at the end. Is that young Dougal? No. And another creeper. Recall your dogs. Ah, oh, somebody got confused. Where's my mum? That's it, give them a round of applause, they've done well. Couple of creepers. We're gonna do it once more, and this time it's from the down position. So command your dog to stay. Leave your dog. Recall your dog.
And everyone's back to a hand. Look, give them a big round of applause. Very well done, folks. We might have had a few creepers there, but you notice every dog happy to run back to its owner on command. And again, a number of reasons why we make them wait before we recall them. And of course, there's nothing worse than owning a dog and it not coming back to you when it's out in a park. So the Good Citizen Dog Scheme teaches us every skill that we would need to have a good, well-mannered and socialized dog that we're happy to take out and proud to take out in public. So ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes our very short demonstration on the Kennel Club Good Citizen Dog Scheme in our 25th anniversary year. And if you'd like to know more about the scheme, we are in Hall 3. We've got a birthday cake that we're cutting at about 2 o'clock this afternoon. Or if you go to the Kennel Club website, you can find out more about the scheme and any local clubs that you might want to get involved in. So ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, without further ado, I'll let the dogs and the handlers take you out. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Well then, folks, a big round of applause for the Good Citizen team. Sometimes amusing display, of course, with a very serious message that um, is very important to all of us. Next in the arena, we have the uh, Pat Dog of the Year final. And, um, or I should call it... So Petrotherapy have celebrated more than 35 years of providing their life-enhancing, invaluable service to our communities each week. Thousands of establishments in the UK are visited by pet dogs, and that is, you know, what I said a few minutes ago. We don't realise how many are being visited that we know not about all the time. Residents in hospitals, care homes, schools, hospices, 
and other establishments benefit from visits from these wonderful dogs and owners. These calm, confident, friendly dogs also help stroke patients with rehabilitation work, phobic children and the Read to Dogs program in schools, helping to develop reading ability and confidence. And now, of course, we're meeting all the Pat Dog finalists here today. All six of them. And I'm going to give you the background now on uh, each of these wonderful dogs and handlers. First, we have Devon with Julie Crowley. There's Julie at the end there. Devon had many nominations from her seven visited establishments. A teacher from St. David's Primary said, it's been such a pleasure having Devon in our school and seeing the difference she's made to our children. One pupil even said, Devon is a kind and gentle dog and likes to hear me read. Able Dogs Day Centre said, Devon is always gentle and our guests look forward to so much to her visits each week. And we consider Devon to be a friend. So that's Pat and Devon. Let's give it a round of applause. Next to the lineup, we got Georgie with Terence Card. Georgie's been visiting for seven years. Jacob's Neuro Centre. See Georgie and they see Georgie and Terence every Tuesday. And the staff have said Georgie provides physical and emotional therapy to the young and old. Georgie's sweet nature and gentleness brings comfort, joy and support to residents, their families and staff alike. Toy Green Care Home says Georgie has visited for seven years and comforts all our residents. He's a very special little dog. Lastly, Frank Foster House say we appreciate Georgie bringing happiness to our residents. So there's Pat Dog Georgie. Our third finalist, that's uh, Rocco with Hilary Farndon. And a local one to me who busy, busy herself a, a, around our local hospital. And he visits St. Cross Hospital actually in Rugby where staff say Rocco has provided comfort and invaluable service to our patients with physical and mental conditions. Many patients miss dogs. They have to let go due to their ill health. They become very emotional just to be able to stroke a dog again. Rocco is a gentleman and visits are highlights of the week. Oakfield Primary, where children read to Rocco, said Rocco makes a difference to each child he spends time with. It's wonderful to see the progress with reading. So there's Pat Dog Rocco. <laughs> Number four, we have Daisy with Barbara Borwell. Daisy's been visiting three schools, a hospital and a care home for the last four years. Westminster Hospital say every time Daisy comes, people smile. Daisy has such a gentle nature and we witness her calming influence on how her visits lift the mood and brighten their day. Dementia patients are soothed and engaged and, uh, and they thank their wonderful Daisy. Children at St George's School said, she sits very close to me and listens to every word the teacher. And the teacher adds, it makes them feel happy and has helped the children to enjoy their reading. So that's Pat Dog Daisy. Our fifth finalist is Sausage, Sausage with Angie Seedos. Sausage visited St Ewald's residential care home in Jersey. One family of a resident said, Pat Dog Sausage kept our father motivated and made his life worth living again. Staff say all the residents wait in the lounge eagerly anticipating his appearance and they all appreciate his visits more than he will ever know. A resident said Sausage is adorable, he loves to be stroked and we miss him so much when he leaves. That's Pat Dog Sausage. <laughs> Lastly, we have Jana with Kathleen Carney. Jana's 14, 14 years old and rescued from Tenerife as Australia and has become an amazing pat dog. She visits a hospice, school and nursing home. Jana helped a special boy at the hospice 
as she lay next to him, the boy's face lit up and he would not let Jana leave. She stayed with him until he fell asleep. Jana also helps the children at Pitmaston Primary School with their reading. And the teacher said, thank you so much for your time with our children. They love reading with Jana and have developed such confidence. Pupil Billy says, thank you for letting us read with Jana. We love her. So Pat Dog Jana. Well, we just met the, uh, the six finalists and over 5,000 pat dogs presently work in the UK. And in 35 years since pet therapy began, over 28,000 dogs have passed their assessment to become pat dogs. It's hard to imagine just how many people have had their lives changed for the better by one of these dogs over the years. Hundreds of thousands of people have benefited over the last 35 years with the comfort and companionship offered to them, unconditionally by these amazing dogs. Let's give them all a big round of applause, and uh, certainly that's my personal thoughts as well. Now we're nearing the award ceremony. They don't know who's won the Pat Dog of the Year Award, and we're going to welcome in now uh, the, the presenters the High Life Pat Dog of the Year Awards, and we welcome Tony Parkinson, Managing Director of High Life. <laughs> Jennifer Cripps, News Editor of Yours Magazine. And Victoria Stilwell, Dog Behaviourist, Trainer and TV Personality. <laughs> and also Anne Cliv Cliverad, Chair of Petsus Therapy. Yours magazine received thousands of votes to find the 2017 High Life Pat Dog of the Year. The runner-up received £100 and a month's supply of High Life dog food. The winner receives £500 and three months' supply of High Life dog food. So certainly worth winning. And I'd like to thank Yours magazine for running this prestigious co competition and High Life for their generous sponsorship and support. Moving on to awards themselves now, and in, in no particular order are the five runners... ..are the five runners up, so it's no particular order. So I think I'm announcing now the five that haven't been fortunate enough to win this year. Daisy the King Charles Spaniel, owned by Barbara Borwell, who has regularly visited care homes, hospital and three schools, giving her a special kind of love to all who meet her. So she gets an award for being a finalist. Jana the Lasso Apso, owned by Kath Carney, who for the past five, year has five years has continually visited a primary school hospice and nursing home and brought joy, fun and helped residents with memories of their own past dogs. So another one of our runners up. Our third runner-up is Devon the Crossbreed, owned by Judy Crawley. Crowley, I should say, who devotes herself to improving the lives of those in need. She brings joy and comfort to parents and takes part in the Read Two Dogs program for children. Give a round of applause, she takes her place back in the line. The next is Rocco the Labrador, owned by Hilary Farnden, who regularly visits St Cross Hospital and Oakfield Primary School. He lights up the lives of those whom he meets with his patience and sweet nature.
Give a big round of applause. And the final runner-up is Georgie the Chihuahua, owned by Terence Card. George has been bringing joy and happiness for six years to rehabilitation units and special schools. George's presence brings comfort and unconditional love. He supports patients both mentally and physically. Well, they've all had their special award now. Give them a big round of applause. It goes back. They've all had their special award now, and now it's the moment everyone in Pat Dogs have been waiting for, and, and, and us all watching online and in the arena. The 2017 High Life Pat Dog of the Year is Pat Dog Sausage. <laughs> the Staffordshire Bull Terrier belonging to Angie Seedhouse. Sosh has been visiting Sir Devold's care home for four years and brought a special magic to the residents and staff. A resident said sausage is the best day of the week. Give her a big round of applause. Very, very important, this, this win. And what a great cause it is. I wonder if he understands what he's done. <laughs> anyway, that, that's the award of the prize. I'd just like to give a quick thank you to our presentation party, to High Life magazine, yours, Mag... High Life Dog Food, Yours Magazine, and to Victoria Stillwell to come along and join us today. We're going to take a few photos in the arena now because it's, 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 it really is a moment to be cherished, and then we'll be able to applaud them when they exit the arena. So if you just bear with us for a few moments. Hold the check up. As with all these things, the, the, obviously the cash prize is important, but we know that the most important award they've got now is that beautifully engraved crystal trophy and the thought that they've been helped to help so many people. In fact, all our finalists have that same thought. Let's give them a big round of applause now as I believe they're going to exit the arena. A great cause. Some great dogs and some lovely people who own them and spend all their spare time on their local visits. Well done, all of you. And to everyone who participates in the Pat Dog Scheme. Well, folks, we now have a short interval, and after that interval, it's heel work to music time. Yes, Strictly Dog Dancing. So that starts after our short interval, which uh, won't be too long, probably about 15 minutes, 10 minutes. So uh, just keep your seats now, and we'll be back with you shortly.
day Hutton and I first met, this young puppy, this lively, uh, excitable puppy. Um, and I just knew at that point it was going to be a match made in heaven. My name's Nathan Edge. I'm 22 years old from Mansfield. And with me, I have my guide dog, Hudson. My eye condition originally um, sort of generated when I was just six years old. Uh, I was diagnosed with a condition called uveitis and I was left with about 20% vision. As I turned 18, um, I then started to get additional problems with my eyesight. Uh, the, I woke up uh, in February 2014 and uh, it had gone overnight into just complete darkness. For several weeks, a couple of months, I just went into a shell. Um, I didn't um, leave the house, I didn't speak to any friends, I, I just shut myself off from the world. Although he has, probably has no idea what he's done for me, he is the one that pulled me out of that difficult place that I was in. With him by my side every day, I had that comfort, him being right there and unconditionally loving me and just caring for me. It made the world of difference to me. Since the three years that Hudson and I have been in a partnership, um, I probably would say I've done more in these three years than I probably ever would have done in my whole life. Um, it's amazing to think I've gone from being in a, in a room locked away with, without a life to then doing all the things we're doing now. Uh, because now my dream is to hopefully one day represent the Great Britain in the Paralympics. It's difficult to put into words the bond Hudson and I have. The relationship is just... I didn't know it was possible to have a relationship like, like what we have with a dog. He's given me the life that I have now. The future for Hudson and I is looking very, very bright. I now feel that there's nothing holding me back. You know, I feel free to go on and do the things you know, I want to do, I don't feel like there's any barriers anymore. Um, you know, we can just take on the world and do everything that I've always dreamt of. This is a Labrador retreat. This is a Golden retreat. They may seem similar, but when you take a closer look, the details tell a different story. These dogs eat, digest, and process energy differently. At Royal Canada, we focus on every detail, so we developed unique breed formulas for cats and dogs. Because tailor-made nutrition can transform your pet into a magnificent animal. Royal Canada, incredible in every detail. From sports dogs to show dogs. From working dogs to family dogs. Whatever dogs love to do, we love to protect them for life. With Agria Pet Insurance, it's a lifetime every time.
no matter what you do, no matter what you try. Pet hair gets everywhere. Think you have to live with it? Think again. The Furminator is the original professional de-shedding tool. Gentle and effective. It reduces shedding by up to 90%. The Furminator features a stainless steel de-shedding edge. A fur rejector button mechanism for the quick release of hair. And an ergonomic handle for comfort and ease of use. Enjoy a hair-free life together. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is welcome to day two of Crufts 2017 live all day on YouTube, with occasional dips into Facebook as well. It's just after midday here in the United Kingdom. And wherever you're watching in the world, this is what our schedule event is. We start in just a moment with the Heel Work to Music competition. If you were with us yesterday, you'll know that we had the uh, Heel Work to Music freestyle. Today, slightly more precise, it's the Heel Work to Music competition. Rescue Dog Agility, an interesting one this, where we have rescue dogs from various uh, rescue organizations in the United Kingdom. And then we have more agility with the Croft Singles Heat and uh, the large novice and medium ABC. ABC is any breed but Collie, so you won't see Border Collies in that, you'll see everything else but. And then at 3.55 we have the quarterfinals of Flyball and at 4.40 UK time you get an opportunity to see the winner of the event that is just about to start in a moment. Well, it's a full programme of events, it continues into the evening of course. Uh, the Agility Crufts Singles Final, one of the major events that, uh, in Agility here at Crufts. Followed by the Yukonuba World Challenge Final. This is the 10th anniversary of Yukonuba World Challenge, held here in the United Kingdom for the first time. Some magnificent dogs, 12 of them, will be judged to find the Yukonuba World Challenge Final Champion for 2017. We have an interesting one there with the Vulnerable Breeds competition. There are several breeds which are endangered because of a reduced gene pool, lack of registrations and so on, and we'll be looking at some of those, some of those breeds which will be competing in normal uh, competition being judged here in the ring. We then have our two groups of the day. Yesterday, uh, we judged the Terriers and the Hounds, two wonderful winners, the Lakeland Terrier and the Grand Basset Griffin Vondion uh, took the Hound group. 
Today we have the utility dogs. Those are the non-sporting dogs, uh, which don't really fit any of the other groups, and also the toy groups. These are the little companion dogs that you, we know so well. Little dogs that'll sit on your lap all day quite happily, or they'll have a run around the field if they feel like it. So that's what we've got for you. It's a great day's entertainment. Stay with us as much as you can. I'm sure you'll thoroughly enjoy it. Well, I think they're just about to start the announcements in the ring to introduce the judges for the Crufts Heel Work to Music final. And Heel Work to Music, the principal element of it is the dog working off the lead in the heel work position. That's on the left or right hand side of the handler, facing forward or backward, across the front or back of the handler, moving in any direction and at any pace. The dog's shoulder should be approximately level with and reasonably close to the handler's leg, except when they send them away, of course, uh, which they often do. All other positions are defined as freestyle. So it's, it, it really is a very precise competition. Some marvellous competitors. Yesterday in the uh, freestyle final, we saw a wonderful performance by Lucy Creek. It was outstanding, uh, a good point and a half better than any of her competitors, and really remarkable. She'll be competing in this as well today. Uh, but Lucy Creek winning yesterday means that tomorrow, uh, at approximately the same time as we are now, she'll be performing in the international competition as the British representative. Very excited about that because I, I do think she's exceptional. It's wonderful to see people coming through. She did win the competition last year, but uh, it's good to see people coming through and that the people that we do watch in these various competitions do change as the years go by. So I'm looking forward to this competition, and I think in any moment now we'll be bringing the judges in. The uh, audience here, quite a good audience for the arena at this time on a Friday. I mean, it is a working day here in the United Kingdom. It's not a holiday, and we have a good crowd. This is a, a massive uh, arena. It seats something like uh, 6,000 people in the configuration that we are for uh, Crufts, maybe even 7,000, but it's uh, approximately, I would say it's about a third full at midday, which is really quite remarkable. I was over at the main entrance to Crufts and the crowds are coming in today as they did yesterday. So we're expecting a very successful show here. Dave Ray down in the right-hand corner of the ring, we can just see there, he regularly commentates on many of the major events for the uh, audience here in the main arena at Crufts and at various events, dog events up and down the country. And he's just filling them in with uh, the details So we await the start of the proceedings this afternoon. A uh, couple of minutes late. We should have been starting at five past twelve. We're a couple of minutes late with that, but I think we're just about to introduce. Here we go, the Crufts 2017 introduction. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to start the afternoon performance now. We're going into here with some music, but I'd like to, to welcome you to Crofts 2017 and the main arena at the most exciting, the biggest, the best show, dog show in the world. Because you're a sky, because you're a sky full of stars. I'm gonna give you my heart Cause you're a sky, cause you're a sky full of stars
No prime moment there, as we saw last year's winner taking best of best in show here at Crufts, the West Highland White Terrier. And the competition started yesterday, two winners already through, a Lakeland Terrier and a Grand Bassett Griffin Vendion. Today, a utility dog will go through to the final and also a toy dog. Gun dogs tomorrow and then the pastoral and the working group on Sunday before finally best in show. So the judges are now being introduced into the ring for the heel work to music final. And they are the first judge uh, there is from Sweden, Carolina Hasselroth. The judge in the center there with the red hair, Heather Smith. She is the head judge. And uh, the third judge is Carol Wallace. They each judge totally independently. And this is not a freestyle competition. This is a heel work to music, very precise. Uh, the dog should be approximately his shoulder, should be approximately level with and reasonably close to the handler's leg almost throughout. So it is, it is not a freestyle event, it is a very precise event. So the judge is looking for very different things here. Uh, the program content, uh, the accuracy of the performance and the musical interpretation is also worth points. Uh, they get 30 points in total, uh, 10 points for each of those uh, elements that I mentioned. And uh, obviously, the one who gets the most points will be the winner. We had a marvellous freestyle competition yesterday, and the heel work to music ought to be no less excellent today. Some very good performers in here, and they'll be coming into the ring one at a time. Uh, a point about the scoring, uh, just to keep the scoring uh, running smoothly, we'll see the first performance, we'll then see the second performance before we get the score of the first performer. It's just to give the uh, the desk an opportunity to get its stuff in order without holding everything up. So it does speed the event up. The audience at the moment here just being entertained by the winner of the freestyle uh, competition from yesterday. This is Lucy Cre Creek and her dog Skiffle. It was an extraordinarily good performance. And uh, they, yeah, she's just been congratulated there, as you see. <laughs> A macabre uh, makeup, but of course she's uh, performing to the dance macabre. It'll be a little different today. So the ring now fully lit and ready for our first performer. And the first uh, performance is going to be Karen Sykes. Uh, she has her dog Midge, who's a working sheepdog called King's Farm Spring Surprise. Three-year-old bitch it is. And they're doing the Hungarian dance number five. And the music is provided by the Hungarian Philharmonic Orchestra. Karen has competed and demonstrated at Crufts for many years. It's this dog's first year in the finals. They also competed yesterday in the freestyle and equipped, uh, acquitted themselves pretty well. Karen Sykes and Midge.
And a good performance there by Karen. It's very difficult to get uh, a great deal of variety into the movements there, so as much as they can get, because the restriction on that you're not allowed to get the dog running away from you or going a distance and doing different things. You have to keep the dog very close to you. So the judges will hand their scores in. Those will go to the uh, adjudicators in the corner and uh, we'll then see our second performance before we get the scores. Uh, it will ultimately speed everything up, and uh, the next performance just coming into the ring, bringing uh, a few props, but it'll still be heel work and not freestyle. And Gina there collecting the scorecards, but they've got to go back to the desk to be collated properly. And we won't be waiting for the scores. We'll be introducing our next performer. And she'll be coming in now. Here she comes. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see her in the entrance there. This is Jackie Roberts and Charlie. Charlie's an eight-year-old dog, real veteran. Rossi Mac Marmite Shoulder, or Ross Mac Marmite Shoulder. So, that's Charlie's full kennel name. The music is called The Road Goes On by A. Rahman. Charlie's Jackie's first dog following her early retirement. <laughs> It's a strain Step by step Pulling you away Under moon and star Take the road No matter how far Where it leads No one ever knows Don't look back Follow where it goes Far beyond the sun Take the road Wherever it runs The road goes on Ever, ever on Hill by hill Mile by mile Field by field Style by style The road goes on Ever, ever on The road goes on Ever, ever on More by more Glen by glen Fail by fail Fail by fail The road goes on Some pears, succulent and sweet To the farthest shore Take the road a hundred miles more Sweet pink trout will tickle from the stream Milk a goat will churn it into cream Far beyond the sun Take the road wherever it runs The road the goes on
Well, they're a very good demonstration by Jackie and Charlie. Uh, Charlie started his heel words music uh, when he was just one year old. He loves learning new things. That movement away at the end, I think probably that is just allowed um, the, because the dog is supposed to stay close. But in the, the previous performance by Karen Sykes, we also saw uh, the dog uh, moving away and then jumping through her arms. So there is something allowed. There's a little bit of leeway, but essentially they have to be close and they're as close as can be without leaning on. That's a very important thing. And there were some very good shots during that of seeing how the dog positions itself whilst it concentrates so hard. Well, we should get the score in just a second for Karen Sykes before we bring in our third uh, competitor. The training that goes into the heel work to music and the freestyle performance really is fantastic. But it just shows what can be done with a dog. And these dogs, they love to work. This is Karen's score, 24.03. That's not too bad at all. A nice eight there for accuracy. And the musical interpretation was good at 8.17. So this was Karen and uh, King's Farm Spring Surprise. Midge is the dog's name. There we were. So well done, Karen, 24.03. She obviously has the only score we have, so she's in the lead at the moment, but that's the score which they have to beat. So now we have our next competitor coming into the ring. There she is. This is Annette Lowe with Baliol. It's a border collie known as Kinaway Mystic Spice. That's a full, uh, full name. Four-year-old dog. Liberty Bell by the Philip Jones Ensemble.
and a very jolly and sprightly performance there from Let no, uh, from Net Low and Baliol. This is Baliol's second visit to Crufts for Hillworks Music Final. Let me just take a look at some of the elements of that. She took part yesterday in the uh, freestyle final, which was less interesting, I have to say, than uh, the, than this. I think she did this really rather well, and it wouldn't surprise me if she goes into the lead with it. Very precise, very neat, quite a lot of variety, and uh, yes, I, I hold out a bit of hope for this. We, sh we shall see. Dog performing very well indeed. He's a very keen little chap, isn't he? I almost fancy having a go myself, but I haven't got that far yet. Well, now we're awaiting the score for our previous competitor, Jackie Roberts. 23.83 puts her in second place there. 8.23 for musical interpretation. That was quite high, but the other scores were a little bit lower. So musical interpretation was very good. The, the rest not quite as good, and uh, it puts her in second place at the moment. We have to wait, of course, for a net low and Balliol score. That'll come after our next performer. This is number four. So coming into the ring now, we see Caroline Garrett and Forks. Oh my word, this looks very spectacular. The dog's kennel name is Wild Sea Phoenix of Fire. It's a border collie, an eight year old dog, a real veteran here as well. And the music is uh, the original cast of Phantom of the Opera, Sarah Brightman and Steve Harley. They won this competition last year.
I'm sure they'll get very good marks uh, when they come through for the musical interpretation there. And the dog appears to be working very precisely. At the beginning, of course, with the cloak, we couldn't always see how close the dog was, but I think it was really a rather good performance. Uh, still uh, waiting. You can see here <laughs> the dog well shrouded at this point. Is the dog doing it well or not? We can't tell. But uh, Forks, he's called. Eight years old. It's lovely to see. I mean, you think uh, the amount of time that one has to spend with a dog to get this kind of performance out of it. And this is what Border Collies need. They love to work. And uh, Forks, obviously, having the time of his life out there, not phased by the arena or the crowd, which is getting bigger every minute. So I've got to say, we're about half full here now, which is it's absolutely fantastic at this time of day. So the score's going in, but now we're going to get the scores for Annette. Annette Lowe there. And see a good interpretive score there for uh, the music, but not so good with the others. So down there, 22.57 puts her in third place. I thought it was a very nice routine, but it didn't score quite so well with the judges. So we're ready now for now our next stop. Susan Dooney is coming into the ring. Murphy is her dog. Murphy Mischief is the kennel name. It's a working sheepdog, and it's the oldest one in the competition, actually. Ten years old, this dog. Uh, the music is uh, Compline du Notre Etre l'Atre Midi, which is something about uh, after lunch, uh, summer after lunch, I don't know, after midday. However, it's uh, performed by Jan Tiersen, and the team's third time competing at Crufts Heel Work to Music. He also races and plays fly ball when he's not doing this. Susan Dooney and Murphy.
was a beautiful performance, so gentle. Uh, my translation in the French, not particularly good. Compline du Notre été l'après midi, something of another summer afternoon, but I don't know what Compline is, and someone will no doubt tell me at some point, but I don't know what it is. That was the music played by Jan Tiersen, and the performance was very gentle indeed. I have no idea how they're going to be scored on this. Uh, I know what I would give it. I would give it a good, very good score indeed. But uh, I'm not sure that there was enough variety in it. You just have to wait and see. Wonderful performance. So lovely, very gentle, very smooth, very elegant. So that's Susan Dooney and Murphy. The judges handing in their scores for Susan Dooney, but here come the scores, and you'll see there that Caroline Garrett has gone there into the lead, into first place with 26.4, and good scores indeed, a nine there for musical interpretation, and two 8.9s, very consistent, and very good indeed. As I said, they won this event last year, are they going to do it again? Phantom of the Opera and a lovely performance. So we'll wait for our next dog, and this will be uh, Kay Lawrence. Right, our next competitor to come into the arena is Here she Kay comes, Kay Lawrence, and time. Another working sheep dog, eight year old dog. Jenna Bakab, Light Merlot is the uh, kennel name of this boy. And the music is The Tale of Victor Navorsky by John Williams. Kay's appeared here at Crafts on several occasions, including last year's Who Worked Music Finals with this dog.
Well done there, Kay. Kay Lawrence with time and a very gentle performance. I think people probably had to wait a long time for the meal, but uh, that was a very interesting performance from Kay, very elegant and uh, a lot of waving and all that. The dog keeping very good station with it. We'll see what the uh, score does with that. Uh, but uh, if we... Uh, for some reason, I don't know what it is, I think we'll find in just a moment. But Susan Dooney uh, has been eliminated, so we'll be getting her score of zero in just uh, one moment. She has no score. Uh, so that's the previous performance, which I don't think was rather nice for that. I don't know what technical reason they've given, but she has been eliminated. So something was very wrong uh, in the performance, there, which is a shame. But here, as we watch again... Uh, Kay Lawrence with time just finishing off that very elegant performance. So sad for Susan, no score to go in, so nothing to show you there in the meantime. And uh, we come to our next competitor who's waiting by the side of the stage. So here, waiting in the wings, as it were, we have Michelle Dodson with Kinaway Dr. Kildare, known as Devon. Michelle Dodson there with this eight-year-old uh, Border Collie dog. And the announcement's just being made to the, the ring by Dave Ray that... Uh, that Susan Dooney, unfortunately, was eliminated. So here comes Michelle Dodson. And uh, the music they're going to be dancing to is Omta by uh, the performers and orchestra at the Cirque du Soleil. Michelle has competed and demonstrated with her dogs on several occasions at Crufts. They also compete in competitive competition obedience.
Well, that was uh, really quite dramatic. Uh, Onto by Cirque du Soleil from Michelle Dodson and Devon. And interesting to see uh, the marks. I, I, I'm not quite sure how to mark that. It was all very slow and very precise. Uh, but we'll see what the judges make of it. Luckily, I'm not sitting down there at one of the tables and having to make the decision. The work that goes into this, and you think how still the dog has to be, how calm and collected, and the total concentration, particularly when you're doing these things so slowly, I think is remarkable, very good indeed. Whether or not it scores well, well, we'll just have to wait and see. But we're currently awaiting the uh, score for Kay Lawrence in just a moment, which we will have. And uh, the score's just going in for that performance that we've just seen. But in the meantime, here's Kay's score. That's, that's not bad. 23.7. A very nice one for the musical interpretation there of 8.2. But uh, 23.7. She puts her in fourth place. It really was so elegant. <laughs> I've worked with Kay a few times in, in the past. We did a show called The Underdog Show where we were judges. And... Uh, She's a very, very good dog trainer, a very nice lady too. And uh, it's nice to see her here in the ring performing in front of what is becoming a very big crowd here indeed. Right, and I'm waiting in the wings. Very popular performer here, Kath Hardman with Denby. This is an eight-year-old dog, still more extra special is the Border Collies Club, uh, Kennel Club name. And the music they're going to be dancing is the Pinocchio Medley Pezzo di Legno and the orchestra and artist Nicola Piovani.
Done, Kath. Kath and Denby there. Uh, Kath performed and demonstrated at Crofts for many years. We often uh, see her performing with uh, people like Karen Sykes, who was the first uh, performance we saw in this competition today. She'll also be the team manager for Team GB at the European Championships in August this year. And she's uh, very highly regarded in the world of heel work to music and it's nice to see her competing here in the main ring. Again, we'll wait for the judges to make their decision on, uh, on the score, uh, whilst we also wait for Michelle Dodson and her score. And there it goes, uh, she's gone into fourth place with 23.73, good scores you see there, and uh, 8.57 for the musical interpretation. It's a good, good scores, good scores. She got lost a point now. I've not seen that before. 0.97 re re reduction there for a fault. So she would have done a little bit better. She would have had 24 or more. So uh, there we go. I'm not sure what the fault was, but uh, I'm not judging specifically and just uh, looking and enjoying. So that's Michelle Dodson and her dog, Devon. The lead is still... Caroline Garrett and Forks. But are we going to see that lead taken away? This lady won the freestyle competition yesterday, Lucy Creek. The dog is called Skiffle. They're performing to Fix You by Coldplay. Skiffle is a seven-year-old Border Collie dog. He's been in this final before.
When you try your best but you don't succeed When you get what you want but not what you need When you feel so tired but you can't sleep Stuck in rivers And the tears come streaming down your face When you lose something you can't replace When you love someone but it goes to waste Could it be Much wrong with that, Lucy. Lucy and Skiffle there. Slightly morbid element about her performances uh, <laughs> this year. Dance macabre in the freestyle yesterday and now this one today. But uh, she always creates a good story. And the dance is about how the love of a good dog can help you through the pain of loss. And I thought she interpreted it very well indeed. That's a wonderful little dog, Skiffle. Seven years old, a real veteran. And uh, as I say, they won the freestyle yesterday. Are they going to get in front of Caroline Garrett and Forks, who were holding the lead 26.4 points? Uh, that's the target they have to beat. Be interesting. I'm waiting very excitedly, really, for the result of this. It's, it's nice to see Lucy. She performs so well. So now we need the uh, score for Kath Hardman and uh, Demby. There it is, 23.17. She goes into sixth place. Again, the musical interpretation is always a good score for all of these, but 23.17 puts them in sixth place 
overall. Well done, Kath. Well, we have just one competitor to go now. So that's the, uh... And she's waiting there in the wings. She was first to go yesterday with the heel work to, uh, with the freestyle, I think, or, or second maybe. And she, she is last in line today. Kathy Bates and Sybil, the dog's called Ruskath Lyrical Image, a working sheepdog, four-year-old bitch. And they're performing to the theme from The Godfather by Nino Roto. And Kathy has uh, competed at Crofts with Sybil on several occasions, including the freestyle competition yesterday. And we'll see what they're going to do with this. So, uh, maximum of 30 points available. And in the lead, Caroline Garrett and Forks. This is Kathy Bates and Sybil. Oh, nicely appreciated by the audience. A very tender finish. Kathy Bates. Ruskas, the lyrical image, the dog there.
So there they go. Nice performance, very gentle. Don't think they're going to go into the lead there. Um, we've still got to wait on Lucy Creek's uh, result, which was an excellent performance, but I don't know uh, whether the judges will have rated that quite so highly. And here's Lucy. Oh, she's gone into second place. Look at that. Nines there. 8.7, 8.5, and 8.6, uh, the, the total's very good, but not enough for first place. 25.87, so Caroline Garrett keeps the lead, and I suspect that's the way it's going to end. It was a lovely interpretation, great performance from her, as we have come to expect, I guess, and uh, didn't quite do enough to get in front of Caroline, who had that wonderful score of 26.4. She's very inventive and she acted all the way through and the dog acted as well. Great fun. And of course, we'll be able to see uh, Lucy tomorrow in the international competition. So now we uh, await for Cathy Bates' score. And I think, yeah, it's a good one. 24.7, it puts her in third place. Well done, Cathy. Third place. So, uh, now, as you'll remember, we had a competitor eliminated in the competition, and this is the reason why. You're going to see it in just a moment. Oh dear, oh dear. This is, unfortunately, it's an obedience competition and the dog's not allowed to do that. It's so unlucky. This is after the performance, or is it before the performance? I think it's before the performance. And that's what she was eliminated for. It, it's such a shame. Hard luck on them. But here's the result. We've got Caroline Garrett and Wild Sea Phoenix of Fire. Forks is the name of the dog, 26.4, the winner, Harriet Skiffle King, Lucy Creek and Skiffle are in second place. There's a full list all the way down, and sadly there at the bottom, Murphy Mischief, well, it was real mischief, wasn't it, to get eliminated for wearing on her owner's leg. What a shame. So there's Lucy Creek, winner of the freestyle and second in this competition today. Kathy Bates there, who we've just seen, she's there at the left, she's third, got third place. And on the right-hand side there, fourth performer today, 26.4, Caroline Garrett and Forks. Dave Ray just uh, making sure that he knows who the presenters are. <laughs> well, there's Carol. Caroline, she'll be very, very pleased in this. She won this last year, so she'll be very happy to have done it again. Standing behind her there, getting applause from Kay Lawrence. Well, well done, Caroline. Excellent performance. Just piffing Lisa, uh, Lucy Creek by 0.5 of a point, 0.53 of a point. Lucy Creek's performance, very distinctive, great cheer, very popular with the crowd here. And we'll see her, as I said, tomorrow in the international freestyle competition. That's going to be very exciting indeed. And Cathy Bates, last to go. Great performance from her. And uh, coming in there in third place with a very good score of uh, 24.7. So well done, Cathy. I think that's almost the same score she got yesterday in the, in the freestyle. But uh, there are, those are one, two, and three, and a very entertaining competition, which I hope you've enjoyed. I certainly have. And I look forward to the international competition tomorrow. And our thanks to the three judges, Carolina Hasselroth, Heather Smith, and Carol, uh, Carol Wallace, did a marvelous job, a very difficult, job and uh, not an enviable job I don't think uh, watching out over this huge ring whilst he's 
wonderful uh, people and their dogs perform. Thoroughly enjoyable competition. So uh, whilst the arena is now set up for our next event, which is the uh, Rescue Dog uh, Agility Competition, uh, really looking forward to this indeed. Uh, before then, we're going to just show you a couple of the uh, contenders for the Yukonuba Friends for Life competition. I'll, um, I'll never forget the day Hutt and I first met this young puppy, this lively, uh, excitable puppy. Um, and I just knew at that point he was going to be a match made in heaven. My name's Nathan Edge. I'm 22 years old from Mansfield. And with me, I have my guide dog, Hudson. My eye condition originally um, sort of generated when I was just six years old. Uh, I was diagnosed with a condition called uveitis and I was left with about 20% vision. As I turned 18, um, I then started to get additional problems with my eyesight. Uh, the, I woke up uh, in February 2014 and uh, it had gone overnight into just complete darkness. For several weeks, a couple of months, I just went into a shell, um, I didn't um, leave the house, I didn't speak to any friends, I, I just shut myself off from the world. Although he has, probably has no idea what he's done for me, he is the one that pulled me out of that difficult place that I was in. With him by my side every day I had that comfort, him being right there and unconditionally loving me and just caring for me, it made the world of difference to me. Since the three years that Hudson and I have been in a partnership, um, I probably would say I've done more in these three years than I probably ever would have done in my whole life. Um, it's amazing to think I've gone from being in a, in a room locked away with, without a life to then doing all the things we're doing now. Uh, because now my dream is to hopefully one day represent the Great Britain in the Paralympics. It's difficult to put into words the bond Hudson and I have, the relationship is just, I didn't know it was possible to have a relationship like, like what we have with a dog. He's given me the life that I have now. The future for Hudson and I is looking very, very bright. And I now feel that there's nothing holding me back. You know, I feel free to go on and do the things you know, I want to do. I don't feel like there's any barriers anymore. Um, you know, we can just take on the world and do everything that I've always dreamt of. My husband decided we were going to go to Battersea Brands Hatch and I'm thinking, oh my God, we're getting a dog. What's it gonna be? This big white barrel came flying at me and I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm in love. What is this? This is mine, I'm taking him home. He was sent to me, absolutely sent to me. My name is Sally, I'm 27, and this is Bowser, my English Bull Terrier, who is three. <laughs> the speculation is that I've had multiple sclerosis for 
over 10 years. It wasn't until November 2015 that I got the official diagnosis. Multiple cirrhosis is a disease of the nervous system. Every day I have to take about six pills in the morning, six pills at night. Every month, every 28 days, I go for a chemotherapy infusion. Because of the way the lesions are in my brain, it reduces my sense of feeling in my hands, which Bowser helps with, because I can feel myself touching him, even though the sensation isn't as good as it used to be. It also affects my legs, motor functions, my short-term memories affected. So having the memories and building the memories with Bowser, it gives me something to link to, so I'm always remembering something happening. We'd not long had Bowser, and we'd been for a big beach walk. I came back and I wasn't feeling very good, and I'd passed out on the sofa. But his dad was outside in the garden doing some gardening, and he said, he was just insistent, you've got to come inside, you've got to come inside. There's something wrong. Barking at him, chewing on the stuff that he was trying to use. And when he came in and found me, it was... There was a medical emergency and when I'd got sorted and I was sleeping so much Bowser was just laid with me, laid on me, laid on the areas that hurt. He seems to know where the pain is and pressing his weight against me and pressing himself against me. He was just there. He wasn't interested in sitting with anybody else, he just wanted to sit with me. He gives me, he gives me joy. It's more important than what he does for me physically and you know nudging at me because certain things don't smell right or don't seem right to him. He's walking along this journey with me and just gives me a desire to put one foot in front of the other again. My name's Lance Corporal Denslow and this is military working dog Charlie. Charlie's seven years old and he's an English Springer Spaniel. Um, Charlie's an AES dog, which means um, arms explosive search. So it basically means he can search pretty much any type of train, um, buildings, vehicles, anything like that, and we can go and search for weapons and explosives. So I've had Charlie now for two years. Um, I picked him up um, at 102 Squadron um, when I completed my AES course, so I've become qualified to handle him and he was um, the dog that I got allocated as soon as I got back to regiment. Me and Charlie will only deploy as a team, so the bond's there, especially when it comes to things like when you're doing, when you're firing on the ranges, you can really see the trust between the handler and the, and the animal. And when he's searching, it's just a big game to him. So what we're doing is we're putting all that trust into that dog and that's where the training comes into it. So he's been out on operations now a couple of times, um, different tours of Afghanistan. Um, and what he'll do is he'll just um, give that level of assurance to the, um, to the guys out on the ground looking for IEDs and the bombs in the ground. And that's his just sole purpose, really. I'm sure if you ask any of the guys that have worked with military working dogs before, like any of the infantry call signs, what they'll say is that they love the dog. It's that, it's that level of assurance that a human can't give or a bit of kit can't. The guys are just so much happier with the dogs being out in front of the patrol and got a dog handler with them. You ask him to do a lot of things normal pet dogs probably wouldn't do in this trade and he allows you to do it, especially that bond, and he really does like to please the handler. And I'm quite lucky with him really, he's good. Um, he really does work hard and he really, and he really does enjoy what he does.
We are now live. We're now live with uh, Facebook, and we welcome uh, viewers on Facebook as we stay on YouTube for all the rest of you who may have been watching this morning. We're really looking forward to your company whilst we watch a number of very exciting events. As far as Facebook is concerned, the event that you're going to be seeing is the Rescue Dog Agility. And in this, it's not really a competition. It is a demonstration where we're going to have various dogs from various dog rescue organizations here in the UK. And uh, that's more important, I suppose, than the actual whether a dog wins or loses. It doesn't really matter. In some cases, we'll be seeing little relay races. We have dogs of various sizes, so we'll be starting off with small dogs over the very low jumps, which you can see out there in the ring. Then we have three dogs which will be competing at the medium size, and then we've got six dogs or seven dogs, I think it is, competing uh, for the large dogs. So we'll raise the barriers, as it were, as we go along. But it looks like being a lot of fun to see these wonderful dogs. There are so many rescue organizations in the United Kingdom, vitally important, they are desperately important. Sadly, it's a, it's, a, it's a great shame that they are necessary, but they are necessary and they do a wonderful job. If it weren't for the rescue organizations, so many dogs would, would die, literally. They would not survive. So we're going to welcome a few of these wonderful dogs and a few of the handlers and helpers at the various organizations. And I'll try to fill you in with as much information as I can about the individual organizations and about the individual dogs and their situations. So we're looking forward to the start here. We start with the first little dog there. It's just coming to the ring. It's called Teddy. It's a Romanian street dog. And uh, the handler there is Claire, who from uh, Happily Ever After, we're calling these small dogs the Flying Fido's Division. <laughs> small dogs and small jumps. So first up in this, we've got Teddy with Claire. Teddy's a three-year-old Romanian rescue dog, picked up as a puppy with his blind mother and two sisters. He's been competing for over a year now. He's won several rosettes, taken his owner up to grade two. Apparently he can be a bit of a Houdini. Yes, well, lots of dogs are escapologists, aren't they? When he gets excited, he has a very high-pitched scream, which he's not doing now, so he's just enjoying himself. He's not madly excited. Teddy can often be found upside down, having a cuddle when waiting his turn, though he's picky about his competition conditions. He doesn't always want to play if it's too hot or too wet and has been known to take shelter in a tunnel. And he's having a grand old time. I'm not even sure if he's on the right course, but he's having a wonderful time. There we go. I think he did pretty well, and we don't care if he got it right or not. He had a wonderful time. A rescue dog from Romania. And now here we've got Ernie Tadpole. Oh, no, we haven't. We're looking back. We're looking back, but here's Ernie Tadpole. Uh, you can see he's a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Uh, Kerry C is her handler and uh, he comes from Battersea, res representing Battersea Dog and Cat's home. Uh, Ernie Tadpole is a happy and bright four-year-old Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Handed into Battersea at six months when quite neglected by his owners who had no time for him. He was worried, underweight, needed medical attention for his eyes. And since being at his new home, he's had two knee surgeries and lots of rehab that's got him back to the full fitness that you see now. Ernie's first event at Crufts, but he's lots of experience being a supporter at events. He loves people, and he can often be found getting belly rubs. Sounds like a proper dog to me. It's a lovely course, this, for them. Uh, quite difficult, because they have to repeat and turn themselves around on things, re responding beautifully to the handling there, coming round over these low jumps and into the final jump. Well done there, Ernie Tadpole. And this is a dog that's had knee operations and all the rest. And look at it. Brilliant. We've just started our next uh, dog on the course, though. This is Kiora. Uh, it's a Corgi Cross. Carol from uh, Wood Green, Wood Green uh, Animal Centre there. Uh, she came in to rescue this dog. There's a litter of five puppies when she was five weeks old. Started agility when she was 18 months old. Quite nervous at first. But she's gradually gained in confidence. She loves swimming. She goes swimming in all weather. She's a real mummy's girl and will rarely stray from Carol's side. She loves 
cuddles and treats, but don't we all? That's Kiora and Carol. Well, I thought this was going to be a little uh, relay section, but it's not. And now on the start line, we've got our next one, which is called Woody. Well, we've already started. It's a little Spitz-type dog, a uh, little crossbreed. Amy from Battersea. Next up, uh, uh, Woody was a stray before being brought to Battersea. Once rehomed, he quickly became a much-loved family pet and an absolute joy, as you can see. You can, well, I mean, these little dogs are so lovable. And this is a very friendly and outgoing one. He's excelled in agility, obedience, and has appeared on television and in adverts uh, with handler Amy. There we go, and here's our next competitor. This is Jack. I don't know what he is. Uh, he's, he's lovely. <laughs> Hannah uh, has brought dog from Val Gray, uh, rescued from a pound in Ireland when he was a year old. Not sure what he is, as we said. Too much for his elderly owner, and we're certainly no lap dog. He's done extremely well in agility and loves it. In fact, the only thing he shifts his little fat bottom for is uh, agility. He runs at grade seven and competes at championship levels and championship classes. Look at that. Happy dog, rescued, thank goodness. This, whoa! Little Jack Russell here, Ollie, with Karen from the Blue Cross. He closes out the group. This is the last of the small dogs. <laughs> He's all over the place, and so he should be. Uh, Ollie and Karen here. Ollie was rehomed from uh, Kimpton Blue Cross when he was around 10 weeks old. A <laughs> wrong way through. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? When he got to his home, they changed his name to Lockie, then changed it to Ollie. So he's probably a bit confused. <laughs> Some people think he should have stayed as Lockie as he's an absolute handful. Ollie is totally crazy, as you can see. He's having a ball. Loves life and exercise. Well done, the Blue Cross. <laughs> Persevere. First catch your dog. Oh, I love it. Yeah, he'll be out in the collection room. You'll never catch him now. There we go. Well done, Karen. Look at this. Oh, what a nosedive. And he couldn't care less. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> That's one of the best shots I've seen in a long time. Love it. <laughs> Right, this is Louis. Now, actually, I've got no information on Louis, so I'm not sure where he's come from. And he's stopping for a scratch anyway. <laughs> Only going over the small jumps, although it's a, 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 certainly a dog capable of going over the large jumps. But... Obviously, a very much a beginner at agility. I don't know who the young man is who's handling with it there, but it's lovely to see them. Every now and again, we get uh, dogs added to uh, the events, and we don't always, in the commentary box, get the information until it's over. But a lovely performance, and don't the crowd love it? That's super. So well done, Louis. And well done, young man, whoever you are. That was lovely. <laughs> Oh, from the uh, from the uh, Animal Welfare Trust, I think. Uh, ju just looking on the back of the the boy's shirt there as he went out. I think I caught sight of that. Right, the uh, jumps are being raised now because now we've got the mighty canines. We started with the flying Fidos. Now we've got the mighty canines. These are over the medium jumps. We've only got three of them in this, but everything just being raised a little. Now, the Spurs dog, which is on the start line there, is also from the National Animal Welfare Trust, which uh, we just saw Louis, as I said before. Uh, this one's called Diamond. Staffordshire Bull Terrier again, called Sharon. I uh, beg your pardon, called Diamond, with Sharon. Sharon's representing the, the Welfare Trust. Diamond's a five-year-old Staffy, taken on by Sharon at 10 months old. She was too excitable for her previous owner. And that little, there we are. You made it in the end. Well done, uh, well done, Diamond. 
Diamond has been the hardest dog Sharon has ever had to train. He's very, very excitable and finds it very hard to listen. But they've worked very hard <laughs> and they're starting to make real progress. Diamond is a, a fast little dog, loves agility. And if you get a look at the face, you can see her smiling when she's doing it. Well, it's a bit misogynistic to suggest that uh, the dogs look like humans and smile, but they do. And this is a happy little dog, and they're building a trust and a relationship, and that's lovely to see. There we go. Yes, if at first you don't succeed, or even if at second you don't succeed, have another go. Well done. Well done, Diamond. And this is Murphy. Murphy is another Romanian street dog. Oh, and he's off. He's going back to Romania, I think. Yeah, Jenny <laughs> from Happily Ever After may chase him. She may just stand in the middle and say, come back. Oh, boy. The... Now, this is a dog who is having a ball. What are we supposed to be doing? I don't care. Whatever it is, I'm enjoying. Oh, he stopped. Whoop, he's off again. First catch your dog. Well done, Murphy. This dog's been known as Smurf as well. Jenny finds it hysterical. You've got him under control, Jenny. You're doing very well, love. Very well-travelled dog, mostly around the arena. <laughs> he was rescued from the streets in Romania, was reformed to, with a family in Holland. Unfortunately, one of the children developed allergies, so Murphy was taken to happily ever after. Very clever dog, full of energy, as you've seen. <laughs> and eventually, when he's under control, he's fantastic. Well done. A massive round of applause. Well done, happily ever after. <laughs> I think he might have been disqualified in competition, but we just don't... This is just so much fun. Oh, what a beauty. What a beauty. Last of the uh, mighty canines, we've got Lexi. He's a Yusinagan. Louis is uh, handling there from the uh, National Animal Welfare Trust in Cornwall. Handler is Louise. Brought to the NAWT when she was six months old and her previous owners couldn't cope, it's often the story. They didn't want to send her back to the breeder. She was nervous of everything she was exposed to, but this is a dog that's really got its act together and its life together. It's lovely to see. Didn't quite make the last jump, but that doesn't matter either. This little dog loves running agility with her best friend, Louis, who's an 11-year-old dog. And they enjoy taking part in agility competitions together. Right, we're coming to the uh, Waggy Wonders for the large dog display now. We've got, I think we've got seven of them. Could be just six, but you never know. These things change and they're just brought along to try us. But I've got seven down on my list and that's what we may see. These are the large jumps, so everything's come up to the highest level. First dog coming in there. This is Holly from Valgrays. Uh, Holly is a working sheepdog, Border Collie. Heather is the handler. Eight years old, this one. She's representing Valgrays with her mum, Heather. <laughs> Holly was taken into Valgrays when she was about uh, 12 months old, very nervous, very underweight, and with what appeared to be a cigarette burn on her head. But this little dog, she's now a very loving, a very affectionate girl, and she's very much loved. She was Heather's first agility job, uh, dog and is competing at grade four. She also enjoys doing heel work to music for fun. And she lives with two other Valgrave rescues and rules the roost. And why not? She's earned the right. Eight years old. Well done. It's marvellous seeing these rescues. These organisations do invaluable work. I can't tell you how important it is. And uh, if you're thinking of getting dog, you can, do, it's, you can do far worse than getting a rescue dog. Now, on the start line now, uh, we've got Rafi, or Kratu, with Tessa from Wood Green. I'm not 
Again, I'm not sure what he is. He's, he's a, a number of crosses, I would think. Rafi is uh, Tessa's emotional support dog and is a great ambassador for rescue dogs and training. He's gone from strength to strength, learning new training methods, including trick training. He's become a pat dog. He's been on television twice. He's not behaving like a star, though, isn't he? He's lovely. He's a great shaggy bear. I... No, yeah, go that way. Why not? Yeah, good try. Well done. Well done, Rafi. Oh, we'll have a go over the top there. I'll go where I want. Yeah, that's fine. You follow him, Tessa. <laughs> You can tell that these dogs are not particularly well trained at agility, but it doesn't matter, they're having fun. They're dogs, and dogs do all sorts of things to have fun, and this one's having a grand old time. Oh, back on the course. Here we are, over the top. Yes, and over the next one. Yes, and over, no, not the next one. No, not over there. Yes, biddable, but not all the time. They're doing well, well finished. <laughs> well done, Tessa and Rafi. Now, here's a, a dog that's been brought... Oh, we're still looking at, uh, at Rafi having fun. <laughs> here's another one. This is Magic, and this comes from the National Animal Welfare Trust, but I know no more about it. It's one of these that's been added at the last moment. Again, a rescue dog, happy barking its head off. Just listening to the uh, ring commentator for the audience here in the side. And they say it's got uh, staffy antecedents and uh, probably has, but uh, a crossbreed of numerous crosses and a rescue dog who's having a ball. Thanks to the wonderful people who work at the rescue centres. That's magic from the National Animal Welfare Trust. And now we've got Charlie. This is a collie cross. This is Charlie, he's a collie cross with Paula. This is from the National Animal Welfare Trust. Five years old, this dog brought us a puppy uh, into rescue. Paula was a volunteer at the kennels and ended up fostering Charlie. Uh, as single puppies were never left in the kennels alone and she ended up adopting him within days. And Charlie's grown into a, a very loving, keen to please dog, as you can see. A collie cross there. And just a, a correction, which I will make, the previous dog we saw was actually Dotty, which was from the Blue Cross, not from the National Animal Welfare Trust. The one that was supposed to have dropped in there didn't come in. So uh, we get these things wrong from time to time, for which I apologise. Now on the start line, that very alert head there is Ina. This is another Romanian rescue uh, being uh, handled by Lee and to come from Valgrais. Ina's here with her handler. Ina uh, was so shy at first she wouldn't come out from the table to meet her new owners. She's now a confident girl who's got better and better at doing agility when she thinks about it. Ina trains at uh, Red Dog Agility in Essex. Last year she competed in her first Kennel Club Agility show at Grade 1, coming in at sixth position. And I'm told we haven't to be fooled by her sweetness because she does tend to sneak off with the odd shoe which she'll take to her bed and demolish it. Not her bed, the shoe. It is wonderful, I can't emphasize too much how important it is the job that these rescue centers do. Many of the volunteers who work at them end up adopting the dogs that come in, but uh, there are always plenty of dogs at these rescue centers to be adopted. And it's wonderful to see these dogs here today. We're, we're proud to be able to show such, an, I think, a most interesting event. And it's not serious, it's fun. This is Ireland, the last one here, this is a Border Collie, this is Amy, and she's come from Battersea Dogs Home. It wraps up the Waggy Woofers division. Uh, Ireland's a four-year-old Border Collie and is actually an expert competitor. 
She's been training for the Junior European Championships for Great Britain, competed at Olympia in 2016 and 17, and is the young part of the Young Kennel Club team here at Crufts. So this is, well, it just shows rescue dogs can be absolutely top class. The last one we see there, a really first class agility job, uh, dog finishing off the event. So those are our wonderful rescue dogs. And it's lovely to see them. The arena will now be cleared. I hope you've enjoyed that. We think it was a bit of fun and uh, it was not competitive. There was no timing on it. We didn't care whether dogs got it right or wrong. What we wanted to show was rescue dogs and that rescue dogs are so valuable and the work of the rescue organizations cannot be praised too much. And I hope that when you have the opportunity, you will get an opportunity to spread the word. Rescue centers are brilliant and we've been delighted to host them here in the main arena at Crufts 2017. Right now, as you've uh, probably just heard from the ring, we're going to continue a little bit more because we're going to get a little bit of a relay race. I thought we were going to get this earlier, but we didn't. We're going to have it uh, now instead. And coming in, we've got Woody and Jack. I think that's who we've got, but I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. These are the small dog and it's a relay, so I'm trying to, they're trying to work out in the ring what they're doing, but it is just as well, because I don't know. And just watch very carefully and see what happens, and we'll have some fun. Not quite sure what is happening. We've got, I think, out there we've got Woody from Battersea. No, we haven't. I think that might be Kiora. Right, so I'm being told now that what we're going to see is a relay where the dogs are going to start at exactly the same time. I'm not quite sure how this works, but we're going to get one starting on the right, one on the left. That doesn't make sense to me. And I think, I think they're just working out what they're doing. This is, this is quite nice. It's called living by the seat of your pants, really. It's quite fun. One on the left, one on the right. They've finally sorted it out. Uh, making sure I've got the right dogs there is going to be difficult. But what I think we've got is Woody from Battersea and Kia from Wood Green. And here they go. Opposite ways round the course, so they're going to cross somewhere. That's going to be amusing. This is going to be extremely amusing. I'm not quite sure where they're going. Oh, I see. The matching courses. I've got it. Finally, it's worked out. Just coming over the finish, and it looks as though on the left, we have our winner on the left, which I think was uh, uh, Kiora from Wood Green, I think. However, it was Battersea versus Wood Green, and one of them won. And it doesn't matter which, it's a demonstration, and it's fun. And now we're going to have another one. So here we've got uh, two more going again. Now this time I think we've got Jack from Val Grey and Teddy from Happy Ever After. The handles are Hannah and Claire, and one of them's not started. Well, the little black one is winning. Um, I'm not sure which one this is. I can't see the, the back of the shirt to determine where it's from. But it's either from Belgrade or Happy Ever After. And they're now just about finished. There we are. Can't see it. Turn your back to me. <laughs> My word. In fact, you've seen these dogs before. They have been. They, they, they did the earlier demonstration of going around the course, but in the relay there, you can cheer for whichever one you like. And uh, they're having fun, and it's just showing 
how happy these dogs are, having been rescued, some of them some time ago, some adopted by their handlers, some being brought here by the handlers from their particular rescue charities. So here we've got... I'm not quite sure where we're going. We've got... Uh, Trying to G up the audience here a little bit because they have gone rather quiet, but it's, it, it, it is confusing and we're not really sure which uh, which dogs are taking part here. But we've got uh, Wood Green against Battersea, I believe, in this one. And we're getting a bit of noise from the crowd at last. It is a big crowd here, I've got to say. We're well over half full. It's tremendous to see. And the dogs respond to that. They like the noise. <laughs> dogs having fun that's what this is about and in fact to a large extent that's what craft is about the the very serious stuff of the breed judging is a different thing but the dogs there are enjoying themselves and they love showing off and uh, you see the best of the best in this uh, arena at the end of each day here at uh, crufts 2017 it is a marvellous event. It's been fabulous this year. It's very busy here today. Utility dogs and toys are the ones, the pedigree dogs that are being judged, but all the events that go on in this main arena keep vast crowds amused and entertained for hours upon end. So I think we've got one more relay to go. It may be the last one. It may be not. This time, I think we've got Wood Green and the National Animal Welfare Trust competing, but it doesn't really matter. Just enjoy the pictures and enjoy these dogs having fun. This looks quite competitive. In fact, this last one that we're watching now, I think, is Ireland, who we saw from Battersea, who uh, really is a very expert agility dog going around there and finishing off the course. That is a tremendous performance. But the other's not done too badly either. I can't remember which one it is. It might have been... Uh, uh, it might have been Charlie, but there we go. Great stuff to see. We have two more. I wasn't right with the last two being the last two. These are the last two. And it's the last relay of the day for our wonderful, wonderful rescue dogs. Actually, the audience uh, being persuaded eventually to cheer has made a big difference to the way the dogs perform. And they, they do, they pick up on the noise, and they really have been cheered along. That's great. Lovely finish there from one of them, lovely finish from the second. They've had a grand time. Doesn't matter if they complete the course properly, it really makes no difference. We're just thrilled to have seen so many rescue dogs here at Crofts. And Crofts is expanding in this area. We see many dogs in this arena that aren't pedigree dogs. We have the Scruffs final, of course, as well, which takes place here, uh, as well as the many pedigree events that we have. So it's a great, enjoyable event for dog lovers, whatever they like. So we're having a parade of the rescue dogs, and I hope that this applause really goes for those handlers and the rescue organisations themselves, which, as I've said, do such a wonderful, wonderful job in rehoming and rehabilitating dogs for which maybe, in many cases, there may have been virtually no hope. And this is how they end up. They're ending up even performing at the world's greatest dog show. A great proud moment for them. They're having a ball. They really are. And some of the things you can see there, so don't crawl them around on its stomach, though. It's trying to play with the one ahead of it. They, they are wonderful. They've had a smashing time, and they're just being dogs. It's great. Hope you've enjoyed it.
Well, as the ring here is uh, being cleared now for our next event, uh, they continue all through the afternoon. We have to say goodbye to our Facebook audience. Hope you've enjoyed uh, that look at Crofts. No doubt we'll see you again uh, in the future tomorrow. Uh, but we stay, of course, live streaming on YouTube. So if you're watching on Facebook and you want to keep on with uh, what's happening here at Crufts, live streaming all afternoon and right to the end of the performance this evening will come live on YouTube, direct from the main arena here at the NEC in Birmingham. Hope you've enjoyed it so far. Lots more to come.
Well, good afternoon to you. Uh, Jim Rosenthal here in the main arena on the second day of Crufts. Graham Partridge, as always, alongside me. And we are gearing up for the Crufts singles series of qualifiers they've had for this one. All scoring points throughout the year. Only the top dogs invited here. Around 300 tried to get here. And we're about to see 11 small, 10 medium and 16 large dogs looking to go through uh, to the final later on today. It's a three-part competition, jumping, agility and the final this evening. Times and faults are collated for you and everyone has a clean slate for the final in around about three hours time. So they're going to be running in reverse order uh, to this morning. And we're first of all going to see the uh, large dogs, then the small, and then the medium dogs. Now, Graham, alongside me here, and they're just uh, looking around at uh, this course, Graham, and it's a pretty demanding one that has been set by our judge, Alan Bray. It is. Uh, Crofts Singles is uh, one of the premier events here at Crofts uh, during the agility, and it's a demanding course, is it? exceptionally difficult no but there's uh, a lot of tests in this course lots of changes direction um, and there's a couple of sequences we're actually been done twice but they've been done in a different order so that brings its own challenges for the memory when you come to do it the second time the brain tells you but I didn't do it like this last time and of course more importantly the dog um, and just for everybody who is joining us on YouTube, you are all very, very welcome. A massive audience out there, wherever you are, and they just might be looking and just wondering what is going on here. What are these people doing, making these strange gestures? Just underline what uh, is happening for any new viewers, could you? It's organised chaos out there, basically. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, the, Alan Bray, our judge, has designed the course, and there he is, just walking around, checking that everything's as he wants it. He's designed the course. The competitors will have seen the course um, an hour, hour and a half ago on paper. First time they will have seen it. This is a unique course for this competition. And this is the first chance that they actually get to go out onto the arena to walk their way around to decide how they want to handle it, where they think the dogs are going to be, where they want to be, more importantly, what commands they're going to give, uh, and if there are any handling points or traps. Um, that they haven't perhaps noticed on paper because sometimes when it goes down for real it doesn't quite translate to how it was on paper. And Graham, anyone looking at Alan Bray and saying, well, what the heck do you know about it? I mean, he has been there and he's bought every T-shirt known to man and, in fact, voted the top agility handler of all time back in 2008. He knows this sport inside out. It's probably more what he doesn't know about it. Yep, tremendously experienced competitor uh, and judge, uh, and uh, he considers it a great honour. To judge here at Crufts is, is probably the accolade for judges. And a word about uh, everybody working out there, especially those in, in wearing the pink shirts. They're all volunteers, aren't they? All, all give their time freely for, for the love of dogs and for the love of crops. And, and, and uh, there's a little story that I know you're very, very keen to share with all our viewers. Yes, I am. These people are all volunteers. They're, they're all agility enthusiasts. They come here year after year uh, and work flat out for four days. Now, uh, they're all a little bit sad this year, and I'm going to get a bit emotional when I say this. Um, you'll see that some of them are wearing some cancer awareness brooches. There they are. Um, and that's basically in memory of Yvonne Good and Christine Hickman, who sadly are no longer with us this year, and they've been uh, greatly missed. Well, good to them. Greatly missed, but never forgotten. And um, a wonderful memory on each and every shirt as well and it just might be worth pointing out before we get into the action it's going to be absolutely thrilling i mean this is a monumental event to organize uh, properly isn't it four days around about 150,000 people coming through the door over 20,000 dogs here and uh, without the people that we're seeing out in the ring crufts would just not happen uh, it's absolutely amazing um and as you say just although these people are going to be sadly missed as a result of that a, a lady called lotta bowers has uh, got up off her bum and together with a lot of other people has started a campaign called Agility Against Cancer and they have raised thousands and thousands of pounds which they're using to help people who are suffering from cancer or who need help with costs of payment towards their treatment. So, and I'm sure uh, Christine and Yvonne will be immensely proud of what the agility community has done. 
Well, and Graham, thank you very much indeed for sharing that with us. Let's get back to the competition that, that we are about to see. The first of, of, uh, of 16 large dogs are going to be appearing very shortly. Uh, course time, I'm just hearing, uh, is, is 50 seconds. Just explain when we talk about the course time. Again, I'm, I'm aware a lot of people coming in and enjoying crafts without perhaps knowing the nitty-gritty and the intricacies of all the rules. Course time, Graham, just explain that to us, could you? It is. That's the time that the com dogs have got to complete the course. So if it's 43 seconds, if they go over 43 seconds and they haven't finished, they incur time faults and they are added to the total score and just a word about uh, the competitors out there who, who are walking the course um, no matter who finishes where this afternoon um, all of them know that they are very very good at what they do just to reach this section of the competition appearing at Crufts 2017 they each deserve a big pat on the back just for that not just this competition Jim I mean, anybody who gets to any of the finals here at Crufts has done exceptionally well. Some dogs are slightly more experienced than others, and the same with the handlers. Um, we've got some very familiar faces that we see year on year. We've also got some new faces coming up, which is absolutely fantastic. But whatever happens, um, and, and it is a big ask, because we don't normally complete, uh, compete indoors on artificial grass, TV, music, commentators. So this is a big ask for a lot of them, but uh, they've all done amazingly well. And at the end of the day, they're all taking the best dog home. Absolutely right, and you, you mentioned uh, the, the artificial uh, surface there. We have a brand new green carpet at the main arena that's uh, considerably busier than it was uh, uh, here yesterday. It's filling up, and there's a nice buzz about it. And uh, having seen the action on that particular carpet, there haven't been too many slips and slides this year. Hats off to the Kennel Club this year. They've uh, they've actually bit the bullet, and they've got a new carpet in which was used at the World Championships last year and it's going to be used at the World Championships in this coming year uh, it's not cheap not cheap I tell you you'd be surprised but it's worth it dog safety is paramount and this has probably been the best surface we've seen agility run on for a number of years bearing in mind it has to be uh, a multifunctional surface because the breed dogs are going to be on it the flyball dogs he'll work to music so it's got to be a surface that works for everybody but from the agility point of view from my point of view it's been thumbs up all the way around agree with that and of course uh, the frantic flyball competition coming your way later uh, from the main arena here at crofts 2017 and we're getting near towards the first action in this crofts uh, singles first of 16 and we're having to be looking at the large dogs, first of 16 large dogs we're going to be seeing. And a special welcome, we've spoken about him, to Alan, Alan Bray, meticulous human being. And as always, we will get um, Graham's view uh, of the course, getting to talk round one of the rounds. First competitor is ready to go. It is Lauren Langman from Oakhampton and Fiji, six-year-old Border Collie, loves the clapping and the cheering and loves having a crowd, qualified at two events for Crufts, part of the European 26-2017 GB squad as well. But first of 16 uh, means that uh, this morning in the jumping, things did not go particularly well, but looking to make up for it now, Fiji and Lauren, and they are away through that tunnel, early tunnel. And there's five faults early on as well. Through the weeds, that's gone the right way through the weeds, have to enter from the right-hand side over the Kennel Club jump to Next tunnel, it's quick, and just those five faults, got to touch the white on the bottom of that to contact area, does it okay. Through the tunnel, just a little hesitation, five more faults picked up for that. Up. And an elimination as well started off well and then sadly picking up an elimination again if you've not watched it before always complete the course after an elimination dog doesn't know uh, that uh, she has been eliminated and there we are one down and 15 to go really good run there by lauren such a shame just pulled the dog away from the jump it was supposed to do there we are it was supposed to do that jump pulled away therefore she's completed the course out of order Heather McLean, big Scottish support here from Ayton in Scotland with a shock five-year-old, a working sheepdog, joy to live with, funny, cuddly boy as well, and very stylish over the first couple of jumps there, quickly through the tunnel too. This is looking good so far. 
quickly into the wheeze. That's very, very good indeed from Shock. Kennel Club, no problem. Clear so far and very, very quick too. A-frame is fine. Next tunnel, good. Oh, and there's sadly, and that's an elimination. And just explain why coming in at the wrong side and uh, eliminated on the wheeze. But again, the round will continue, Greg. Unfortunately, that was the wrong course. As I was alluding to earlier on, they'd already come across towards the weaves from that same jump. The first time they'd gone from the jump into the weaves, the second time they have to avoid the weaves, but the dog expected to do that. Really unlucky for Helen. Uh, Heather, she's uh, really competitive, but uh, she will be back. Elimination, crossed arms equals elimination. I'd like you to talk us through this round. It is Natasha Wise returning. We saw her yesterday with Pebbles. Natasha from Watford Village in Northamptonshire. First time in the senior classes at Crufts. Talk us around the course with this one, Graham. First time for this dog in the seniors at Crufts. Uh, Natasha is a three-time world medium champ. But it's a nice straightforward start. One, two, three into the tunnel. Cross on the diagonal. Bleak weave entry, they've got to push around the far side of the kennel club jump and into the tunnel, and then they come back out, up and over the A-frame in a blink of an eye. Fortunately picking up five bolts, and a little failure of communication there. The dog took the wrong jump, but you will see Natasha not stop working this dog around this course. She doesn't want the dog to finish on a negative. She is uh, now a full-time uh, agility trainer. Uh, and a very, a very good one, and she will take the positives away from this. Well done, Natasha Wise and Pebbles. Thank you, Graham. Pebbles, definitely a one for the future, just four years of age, and that was where the uh, five faults were picked up, missing the contact area as well before the elimination. Bonnie Quick from Wellington in Somerset with Ivy, six-year-old Kelpie, cross quality. Uh, Collie does one speed fast in this year's Great Britain squad. Ivy and Bonnie. And away we go. Join the early part of this course. And Ivy very swiftly through, only 11 seconds on the clock. A frame, good contact, that's fine. Next tunnel, in and out in the blink of an eye. Well over that, that's really, really good. Over the seesaw, was it okay? It was. And the wall, the long jump, setting the standard here, setting the standard here. Over the dog walk to 37.8 for Bonnie Quick and for Ivy, 37.8. And that's the best so far. Over the wall, over the long jump. Never looked at the other end of the tunnel there. And this is a really great dog walk. Bonnie known for her dogs running dog walks. Great man. Karen Marriott next to go with Puzzle from Gainsborough in Lincolnshire. Nine-year-old crossbeat Collie Cross Retriever. Competed here for the past few years. Proud to have qualified again as everyone should be here. This is building up nicely into a quality competition. I've seen them go through those weeds. Kennel Club jump, no problem. Tunnel is fine. A frame, good contact. Good contact. Great 20 seconds so far. Bit of hesitation, but it's okay. So is the seesaw. Keep your eye on the clock. 37 to beat. Up over the wall, over the long jump too. This is getting better and better. This is really good. It will be very, very close to 37.5. It's 37.8. We need electronic timing here, Graham. Absolutely amazing. Fantastic round. Look at that. That's where you pick up your time. You don't hesitate. They just teach the dog to run down to the bottom. Not as easy as it. And look at that dog walk. That's absolutely amazing. Dan Shaw and Geek, four-year-old border collie. Great trainer and handler is Dan. And this one, Graham, you reckon might just be, if you can have such a thing at Crofts, a dark horse. Not sure if you can have a dark horse. Let's say a dark horse. We'll debate it. <laughs> we will. Um, this dog is really quick. It just now relies on Dan holding it together 
uh, and just keeping the dog on, on, on course. On course and faultless so far. Remember they are qualifying for it final later on tonight but the standard is really really good and this is going to be a quick time as well 36.8 first one in the 36s for Dan Shaw and for Geek and goes to the top of top of the pile of the large dogs and again not just quite as quick down the dog walk but he obviously made the speed up it's all about tight turns and straight lines Heidi Clatham we're looking at from Romilly in Cheshire and DJ you know a bit about this one don't you Graham and your wife Pat uh, yes we actually bred this dog um, it's a great dog It'll be interesting to see how he handles the carpet here and unfortunately just pushes him into the wrong end of the weaving pole so I think that's probably not the start that she would have hoped for but he's uh, just an amazing dog this one very powerful uh, covers the ground and that's what you want. You want a big, powerful dog. Not quite the experience uh, at Crufts, but, but I think we're going to see a lot more of him. Six years of age now. Picking up a number of bolts. Yeah. But she'll keep him going. Needs to finish on a positive note if we can. There you go. Move it straight out. Gets his toy. Six years of age, honest and talented, and a learning process here for the dog that uh, Graham bred. DJ and Heidi. Looking at a digit, five-year-old crossbreed, Stephen Richardson from Cumbria, Wigton. Digit's first time competing here at Crufts. And above all, wants to enjoy the experience. We shall see Digit and Stephen. Very experienced uh, handler this. He's better known for running his medium dog, but this dog's coming along really nicely. Gives it 100%. Look, just pushes the dog. You watch him. He can do everything else, but he can't touch the dog. He uses his body. 80% of this uh, communicating with the dog is all done with the body. 20% is the mouth, what comes out. Look at this. Now we come to the really quick part of the encouraging the dog. He's going to push it into the end of the tunnel over the dog walk come on now we're looking for a great big finish here can he's got a right contact yes he has oh 37 397 puts him into second place i think super great round run. though what high quality competition we are seeing here already early on in the competition remember these didn't do too well this morning but they are absolutely starring the majority of them in the main arena sean Ellingworth goes next with image Border Collie, four years of age. Sean from Crawley in Sussex. Images second time at Crufts. Came third in the singles final last year. Problem going through the weaves. That's five faults over the Kennel Club jump. Good. Good contact. Tight turn. This is a difficult, difficult course. One or two real tight turns there. Oh, and an elimination, sadly. Just a little bit, a little bit overexcited there, and picked up elimination, but again, Sean and Image will complete, and we'll go through, but we won't be seeing them again this afternoon. Well, we were talking just now about tight turns and how important they are. As she approaches jump two, she actually communicated with the dog, and it actually shortened its stride and just put in that extra extra stride to, to shorten up and get a tighter turn they crucial rehab handled by greg derrett 27 years consecutive year in fact running agility at crafts rehab's third year won the british open in 2015 and a member of the 2015 fci gold medal team greg derrett and rehab from cheltenham composure at the start for Greg and for rehab and into action now over the time to beat 36.8 and no faults hoping for qualification above all nicely through the weeds bit of a stumble at the end of it cannot be jump no problem at all is good making sure they make contact with that white marker at the bottom and again that tight turn well done Greg well done rehab 24 gone the wall is good. Back 
up over the wall too and over the long jump this will be close but probably not good enough to take the lead but this will be close and right at the end hops over 39.9 uh, for greg is excellent and that puts him in fifth place at the moment great run there from greg what we also need to remember is greg is a master tactician the the prize for this competition comes tonight they're looking to try and amass two clear rounds to get them into the top four or sorry the top eight to go through to this evening's final natalie mitchell and teak seven-year-old working sheepdog natalie from the cardiff area and off we go a little bit of hesitation there could have done without but it's okay and in the wrong way into the way so have to go through the right way have to approach them from the right hand side quick once they got the entry right and again through the tunnel a frame contact area safely negotiated flying in and out of that tunnel and that turned really tight those turns there fatigue the working sheep dog it's a good round despite those five points time is very respectable coming towards the end now over that long jump through the tunnel and then it'll be the dog walk and then the final jump of all this and a little pause at the end that's costly that could be costly 41.3 for natalie and for teak such a such a shame on a mistake on the weaves you see she actually tries to help the dog and pushes up past the weaves which again she should have just got out the way and let the dog see the weaves but great star look at that class act this dave munnings boss seven-year-old border collie from newbury in this year's great britain squad and a very experienced combination i know you think very highly of graham Yes, I do. Um, uh, and we're going to see David um, for many, many years to come with a succession of dogs. Uh, he had one of our dogs, a very famous dog called Dobby, um, did remarkably well at World Championships. And again, you'll see Master Tactician, he's not got his foot flat on the floor here. He's, what he's looking for is a respectable time with a clear round to try and combine it with his first round results. And eight large dogs to go through, and this is very good. This is fine. 37.7 then. Uh, for Dave and that puts him into fourth place at the moment which would be good enough if it stays that way and I think you'll find that he's got uh, another couple of miles an hour in the tank for later on this evening Matthew Goodliffe and Quincy honest dog Matthew uh, fiance to Natasha Wise uh, part of the gold medal winning team in 2015 gold medal winning Great Britain team again experienced successful campaigners but they really want to do it here at crafts above all i get the impression you said it a very honest dog very honest partnership nothing flashy about them just very workmanlike uh, and you can see why very tight turns no time wasted at all they're into that tunnel and then he'll run away from the dog get him to follow him and poised for a big finale as well. It's good and it's quick and it is clean. Dog walk and that last one I'm sure will be no problem. It isn't. 37.931. That's a fine effort then uh, from Matthew and sixth place at the moment. You say, look at, just wraps around that wing and that's what you want if you're going to win it. Next to go, Laura Chudley. Laura uh, had a baby in February from Colville in Gloucestershire uh, with Troy, six-year-old Border Collie, very experienced, another top-notch partnership, this one. Barking all the way around is Troy. He's done remarkably well to get back in the saddle again. As I say, 7th of February, baby Henry was born, another YKC member in the making. <laughs> uh, but uh, Laura won't let that stop her, and she hasn't. She's qualified here. Uh, and uh, she's going to make the most of it. That is excellent from Laura, and excellent from Troy as well. And at the moment, this is a, this is a good round. This is, oh, well, dear, of all the things to do, to go outside uh, that wall. I don't think we've seen that one before over the long jump. That was just a total loss in concentration on what was a pretty straightforward part. And 41.7 seconds. Strange place to lose it there, Graham. Well, it's probably not a manoeuvre that, that Laura would have tried um, if she hadn't have just had a baby a few weeks ago. She was trying to shortcut a little bit. Um, 
thought it was going to be fairly straightforward, and unfortunately for her it wasn't. But a really great effort, wonderful to see her here. Anthony Clark, penultimate dog in the large class with protest. Four-year-old border collie, they, they work out of Letchlade in Gloucestershire. Young dog protest, Anthony. Good to see him back in action again, at Anthony. Saw him in the British Open yesterday, bit of a lull in his career, but now back and in great form as well. Away we go. Anthony and protest. An ultimate dog means they've had a very good morning. I'm looking to replicate that form this afternoon. Remember, this is qualification dogs, eight of the large dogs to go through to the final later tonight. Clear, clean, and reasonable pace on it as well. Kind of just dropped a little bit of time around the tunnel area. And the swing back down over that long jump. Got to pick a bit of speed up towards the end here because uh, they are close. They are close. Bit of a slide on the end there. 40.0 for Anthony. And that's down into eighth place, and that might just not be good enough, Graham. Just would have cost him just a little bit of time. He had a wrong turn coming out of the tunnel. Last large dog. Top of the morning then for Dave Munnings and Fame, five-year-old Border Collie. Incredible dog, according to Dave, from the Newbury area. And we would expect to see these guys again later on today after a tremendous morning and looking in perfect sync as well. And there's just a five faults there. Let me just remind you, it's the top eight large dogs to go through. We'll sort those out at, at, at the end. Have dropped uh, the five faults and the brick has gone as well. Not really what they wanted. The time is not bad, 38.7 uh, for, for Dave Munnings. But those faults as well, and uh, at the moment, up in the top eight. Yeah, we were talking about the carpet earlier on, and we just saw it. it's a really oblique entry, and it allows the judges having a good surface for the dogs to get a grip on for the dog to actually turn into the weaving poles. And I think in previous years, we would have seen an issue at that yeah. particular point. So, 10 faults there for David Munnings. Um, just have to see how he got on this morning, the combined results. Any double clears will beat him. So here we are then, Quick, quickest today. And then we're looking, I believe, for the top eight here, are we not? In terms, in terms of uh, going through, barring any, any unforeseen circumstances. From the combined results we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking for the combined results, of course. And that is the result of the first section. And of course, coming up here next is the small section. In these first of 11 small dogs we are uh, about to see. And of course, the first dog that we see, the dog that came last in the jumping this morning. And we await the arrival of, of the six year old working cocker, Jesse. That is the overall ranking then. That is uh, the, the top eight that we're going to be seeing later on today. It is the top eight, I believe, that we will be seeing from that overall ranking. Looking at uh, Zoe Council and Jesse, six-year-old working cocker, picking up five faults early in the round. Just obviously struggling with the atmosphere and everything else that's gone on in the arena before. Uh, working cockers are becoming really um, very prevalent now in agility, but they are prone to sniffing around if you can let them. Jesse's second time here, she also competed at Olympia. A determined little dog, letting her know that she is uh, here in the main arena at Crufts, letting us all know that up and down over the dog walk. First one in the first of 11 small dogs then. Yep, unfortunately, as you say, just distracted now. Whether somebody's dropped something there during the training rounds earlier on, don't know. But certainly during the second half of the round, she picked up really, really well. 
You are looking at Fling, four-year-old German Spitz. Little Princess Lucy Osborne describes her as in last year's World and European Championships and in this year's squad as well. Plenty of energy from Lucy early on in this particular round. She may not have done uh, quite so well in this morning's round from where she's running today, but this dog is more than capable of winning. Have to be a clear round and have to be quick, and it's looking that way as things stand. Seesaw is good, wall is good. Through the tunnel too, and Lucy showing the way in great style here. Just a little hesitation. Again, I've not seen that really before going into the tunnel. We'll have another look at that, I'm sure, and she will be infuriated about that. We'll look with Lucy and we'll flee. She will. Uh, just trying a little bit hard to get away very quickly. She was aware probably that uh, the winner of each of the rounds in the particular heights automatically goes through to tonight's final. And I think she was just pushing too much. Mabel with Louise Clayton from Sutton in Ashfield. Five-year-old Jack Russell across Staffordshire, Bull Terrier. First time at Crufts. Mabel, just a little bit of a show off, an amazing dog to train. And Louise, a class teacher, hoping all the children back at school will be watching. Hopefully you all will be via YouTube. And it's OK at the moment for Mabel and for Louise. Five faults. Miss the contact. Daintily over the seesaw. Where do I go next? Yep, wall. Long jump. Tunnel again. Safely in this one. And then a nice skipping finish we're looking for. Over the dog walk. And over the final hurdle. 46.1. Good effort from Louise. And as things stand, that's the best we've seen so far. Yep, and it's important to put a clear round on the board earlier on. That just adds that little bit of pressure to people to come behind them. So, uh, again, building up to be an absolutely fantastic competition. Mark Bruce goes next with Cindy, eight-year-old Jack Russell Cross from Broxburn in West Lothian. Third year in a row at Crufts, first in the singles. Cindy's won a couple of championship tickets, competed in the UK, Ireland, Spain and Belgium. Knows her way around. Mark. He's going to be 65 years of age, Mark, in a couple of months. And a very agile 65-year-old. I'm sure he's going to be. Oh, oh dear, but to Sydney with a mind of her own. And the crossed hands from Alan Bray, equal elimination. But the round, Graham, as always, will be completed. They don't have to complete the course, Jim, uh, but most people want to because they want to always try and finish on a positive note. Just on, on, on his age, 65, I mean, people say, well, what age can you start? What age can you finish? There is no upper or lower age limit to compete with agility. As long as you're fit and able, we've got kids of four and five running around right up to 80 or 90. Rosie Cavill with Spice, fantastically durable dog. Uh, this one, 11 years of age, the Cocker Spaniel from Newport in South Wales. Rosie keeps thinking that it's time for Spice to give the game up, but uh, Spice just keeps on going. Qualified for every year for Cross since she was two years old, and on we go. Rosie and, and Spice, and there's a refusal going into the tunnel, and that will be five faults. Going into the weeds, the right way round. Well done, Spice, and well done, Rosie. And 11 years of age, Spice. Up and down. Over that A-frame, five more faults, missing the contact point at the bottom. Nice jumper, though. So tight and twisty in there. Really is awkward. Good over the seesaw. Getting into the rhythm of things now is Spice. Ten faults, though. Could be very, very costly. Long jump's OK. So is the tunnel. And now the dog walk and the final obstacle. Dog walk and final obstacle. And 44.8 and those 10 faults for the durable Spice and Rosie. Yeah, well done to Rosie and Spice. A very, very experienced uh, combination there. Uh, and I wish them another year or so of competition at least. Great dog, great handler. Clive Foden and Poppy, six-and-a-half-year-old uh, Shetland Sheepdog from near Whitchurch in Shropshire. 
21 years since Clive first competed at Crofts and Poppy here for the third time became an agility champion last year also competed in Italy for Team GB so another very talented partnership that we have here on the green carpet in the main arena at Crofts. Another great advert for the over 30s is Clive. He's been competing at the top level for years and years, and that takes some doing, let me tell you. Uh, this dog may not be the quickest over the ground, but as I keep saying to you, it's about tight turns and straight lines, and you'll probably be surprised uh, at the time of this dog, providing he can just make sure he completes the weaving holes correctly. Yep, covering the ground very smart. The time is OK, 36 seconds. It's all right. Up and down over the dog walk. Quick finish, quick finish, just a slight bit of hesitation, but it is clear for Clive and for Poppy. 44.3, and that's good enough to go into first place with that first clear round. There we go. They've been absolutely fantastic. Next to go then, Stacey Irwin, Burns and Sam, six-year-old Jack Russell, Cross Cavalier from Peace Haven in Sussex. That's a lovely image. That's a lovely image of uh, Sam going through the weaves there for me. <laughs> it's just trying to say to Stacey, get on with it, woman. <laughs> <laughs> really good, really good just shows how much these dogs love it and they literally do love it they get really depressed if they don't do agility every week I tell you. now keep your eye on this because this is looking good for stacy and for sam heading perhaps here for first place this is looking really good it is clear and it is first by some considerable distance but somewhere Honestly. along the line five faults were picked up i have to say um it was obviously on the dog walk at the end would you believe it it was very close but clear miss Alan in the perfect position to be able to judge that Bernadette Bay absolute class never discount her with Zaz a great dog six year competing at Crufts been there done it and won it this partnership Obviously, reasonable successful this morning, but looking to make up ground here and looking to make that class tail ground. Probably one of the most successful small dog handlers we've ever seen in this country, uh, probably in fact in the world. Always produces fantastic dogs time after time after time again. And she's a great handler as well. And this is going to be well in the mix, Jim. This is well in the mix, as anticipated by both of us up here. That's fantastic, 40.11. And Bernadette Bay, the class of the field, and Zaz move top of the pile. By some four seconds, I think it is. That just shows you. Charlotte Harding and Teasel, six-year-old working cocker spaniel, won Olympia last year, won the British Open yesterday with this particular combination. They already have a win under their belts here at Crofts 2017. And we said when we went through the field beforehand, Graham, you, you nudged me and said, watch this combination very closely. Yes, the one uh, the Olympia stakes this year, this dog is absolutely fantastic. Actually won this competition last year, been handled by its owner, Claire Burrell. But you can see why Charlotte is a class act in her own right. They'll waste no time here as they come down. Is it going to be quick enough? Oh, my word, 37.401 absolutely destroys it. Getting quicker and quicker and better and better. You cannot take your eyes off this one. Charlotte goes top with Teasel. So I think that should see her through to the final this evening. Penultimate small dog, Lauren Langman. Very, very quick. Blink, three-year-old Cocker Spaniel. Super competitive little dog that covers the ground. Sit up for such a small dog. Really, oh dear, oh dear. And that's an elimination. That really is sadly slightly unexpected from where I'm sitting, Graham. Well, I'm 
I'm drawing breath and I'm struggling just a little bit to know what she... Uh, what, the only thing I can think of is that she actually forgot where she was going. Um, because it, she almost looked as though she deliberately called the dog back over that half. It's very difficult to know what's going through your mind out there, but it's such a shame this dog's got so much potential. As you can see, it's just flies around. I'm lucky, Lauren. Small margins in this competition, all the competitions here, here at Crofts. And, and an elimination, sadly, for Blink. Last to go, Ashley Butler, Britain's Got Talent winner, the Pudsey, back in 2012. We're going to say goodbye to Ashley on Sunday. Bit of a television interview lined up for her tonight. Watch out for that. Her young dog, Sullivan, four-year-old crossbreed. Ashley won the, the medium section with Pudsey last year. A little reminder, four definitely to go through. Super proud of this little dog and the way it's come on in the last 12 months, Ashley is. Um, it, there's just no time wasted at all. You can see why she won this morning. She just needs now to put in a clear round, so she just needs to hold it together, wait for the dog, make sure it goes in the right end of the tunnel, Jim. Building up to the finale now. Keep an eye on the clock, keep an eye on the clock. And through we go. Just that little hesitation for me at the end of the old dog walk there. But it's still a very, very good round, and that, I'm sure, means that we'll be seeing Ashley again later on. Just that hesitation. Guarantee there. you will not see that hesitation tonight. That was a hesitation. It was a deliberate hesitation um, just to make sure that the judge saw that she had got it. Um, and tonight, you'll see that dog run straight off the end, I'm sure. And this result of just this particular singles uh, heat, remember, they are collated. Uh, the results for later on and just confirmation of what we have just seen. Another high quality, exciting competition and one or two surprise mistakes out there as well. What a competition we're having, Jim. Are you enjoying it? As always, as always, where would you rather be? Just, just a slight alteration then uh, to the course. Medium dogs now. And a reminder, running in reverse order. First of ten medium dogs in the first... We can look at his Aberdeen Abigail Doxford from Wigfield, with Wigfield, with a six-year-old working cocker spaniel from Bristol. Rehome spaniel is Wigfield. A bit of a handful to train. What will he be like? What will she be like, I should say, here on the green carpet? In Crofts. And away we go. Obviously, last in the jumping this morning. That's why it's going first. In this section, the craft singles for medium dogs. And a little bit of a confusion there. Uh, absolutely uh, no faults, but a lot of time lost in that particular manoeuvre. Good tight twisting turn. Good effort from uh, Wigfield so far. Doing what she's supposed to do, apart from that little hesitation over the wall, long jump is not a problem and I think she's headed for the exit there if I'm honest with you has to a bit of an about turn, precious time lost and five faults picked up as well by Abigail and by Wickfield so unfortunately good round, just a couple of faults creeping in there, I think she thought that uh, there was a bacon sandwich or something out through those doors. <laughs> Can't sniff that from up here. Anyway, Linda Cummings, she has two back-to-back -back dogs that uh, she is running here. The first is Cooper, working sheepdog, age seven, from County Durham. First show since October last year, coming back from a tendon injury. So, might have a bit of a breather between uh, Linda's uh, two dogs running back to back dogs and Cooper coming back the seven-year-old from from an injury good to see Cooper back points and the time is respectable just a strange sort of entry to that wasn't quite sure which way to take it possibly lost a few seconds there Seesaw's okay though no flying over that ball. what a jump that is and neatly and quick and this is really good this is good from Linda and from Cooper the working sheep up and down over the dog walk, no faults there. Yeah, that's fine. 39.7, first to go, and a clear round two. 
Very nice round there. Again, just having an eye to the clock and to what's coming later on. They're going to take four of these dogs uh, through to the final tonight, plus the winner of each round if it's not in that top four. Having an absolutely fantastic time. Are they going to get this dog walk? Oh, yes, just made sure. So we don't get this happen very often, but uh, Linda has actually got dogs drawn consecutively because what we're doing now, we're yeah. running the dogs in reverse order of how they placed, and unfortunately, she got two placed back to back, if you like. So they're very kind here, and they usually give them at least 30 seconds to change of, dogs. There you go. A bit look. of a sip of water yep. uh, for, for, for Linda. Is there any specific... No, she's back up and ready to go. I'm not sure she's ready to go looking at her. I but think so. <laughs> I think she looked OK to me, not breathing heavily or anything, using a bit of my sporting knowledge there. Looked OK. Looks And Phoenix. Again, a working sheepdog. Phoenix, an agility champion. And Linda, ready. Absolutely ready. What are you talking about? She's ready, she's fine. Not a problem. She's going to do this. <laughs> draw, big, big draw breath, and we're off. <laughs> and we're off with Linda and with Phoenix. Through that tunnel, just a little bit wide coming out of the tunnel. Good through the weaves, approaching it from the right hand side and nipping through there very smartly. And just a little hesitation, a little scramble on the brand new green carpet here at the main arena at Cross. Possibly a few seconds drop there. Okay, through the tunnel. That, oh dear. Oh dear. That is a that's an elimination. We'll have a look at, at the end of the round back at that. And that's a great shame for Linda and for Phoenix. But again, the round will be completed. And again, it missed the missed the wards, but it doesn't really matter. This is a complete round. We've got a huge round of applause. Back to back, then efforts from Linda, who still remains top of the pile uh, with her previous dog, Cooper. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's just uh, the luck of the draw. Probably if she'd have had a bit longer break, she may not have made that mistake, but we'll never know. Stephanie Spezia, Detroit and London is there. Joint home time for Luna, four-year-old uh, Chihuahua Cross, rescued from near Detroit, now been living in the UK for three years. First time at Cross, qualified for both singles and teams. 2016 was her first full summer, competing in championship classes. Very, very talented dog, Graham. If I'm totally honest, that's the first time I've seen this dog run, so I'm really interested to see. I've heard about it, so I'm really looking to see how this partnership performed. Uh, and if they've finished uh, the qualified here for Cross, they must be going well at the moment. Which way round this next jump will she go? Calls it on the inside, which most of the people seem to be doing at the moment. They're favouring that. The seesaw must touch the ground to show control. Now the fast bit of the course. Now she's got to make the dog sure the dog picks up the wall. It does that nicely. Over the long jump. Oh, not quite over the long jump. Five to go, and now a bit of confusion reigns. Shame about that long jump, Graham, because... Um Luna and Stephanie were going very, very well until then. Took off really early there, such a shame. This is Zoom bowing out. 11-year-old Kelpie, Crufts 2017, cheeky rescue dog, barks her way round. The finale uh, for Zoom, a very, very successful career, too. It's been a great partnership over the years. This dog owes, uh, owes Nicola nothing. Um, done fantastically well and continues to do well, even at 11 years of age. So if you want to know, does my agility keep your dog fit? Then this is uh, proof of the pudding, as they say. Just that little bit slower. She'll be looking to put in a really good, the best round she can, nice and steady, put the pressure on the rest of the people. There's an outside chance she should still get in the mix here. She could well get it in the mix. The time will not be the quickest that we have seen, but it is a clear, a clear round. Over the dog walk then. Near, end is nearly in sight. Yep, good contact. 47.1 for Nicola and for the 11-year-old Kelpie. The zoom, and as things stand, a second place. We're looking at Rumble and Joe Gleed, four-year-old crossbreed. And Joe, you believe Graham a, a real improving talent this year? If, if I had a vote, she would probably get my vote for the most improved handler and competitor and trainer uh, in the last 12, 18 months. She really is now top 
class and doing really, really well with all the dogs. Not just the one dog, she's got, she's got a collie as well. Uh, and it is just a pleasure to see her doing so well. All good and clean so far for Joe and for Rumble. The dog apparently the chilled out part of, of this particular partnership. Spring across, Cocker Spaniel. Clapping her hands to try and just get a little bit of extra speed out of Hannah Rumble coming towards the end. And this is going to be good. This will be good. Very close. 40.6 for Joe and for Rumble. Second place. And right in the mix, Graham. Yes, as you'd expect. She's going to be there or thereabouts. We'll just have to wait and see how they uh, stack up when they combine the results. Becky Sargent all set to go. You're looking at Dolly, seven-year-old border collie and agility champion from the Warrington area, part of the impressive team dolls. Just a privilege, Becky saying, to be on the green carpet with Dolly. Yeah, Dolly is her life, um, and this is just uh, a great partnership. She's really, really nervous, I know, Becky, but <laughs> she's just got to hold it together. Beautiful-looking dog is Dolly. Seven, a good age as well. Just a slight hesitation, but the round is still clear. Good contact point on, on that uh, seesaw. Quickly out of the tunnel. This is the quickest part of the course over that long jump. Where am I going now? Getting a few seconds drop. It's the dog walk now, and it could just be outside it. 41.3 then for Dolly and uh, for Becky into third place. And that's where these wide turns cost you, because you'd have looked at that and thought, that's much quicker than the uh, than the Spaniel that you've just seen, but there you go. Stephen Richardson, we saw him in the British Open uh, yesterday from Cumbria with Libby. Ten and a half years old is Libby, crossbreed. Just an amazing dog to own. And Stephen saying, owes me absolutely nothing. And very energetic start to this round. From trainer and from dog full of energy good sink as well and good speed just where am i going now? just a slight flicker there but it's still good tight turn that's a difficult part of, of the course all is fine time is looking impressive need a bit of speed here on the final part uh, of the course it's looking very impressive keep an eye on the clock if you would Keep an eye on it, it's going to be very, very close. Just outside, 40.7 then for Stephen and for Libby, and that's good enough for third, Graham. It is, and I think probably the uh, the dog walk might have been just a little bit close, but again, what you have to do, I think, is watch the rear paws of the dog, and there he does, the back paw just gets half an inch on it. Penultimate dog then, Sean Illingworth, and maybe and into the round already from Crawley. A winning partnership this one already and hoping to stretch their list of successes here yeah, they've had a good morning that is why they're the penultimate dog and looking quick and classy just keep an eye on the clock always just, just righted things there looks as though problems could be looming calling maybe around is Sean and it's good this is a really fast time as well look at that over the dog oh brilliant 35.6 for Sean and for Maybe. That has taken a massive bite out of the best time. That's Sean and Maybe at their best, and it sets up a, a familiar showdown in just a minute because we've got Natasha Wise to come. They've been in this position, but bearing in mind that it's all about qualifying for tonight's final. This is qualifying. It's still a thrilling competition in its own right. Old rival Sean and Natasha. Tasha Wise and Dizzy, 11-year-old border collie, three-time a world champion, six times an Olympia champion. And uh, a call pretty much thrown down by Sean there. What will Natasha and Dizzy respond with? Well, what she needs to do, Jim, I'm really sorry, is that she's got to resist the temptation to go out and beat Sharma. What she needs to do is put in a class clear round and make sure she gets in that final. And then if she can get in the final, we are going to see some competition tonight. We've seen a great competition already here. Just be calm, just make that final. A little bit of tactics involved here, but I, I get the impression they want to be the quickest. Coming towards the end of it now, watch the clock, watch the clock. Keep watching it, keep watching it. 
35.8 against 35.6 second place then uh, for Natasha. <laughs> but literally the blink of a dog's eye, the difference. But what does Natasha do when she comes out? First thing is it gives it its reward and plays with it. I, I tell you what, I'm... Uh, You're tingling, mate. You're tingling. I, I can feel it. I am. Really looking forward to tonight's final. Just If you're watching here, uh, please, please, please make sure you tune in tonight and watch tonight's final. It promises to be something really special. All of you on YouTube ain't going anywhere. I know that massive audience and we're in for massive entertainment tonight. This just the qualifying to remind you uh, for the final and, and the result then uh, of the medium section. And just have a look at that. 35.6 for Sean. 35.8 for Natasha, but both safely through for another enthralling contest later on. Presentation from the thrilling qualifying competition that we have just seen. We're looking at the small dog Charlotte Harding taking first place in the, the small dogs. And Ashley with uh, second place. Last craft serve for Ashley. And terrific. And Sean of the medium dogs. And, uh, well, those two will be going eyeball to eyeball in a couple of hours' time. We could be sure about that. Large. Well done, Dan. Well done, Dan, sure. Section here, and uh, well, it's terrific entertainment and terrific quality that uh, we have seen as, as well. Little lap of honour, and uh, big things ahead of them all later on today. But uh, a very sizable crowd in the main arena at Ashcroft's enjoying some fantastic skills and fantastic agility, and knowing. That there's even more to come, and possibly even better to come as well. Just a confirmation then of uh, the qualifying for tonight's final overall rankings and in the, the small dogs. Qualifying for tonight's final. And here are the medium dogs that we will see uh, later on once again. Well done to them all for, for making it through. And we cannot wait for hostilities to be resumed between the top two. All to come back and all to perform again in a couple of hours here at Crufts 2017. And finally, the large dogs, who we will see once again in a couple of hours' time, starting at uh, around about 5 o'clock UK time. I know we've got viewers from all over the world. 5 o'clock UK time is just under a couple of hours. And these are the dogs 
the top eight of the large dogs that we will see once again this evening. Thank you. 
I am a Joel Sir and this is my assistant dog Caddy. I am uh, inflicted with uh, autism ADHD and it's kind of com complicated and hard uh, to be yourself when, when uh, you, you have uh, two disabilities uh, that basically affects uh, every single uh, part of you. He finds the world hard. He finds everything hard. It was hard because everything was focused on Joel. You know, where was he? You know, how is he doing? How is he coping? He couldn't go for walks because he would. You had to hold on to him. We needed help being a normal family, a normal family. Caddy was almost like a light, a light at the end of the tunnel. It was like you know, yeah, people can see now you know, that we need help and Joel needs help. He goes uh, almost everywhere with me. Wherever I go, he follows. From the minute Joel wakes up, Caddy's there, to the minute he goes to bed, except for when he's at school, we, have, we drop him off. Wherever Joel goes, Caddy goes, and they're attached. And Joel's karma, Joel's karma walking around. A lot of times, Joel was left out. Joel, Joel was excluded from things and still is, in a lot of ways, excluded from things. And that's why having Caddy there as a constant companion for him is, you know, is brilliant for him. The difference for Joel is their smiles, whereas before it was just pacing. Caddy's helped him communicate loads, loads, especially as, you know, is, is bringing his words out and everything and talking to people and actually interacting with other people. Caddy's done that via, if we're out with Caddy, and somebody actually comes and talks. The difference now in four years is unbelievable. Paddy senses Joel's not coping before any of us, and he's the one that grabs the toy and he will run upstairs or run wherever if they're not in the same room, and actually that alerts us that Joel's not coping, and then we can get to Joel. But Caddy's always there for us, always there for us. With Caddy by his side, Joel's whole. Joel can connect with the world better. Cad Caddy is, uh, well, my guardian angel. If, I, if I, he wasn't here, I wouldn't be here either. My husband decided we were going to go to Battersea Brands Hatch and I'm thinking, oh my God, we're getting a dog. What's it going to be? This big white barrel came flying at me and I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm in love. What is this? This is mine. I'm taking him home. He was sent to me, absolutely sent to me. My name is Sai. I'm 27 and this is Bowser, my English Bull Terrier, who is three. <laughs> The speculation is that I've had multiple sclerosis for over 10 years. It wasn't until November 2015 that I got the official diagnosis. Multiple sclerosis is a disease of the nervous system. Every day I have to take about six pills in the morning, six pills at night. Every month, every 28 days, I go for a chemotherapy infusion. Because of the way the lesions are in my brain, it reduces my sense of feeling in my hands, which Bowser helps with, because I can feel myself touching him, even though the temptation isn't as good as it used to be. It also affects my legs, motor functions, my short-term memories affected. So having the memories and building the memories with Bowser, it gives me something to link to, so I'm always remembering something happening. We'd not long had Bowser and we'd been for a big beach walk. I came back and I wasn't feeling very good and I'd passed out on the sofa. But his dad was outside in the garden doing some gardening and he said, he was just insistent, you've got to come inside, you've got to come inside. There's something wrong. Barking at him, chewing on the stuff that he was trying to use. And when he came in and found me, it was there was a medical emergency. And when I'd got sorted and I was sleeping so much, 
Bowser was just laid with me, laid on me, laid on the areas that hurt. He seems to know where the pain is and pressing his weight against me and pressing himself against me. He was just there. He wasn't interested in sitting with anybody else. He just wanted to sit with me. He gives me, he gives me joy. It's more important than what he does for me physically and you know, nudging at me because certain things don't smell right or don't seem right to him. He's walking along this journey with me and just gives me a desire to put one foot in front of the other again. Hi there, Jim Rosenthal and uh, Graham Partridge back with you again from Crofts 2017. We're on the verge of seeing the uh, large novice, a medium and, uh, and large ABC final. And uh, medium dogs will go first. It's an open class and large dogs are must be novices that is between grades three and five just explain the grading system for us could you yep very briefly we have uh, grades one to seven one being the lowest grade seven being the highest grade this is for the mid grades the three uh, three four and five and the mediums are for the one to seven so it's an open class as you say alan bray the judge is in place and we're all set to go first of 10 dogs in the medium section and uh, first to go angie edwards uh, from norwich with nine-year-old flossie fifth time at crofts a very vocal dog as well flossie up and down over the seesaw Could just be an elimination signal here. We'll clear that up for you, but we'll follow uh, Flossie round anyway. And Angie, yes, we have it confirmed it's an elimination. We'll tidy up that for you at the end of the round. And Flossie is through. And then, unfortunately, this was the wrong end of the tunnel. Should have gone in the left side. Abigail, Doxford and Wigfield. Six-year-old working cocker spaniel from Bristol. Rehomed spaniel, bit of a handful to train as well. Absolutely delighted she's qualified for Crufts. Complete opportunities and lives life to the full every single day. And starting off very smartly and very successfully in the first 10 seconds here. A-frame is good and quick. The working cocker spaniel showing everybody the way to do it at the moment and setting a very high standard. Can. Abigail and Wigfield sustain it. Weaves, lovely, tail wagging, barking as well as promised. Through the tunnel, 27 seconds completed and clean and clear so far. Those are tight little obstacles there, all sorts of tight and twisty turns. Just a couple to go and applause from the judge as well. 36.2 for Abigail and for Wigfield and that's good enough for first place at the moment in the medium dogs section. Julie Dunlop and Bert, working Cocker Spaniel from the Banbury area. Just talk us through this round with this one, Graham. OK, I'm a little bit biased here because this is the litter brother to my dog, so there's hope for me yet. I might see me competing next year. Tire onto the dog walk, and then it's a straight entry into the tunnel. You've just got to keep the dog in a straight line. Really quick piece of it now. It's right across the arena and then up and over the A-frame. Into the tunnel. This is all fairly straightforward stuff now. Seesaw must touch the ground, sharp left back into the tunnel 
and into the weaves, just a little bit distracted there. This course has got a little bit of a sting in its tail now. You go 14 across into the tunnel, and then you do the Yukonuba, and then you've got to push out. Quite a difficult maneuver, then she blind crosses, picks up, and it's as easy as that. Well done, Bert. Well done, Julie, well done, Bert, just picking up Bert, those five faults. On the dog wall. Samantha Lane handling Dime, nine-year-old Cocker Spaniel from Milton Keynes. First ever agility dog for Samantha. If he's barking, he's happy, we're told. A noisy, noisy round can be anticipated here. Off we go. Dime and Samantha. That's fine. Yep. Noisy as predicted. Taking a good line over those obstacles as well through the tight twisting section here now. Seesaw's great, no problem. Back over that wall, back through the tunnel, weaves in the right way, scampering through them as well. This is good and it's clean so far, coming up to the 30 second mark. Absolutely fine. Bit of a tight turn coming towards the end of things here now. And this will be good and this will be clear and this will be clean. 36.3 for Samantha and for Dime. Helen Anderson and Demon, 11-year-old at Kelpie Cross, consistent and successful over the years. We saw Helen yesterday in the British Open, and a previous winner as well. Good, com good combination, this. And impressive in the opening 10 seconds. Tail wagging. Demon, Kelpie Cross, really quick over the carpet of these Kelpies. Great distinctive style through the weaves. 25 seconds gone, absolutely clear apart from those five faults out. And there's a hesitation and there's more faults there. Bit of a refusal picking up. Not quite as good as anticipated early on. 10 faults. And 37 seconds. Helen down in fifth place. Looking at Sarah Woodley and Bodie, three-year-old mini American Shepherd from Blackwater, Camberley. Loves his agility, loves a game of football as well, does Bodie. Let's see if he kicks things in the right direction. No, just missed, just missing that contact point. That'll be five faults. Good speed though. Shame about has to hit the white part on the bottom of the dog walk. Yep, speed isn't everything though. No. Accuracy is what you want as well. You've got to have both to be a really great dog. Fortunately, as you say, just running on five faults now. Oh, and again, she's pulled her out the weaves, trying to get across to that fast section, going into the tunnel, and then the dog's offered to the weave poles, and again, just made a mistake. This is where they have to just think about what they're doing. They've got to push the dog out around the kennel club jump, pick it up, and unfortunately, the dog came inside, so that's going to be an elimination there. For Sarah. Such yeah, a that's out for Sarah and for Bodie. Around that uh, rather fell apart, they have to touch that white contact area, otherwise, you get faults. This is Alfie, English Springer Spaniel, Lara Staplehurst. Alfie, a many tears rescue dog, loves his agility and a very, very happy boy from the Epsom area. At the moment, time to beat at the top there, 36.2 set by Abigail. Away goes Lara and Alfie, six-year-old Alfie. Quickly over those two jumps and looking as looking, enjoying speeding in and out of the tunnel as well, all clean and clear thus far. Again, tail wagging, tunnel rolling out a bit as well. That's good over, over the jump, reddishing the jumps. Here's Alfie. Weaves, fine. Oh, no, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, that's an elimination. 
I don't know where Graham are wrong to her. Well, yeah, she just took her eyes off him to see, look at where she was going. It's very You've got to have good spatial awareness here. She took her eyes off the dog to see where she was going, and he said, if you're not going to look at me and tell me where to go, I'm going to go over this one, he said. Such a shame. We're looking at uh, Harvey, four-year-old Spitz. Marita Davis, first time here at Crufts, first agility dog, Harvey as well. Very special rescue boy. All novice dogs here, just to remind you. So all gaining valuable experience and all hoping to do as well as they can and possibly, possibly collect a big Crufts prize at the end of the day. Excellent start, though, uh, for Harvey, who seems to acclimatise exceedingly well to what's in front of him at the moment. 22 seconds and no faults for Harvey. Four-year-old Spitz. Looking at Harvey, can they hold it together towards the end of this round over the Kennel Club? Nice, quick turn again, back over the Kennel Club. This could be good, this could be good. 38.5, it's not the fastest we've seen from Marita and for Spitz, but it is good enough for third place as things stand. In-form combination coming up now, Graham Teal and Haley Telling, three-year-old Shetland Sheepdog. Yes, they uh, won the medium British Open final yesterday in great form, this pair, so let's just see what they can do now. Don't want to put too much pressure on her, but a fantastic running dog walk. Really quick now, Haley having to work really hard to keep this dog on track. Up and over the A-frame, accuracy we're looking for, brilliantly done. Picking the dog up now, she's got to steady the dog down, this is where the control element comes in. Over the wall now, into the weaves, just got the stand still, yes, nicely done. Now leading the dog away through that gap of jumps there. Into the tunnel, out, over, she's got to push out now, over the kind of club jump, watching the dog all the way around. This is going to be an absolutely fantastic time. Wowee, 34.538, absolutely destroyed it, Jim. Yep, Haley, the new leader, clear round and teal. 34.58, absolutely superb. This the last of the medium dogs, then Chantal Carita with Savannah, five-year-old Sheltie, third year in a row competing at Crofts, and knowing 34.5 is the time to beat. They have been best in the jumping this morning, and now looking for something absolutely exceptional here. Watch very closely. And by the way, keep an eye on the clock very closely as well. All good and clear for Chantal and for Savannah. The Horsham area. It's been OK, just just need a little bit of more speed. 34 seconds is an awesomely quick time. Swinging round through the tunnel. Got to really finish very, very quickly. Clock is ticking, the clock is ticking. It is really ticking, it's clear. And just a couple of seconds outside it, though. A very, very respectable round from Savannah and from Chantal. And that is the end of the medium section, Graham. It is great competition, and it's lovely to see the uh, ABCs, the Anything But Collie's been showcased here. Um, if you're thinking about doing agility, you think, I'd love to have a go with that, but I don't have a border collie. Rubbish. You don't. You can have just about any sort of dog you want from a St Bernard, and people say, oh, you can't do a St, with that St Bernard. You only have to do the low jumps. Just confirmation of the results of the competition then that we have just seen. So we're just setting the jumps up now. We're bringing them up now to what we call full height, 65 centimetres. And this is going to be for the novice ABC. The previous competition we were watching just now was for medium dogs, and it was an open class, the grades one to seven. Now this is for grades three to five. Exactly the same course, okay. Uh, there may be a different course time on this. Uh, and it's two separate competitions. So they will have a set of results for the medium, and now we will have a separate competition for the larges. First of ten large dogs then. Uh, Natter working bearded collie, four years of age with Karen Young. 
Matta very nervous of dogs and people before getting into agility and a huge thumbs up for this combination that they have. Natta working here and performing at Crufts. The lights are bright and the stage is big and there's a bit of pressure on dog handler as well. It's a steady 20 second start, no faults. The dog's not under any pressure at all. It's the handler that's under the pressure. <laughs> Dog might just realise they're intelligent, intelligent animals looking around saying, hey, this is a bit different to my normal day. But this is a very, very good start. The first of 10 dogs and a good clear round. 41.03 seconds for Karen Young and for Natter. Whatever happens, the most loving little girl and all mine. From the Leamington Spa area comes Gavin, six-year-old pointer, and Elaine Sherwin, five years competing in agility, third time at Crufts, won the novice ABC title a couple of years ago. And a lovely, big, elegant stride over the dog walk, but sadly missing the contact point at the bottom, missing that white section. Bounding over the wall, up and down over the A-frame. Got the contact point there this time. Good through the tunnel. Oh, again, missing that uh, white contact point. That means that means ten faults. Going into the weaves the right way round, approaching from the right hand side, coming towards the end of things now. Elaine and Gavin hopping over, and that is the end of it. Forty-one point four and uh, ten faults for Elaine and for Gavin. She's going to whisper in his ear, look at that. This is Kira, three-year-old crossbreed with Isaac Hartley. Kira, Isaac's first competitive dog, tends to go a little crazy and went a little crazy early on there and picked up an elimination, that's sad. But again, we will complete things. What about this course, Graham? A little bit easier, bearing in mind the standard of dog we have here? Yes, it is. Um, lovely course set by Alan, but it's, it's nothing more than I would expect from a judge of his uh, experience. A little bit of a sting in the tail at the very end. They, they go over 14 and 15, and as they recall them over the Yukonuba jump, they've got to push them out and then keep them out again for that uh, 270-degree turn, but he does it really nicely. Great effort there from Isaac Hartley uh, from Worcester and from Kira as well. Isaac Hartley drops down into third place at the moment with, of course, eliminated. This is Inca, a five-year-old Hungarian Fisler, Kirsty Campbell from Yeovil. Inca's second agility dog, competes at grade four, determined, just lives for agility, lives and loves it, and will bark her way round for sure. Elegant style going over the dog walk, making good contact too. Where's the next one? Quick scuttling through those jumps. A frame, and sliding down. It's okay, says our judge. Twist and turn and keep in perfect sync with the handle. Barking. Where's the next one? It's the weaves, and the weaves are absolutely no problem at all. This is looking a very quick time, and it's looking clean and clear at the moment as well. 41 seconds to beat, remember, at the bottom. And I think that these two, Kirsty and Inka, are going to be well inside that. Indeed, they are. 38.5. Kirsty and Inka move to the top. Really great. Look at that dog. Only got it back, back paws, but that's all he needs to do. And no faults for barking. Not in this game. The Scots are here in force, uh, supporting Poppy. Six-year-old working line Labrador and Debbie Prince from Ockill Tree, north of the border. First agility dog, bouncy and friendly animal as Labradors tend to be. Debbie Prince doing her best to keep up with a very speedy poppy down that uh, far side. And succeed. Renegotiated, going through the tunnel, it's fine. And they are not the speediest dogs, of course, the labs, but going as quick as I can, says Poppy. 
she'll want to do uh, as well as she possibly can in this competition. As I say, it's not an all about speed, it's about getting out there, having some fun with your dog, and just showing everybody that you don't need a border collie to compete well in agility, and a perfect illustration here. Absolutely perfect. Well done, Poppy, well done, Debbie. Up into third place after that. Clear round for the six-year-old working line lab. And that is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> having fun with your dog. Best celeb so far. You're looking at Lockie, five-year-old Hungarian visitor, Tracy Hunt from the Southampton area. Last year, Lockie won the novice ABC right here. So Lockie knows his way round. Yeah. Just missed that, missed that. that. White section is so crucial. Just about got away with it on the seesaw, just about. It's good style again, through the weaves. Relishing the tunnel. And coming towards the end now, are Tracy and Lockie. Five faults, 40.8 the time, and at the moment that will be good enough for fourth place as things stand. Up and over the A-frame. The reason we get the dogs to touch these white bits at the end is purely for safety, so we discourage dogs from jumping off the top and injuring themselves. OK, here's Neville and Richard Britton from Wiltshire. Armsbury, eight-year-old Springer Spaniel. Well, if I tell you his official club is Neville the Nutcase, we will see what to expect here. Retirement party, this one for him. I'm looking for a very, very good send-off. Neville looking calm and controlled, no crazy behaviour so far. Producing a respectable round and a very, very acceptable time as well. With no faults. Richard and Neville negotiating the weaves successfully. 31 on the clock, it's ticking away. Remember the best time, 38.5. Might not be inside that, but it's going to be pretty good, you know. It's going to be fine, and it's going to be clean as well. 42.2, and no faults for Richard and for Neville. And that's third place. No nutty behaviour there. He's perfectly behaved. I mean, he is a cross dog show, so you've got to, you've got to be on your best behaviour. <laughs> we all have to be on our best behaviour. <laughs> Next up from Hayward's Heath, Tracy Morell and Zebedee. Seven-year-old German shorthaired pointer. And some kind and loving dog has competed at uh, Olympia. Previously missed the dog walk and picked up a few faults on that early on. That's it, that's a shame. Just a bit of hesitation there, whether the head for the weaves or the A-frame got it right in the end, but precious time lost. It's good there over the seesaw. Clearing the wall very, very comfortably. Now it's time for the weaves. That is a fantastic style through there. That's brilliant. Tippy-toed and super elegant then. Uh, for Zebedee and for Tracy Morell. Coming towards the end of the round there, it's a good time. Shame about those five faults. 40.8 for Tracy, that is excellent, and that's up into fifth place at the moment. Such a shame there. Yeah, very long striding dog, just managed to step right over it. And a great exhibition of one-footed weaving. The other option is to bounce through on both feet, but that's a fabulous shot. Penultimate dog. Harry Bobo, five-year-old Jack Russell, and Gemma Swan from Southampton, a Many Tears Rescue Dog. Loves agility and loves telling everybody what a good time he is having, the five-year-old Jack Russell. Just one to go after this one. And those Jack Russells we have seen before, they scamper along, they are very, very quick, and we're, if it's gonna be a clear round, it could be a winning round, you never know. Through this and a beautiful big leap there from Harry Bobo and another huge leap over the wall. That is just excellent. That's smart through the weaves over the kennel club jump too. 
And Gersiet's another tunnel as well. Have a little look, have a look at the best time there. 34, 35, it's going to be close. It's going to be very, very close. 38.4 plays 38.5. Well done, Gemma. Well done, Harry Bobo as well. First place at the moment with one to go. Oh, what a great round that was. So well deserved. Look at that. Just this little dog's just giving everything. What a great leap that was. Straight out. Last one to go. It is Kirsty Dix with Purdy, five year old Labrador. First agility dog. Remember the time and the faults, and then we decide the winner from Thatcham. Had a great morning this morning with these two, won the jumping section, and they will have to do exceedingly well to win here as well. But really, oh, little twist and a turn, and another twist and a turn. Those are precious, precious seconds that could have gone missing there. Certainly got the speed, but that little mistake and hesitation is going to cost them, I think, as they come towards the end, Jim. Counting down towards the end. Just keep your eye on the clock. This is the last dog to go. Kirsty Dixon, Purdy, the last one. Got to get inside, 38 seconds. Got to get inside it. Ooh, 39.6, as we anticipated. That little hesitation cost her very, very dear and means... And again, just a little bit steady on the bottom of the dog walk, but at least they made it. And the dog cuts across her. And again, that just takes all the momentum and forward motion out of the dog and then of course you have to recover that again so but what a great competition a great great advert for kennel club agility and in particular the anything but collies so here we go then just confirmation of what we have just seen results of the last section the large section very very close then 38.4 Gemma, 38.5, Kirsty. Counting you all the way through to those dogs who have all done fantastically well, battled through huge competition just to be. And here we are then with the all-important overall rankings for the medium section. And uh, Haley Telling and Teal won yesterday as well. What a time they are having here and taking you all the way through. But well done to Haley and to Teal. And now moving to the larger overall section. thrilling competition again that we've all enjoyed and uh, Gemma Gemma Swan penultimate dog Harry Bobo taking it just about a second in it from Kirsty Dix and uh, Richard Britton
here we go then with the presentations. And uh, Graham, you know all about those uh, involved in this. The presentation is going to be made by Jill Simpson, who's a KC board member. And now we have a picture of Hayley Telling, the winner of the medium ABC. And second place, Abigail Doxford. Very happy people. Abigail with uh, Wigfield into second place, and moving uh, to the large dogs. Gemma Swan, Harry Bobo. Congratulations uh, to Gemma. And the club name going up there, as always, of course. And Kirsty Campbell with Inca coming into second place. A brilliant uh, Hungarian Vizsla that did so well. move after this to the overall winners everything combined computers whirring and then we will move to the overall winners we do have to have a very very big pile of uh, trophies and rosettes here at Crofts every single year Haley telling the overall winner what a crotch he's having won yesterday. The medium British Open uh, with Teal and winning again today. The in form combination. And Gemma Swan, overall winner as well. With that uh, brilliant Mini Tears rescue dog, Harry Bobo. Don't need to, need to tell you really, just look at the faces, how much it means to win here at Crufts. And we mustn't get blase about the lap of honours either. It means a huge amount to each and every one of them. It does, and why not? This is the biggest and best dog show in the world, uh, and there is no greater stage to strut your stuff and show how good you are at agility than Crufts.
It is fly ball time at Crofts 2017. On this Thursday afternoon, it is frantic, it is hectic, it is occasionally chaotic. It's the quickest thing that we see here at Crofts. Best of three races and the top four are going to go through to tomorrow's semi-finals. There will be a couple of practice runs beforehand. And just to let you know that uh, the dogs go as quickly as possible over the four hurdles. There is a box loader at the end. Sharon Orphan, the judge, is in charge of all the proceedings and have to collect the ball and go back. And it is a relay and it takes considerably less than 20 seconds. No races yet, we're just having a little practice run and on the uh, near side we have wild, the Wild West team, there we go, on the near side while a relatively new team formed a couple of years ago and on the far side the familiar names of Warrington Warriors but this is just a practice run to let you know and you have to keep your eye on everything if anything goes wrong, the teams have to run an extra dog. And people love the vitality, they love the entertainment, and they love the unpredictability of it as well. And myself and Graham will do our very, very best to keep up with things here. But this action is fast and frantic. And uh, you blink an eye you miss things don't you well I was just going to say best advice with when you're watching fly ball is do not blink <laughs> keep those eyes wide open so then the first of four quarterfinals we're getting set for it Warrington Warriors are on the far side Wild West on the near it is the first of Four quarter-finals today, Warrington Warriors on the far side, Wild West are on the near. Top four will go through to the semi-finals tomorrow. Best of three races, got to get over those four hurdles. As sharply as possible, and away we go, and on the far side, Wild West just about have it at the moment. Wild West on the near side, fourth on the near side. That's a fork with Wild West, so they're going to probably have to run an extra dog. It's very, very close at the moment. Wild West on the near, just about in front, but of course they have that fault against their name. And that is completed, and that means Warrington Warriors take the first race because of that fault, Graham. And the fault was called here. You can clearly see that the second dog has gone through the start line before the first one has finished, so they have to run another dog. So Warrington Warriors on the far side wanted a good win this one. The semi-finals loom tomorrow. Wild West on the near have to strike back. Southern death we're into here. And we are a great start on the first far side by Warrington. And a bit of hesitation from Wild West on the near. Warrington have it at the moment. Good clean turn and pick up by that second dog. Third dog is fine as well. It's all with Warrington Warriors on that far side. Last dog going. And a terrific pick up from the near side as well. But I, oh. this could be really, really close. We might even, might even go to a photo. We will not. We will not. We will go to the Warriors on that far side. And we will see the Warriors again in tomorrow's semi-finals. So close. This is just, but as you can see, clearly taken by the Warriors there by about a, a neck, I think you would probably describe that as, Jim. Warrington Warriors, two to the good, and that means they're back tomorrow here at Crufts in the semis. There will be the customary practice for the first round. And you will notice as soon as the race starts for real, there will be a clock. Just flash up for a second or two on your screens. And that indicates how much time they've started early. So if it's, if it's a minus figure, they've started too soon before the countdown's finished. And if it's a plus figure, that's the time that they can actually cut their start down by. And ABC, no collies allowed in fly ball. 
just getting used to to everything around here four pause flyers will start on the near side and Killy ultimates from Kilmarnock Killy from Kilmarnock in Scotland on the far side here we go then with the next quarter final Killy ultimates from Kilmarnock in Scotland on the far side four pause flyers on the near four pause from Nottinghamshire, Blackpool, Wakefield, Oxfordshire, and Northumberland draw from all over the place. So four pause on the near side, Killy Ultimates on the far. And we are away. Very, very competitive opening leg this and just about on the near side. Four pause possibly have it. Four poor flies though with a fault, so it's with Killy on the far side at the moment. Very close, great racing this though, but we have a fault of four poor flies on this near side. Four poor flies getting it at the moment, having to run that extra dog, and that will mean that Killy will get the verdict. Yes, great racing then. They're just trying to pinch that extra second there. And you can see it's box load up, really late getting that ball in. One up for Scotland, one up for Killy Ultimates. Another victory here, it's the semi-finals tomorrow, grand final here on Sunday. All concentration, dogs hyped up and all ready to go. Sharon Alcorn calling for order. The lull before the fly ball storm. Dogs panting. We're ready. We're calm. We are ready to go. Killy Ultimates on the far side. Four pause flies on the near. Killy with a brilliant start on that far side. Four pause making it up a bit on the near. Not much in it at the moment. Four pause have it at the moment now. Terrific couple of legs just with four paws on this near side. Still with four paws on the near side, but Killy bounding away. Just have the advantage now. It's all on this one. It's all on this one. There's a fumble on the far side by Killy. And four paws have squared it up, Graham. Well, that was seesaw of a race if ever there was one. That last dog was just always going to beat. There was a bit of a bit of a fumble on the far side, but uh, always had it in the bag. One each. This promises to be a great final. Great racing, just a bit of the fumble that Graham picked up there, so important. One apiece then, Killy Ultimates on the far side and four paws on the near. By far the best racing we have seen so far here at Crofts 2017. A semi-final place resting on this one. Losers go home. Killy from Kilmarnock on that far side. One apiece at the moment. Sharon Alcorn, boys and away they go, and a brilliant start on the far side by Killy Ultimus, but there is a fault for Killy, probably a false start, I would think. They gained a big advantage from it. Killy have it at the moment, but it could all go four pause flyers way on this near side. We shall see. Killy with a clear advantage now on that far side, but four pause flyers picking it up anyway. Oh, a brilliant last leg, absolutely brilliant. And to my eyes and to the eyes of Sharon as well, it's the flyers that got it. Absolutely fantastic uh, racing there, under 18 seconds, and they just pushed and pushed to try and get the start and picked up a fault, which has ultimately cost them a place in the semi-finals. Fantastic flyball racing was in here, some great competitions. Say sub-18, and that's what it means to them. They know they're going to be here at the biggest and best dog show in the world at the semi-finals on Saturday. Confirmation then, four Paul's Flyers make it to the semi-finals, defeating the Scots. Hardly a, hardly a pause in the action here. Third quarter-final between a Brig Muttley crew on that far side from Brig in North Lincolnshire and from Aces High flyball team on the near from the Medway Towns in Kent. Totally focused, those dogs. And you can see the box loader there, just shouting the instructions. Run we should underline, shouldn't we, this one? It is, just a practice run. 
box loaders cannot touch the dog, they cannot touch the box, they cannot indicate with their hands towards the box, they've got to stand there, but they can shout, and boy, do they shout. Mm. Wow, look at that whip it, absolutely fantastic. We will watch out for that particular whip it in the Aces High fly ball team. Third quarter final then, Brig Muttley crew on the far side from Brigham North Lincolnshire against Aces High from the Medway Towns in Kent. The Aces on the near side, Brig on the far side. Thrilling fly ball thus far. Let's see what unravels here in the third quarter final. Brig on that far side, just about have it at the moment. It's very, very close indeed. Aces High. Probably just clear, slow pick up there from Brig on the far side. But Brig are making up ground. This is so competitive, this one. All on this last leg. I think I know what's going to happen here. Aces high, scampering through. Oh! Hold on. I think there might be a fault on that. There's a, they drop the ball, they've got to go again. They've got to go again. And that would mean it's going to go to Brig Muttley Crew on the far. Yeah, Muttley Crew get it. Just shows a moment's flicker, a moment's lack of concentration and you lose. My word, that dog is just electric. Just didn't quite have the ball in the centre of its mouth, you can see, and dropped it. What a shame. This is shaping up for a great event. One up then, Brig, Muttley Crew. Win again, it's the semis tomorrow, here at Crofts tomorrow. They know the aces higher in great form. Away they go. Very close to the moment, just with aces high on this near side. Second dog, Aces High. A bit of daylight now between Aces High and Brig Muttley Crew on the far side. Aces High having a very, very good run here if they keep it clean as they fail to do in the last one. Scampering away, my goodness me, that is lightning quick. It's almost lap. It's almost winning by a lap. Fantastic from Aces High, and they've kept it clean this time, and that's one apiece. I don't know when I've seen a dog as quick as the last dog that's running now uh, for Aces High. It is absolutely phenomenal. One of the ABC dogs that must be run, and I'll explain more later. All on this one. Terrific speed from Aces High in the whippets on the near side. Brig Muttley crew, though, right in it from Brig in North Lincolnshire. Brig on the far side, Aces High on the near. Sharon Hawthorne, our judge, calling order. It has been super stuff so far, and away we go with Brig on that far side, just about having it at the moment, but very good in it. Aces probably just about a metre in front, but Briggs very much in this race, Aces. And there's a fault on the near side, Aces have made a fault with that second dog. And that's mean we have to lean Brick Muttley Crew on the far side, lean their way. And there's a few celebrations from Brig. And Brick Muttley Crew get it. Brig Muttley Crew from Brig in North Lincolnshire. Possibly upsetting the odds a little bit here, because Aces had some lightningly quick dogs in their lineup, Graham. It is, but you have to be accurate with speed and unfortunately the dog missed the first jump came round so that's a fault so as you say just a bit more consistency and steadiness won the day for them and are they pleased yes they are so we saw this there that aces high were running two whippets each team consists of six dogs and handlers one of those dogs must be what they call an abc and anything but collie and it, we say that it must be an active member of the team and now we've got some colour coming into our lives Jim it does look that way doesn't it on that far side the vocal adrenaline from Scotland qualified in Wilton and on the near side carry-ons on the near and just a reminder there will be a little practice round and it has been thrilling competition so far fly ball just slightly sluggish yesterday but has really caught fire today there's been tremendous fly ball racing and i know lots of you at home particularly the younger viewers really enjoy this aspects of crafts don't get too excited here now this is just a practice round And they allow them a practice round just to acclimatise the dogs and handlers to what's going on here. Just the box loaders can get used to which side they've got to put the balls for the dogs that they're going to run at that particular time. It can change. 
Looking at vocal adrenaline, the colourful team as Graham picked out, small team came together for two years. A couple of years ago, training compete all the year round from West Lothian, Dundee Carnoustie and Blantyre. It is the last quarter final of Thursday afternoon. Vocal adrenaline from Wilton in Scotland on the far side. Carry ons on the near. We're poised for the last quarter-final. Vocal adrenaline from Scotland on the far side. Carry-ons from Natwich in Cheshire on the near. It is the best of three. Remember, last place in the semi-final is the prize. And very, very close on the opening leg. Just about on the far side. Vocal adrenaline probably have it at the moment. It's still very, very close. What a quarter-final we have here. Near side is carry-ons. Turning second at the moment, all down to this last leg. Carry-ons on the near side. Have the opening, have the opening race, a good clean race and carry-ons from Nantwich in Cheshire, in Cheshire, Graham just about getting it. Yes, carry-ons took that one despite a little bit of a fumble uh, by the third dog. One more for carry-ons on the near side. It is a semi-final place. The vocal adrenaline, the Scots know they have to win here, otherwise they're heading back north. Vocal adrenaline far side, carry-ons on the near. Dogs eager and expectant, ready to go. And we are away. Not much in it at the moment, just about on that far side, vocal adrenaline having it. Carry-ons on the near. Very, very close, hard to split at the moment, but it is carry-ons with a bit of daylight between vocal adrenaline on that far side. Carry-ons on this anchor last leg, kick and clean, and a good turn from carry-ons, and to my eyes, that's 2-0 carry-ons, and that is the semi-finals, Graham. Tremendous effort from carry-ons, who join Warrington, Four Force Flyers and Brig Muttley crew in the semis. Really good flyball racing there by the carry-ons. They li literally won it on the changeovers. They were just super slick, no time wasted at all. And elation there as well from, from carry-ons on the near side. OK, so this is um, just completing the competition this afternoon. And we have the Warrington Warriors against the four poor fires. This just, this just to complete the afternoon's competition. We do already know who has gone through to the semi-finals. And this just to complete the competition. And it's a big Philip, whoever does win this competition, Graham, of course. And we're all set for the first leg. Warrington Warriors on the far side. Four paws flyers are on the near. Four paws with the advantage at the moment. Warrington on the far side, still trading, still with ground to make up on the second leg. Here goes the third leg, looking very, very good indeed for four paws flyers on the near. Bit of a fumble, though. Bit of a fumble on that near side. Yeah, four for four paw flyers. And I would think that means that uh, Warrington Warriors are going to get it. Indeed it is. Yes, unfortunately, the dog picked up the ball and then dropped it. And that means that the dog has to rerun. Warrington won to the good then. Best of three, as always. So another victory for Warrington on that far side. Four pause players with plenty of speed, though, but just making crucial errors at crucial times at the moment. Four pause players then. And Warrington one, two, the good. Warrington on that far side, starting pretty well too. Just have it at the moment, do Warrington, and the four pause are still very much in it, still just with Warrington. Good second leg though by the four pause dog, very, very close. What? But Warrington have a fault on that far side, a fault for Warrington on the far side, and that could well mean that we're going to have a third race here. 
and four fours get it. It is one apiece, and we're going to go to a decider. Clean run there by four fours flyers. That's all they needed following the fault there. And again, just that fraction too early. This the decider then, one apiece. Warrington Warriors on the far side from Runcorn. Team captain Susan McDermott. The four fours flyers on the near. This is the crucial leg then. Keep a very close eye on things for what Friday afternoon part of fly ball. Bit of bragging rights if you win this one. Semi finals tomorrow and the final tomorrow. They are the massive prize here. One apiece then. Warrington Warriors on the far side and Warrington getting away very, very quickly indeed. But there's a fault. They got away too quickly. A fault on the first dog with Warrington. I thought it was a flying start and it could cost them dearly. It's going to mean they're going to have to run an extra dog really and four horse flyers on the near if they get things done properly. I would think they're going to win this particular one. And four horse get it and four horse go through by two races to one. And unfortunately, they're a false start. And that means that the team captain's point then uh, job really becomes important. They need to identify the fault on the far side and then they just need to calm their team down and just make sure they put in a clean run and four paws taking it by 2-1. Four paws flyers then from Nottinghamshire, Blackpool, Wakefield, Oxfordshire and Northumberland. Team captain Naomi Pierce. they go through. Winning by two races to one. Next it is Brig Mutley then from Brig in North Lincolnshire on that far side against uh, carry-ons on the near. Both these two have already qualified for the semi-finals tomorrow, but this rounds up neatly our competition here this afternoon. Brig Mutley crew then from Brig in North Lincolnshire on the far side, carry-ons on the near. Sharon calling for best of order. Are we ready to go yet? Indeed we are. Brig on the far side, carry-ons on the near, and Brig smartly and cleanly away. Oh, but there's a fumble. Carry-ons have it now. Big advantage for carry-ons on the near side, and they fumbled it. So Brig are back, are back in, in charge, just waiting to see if there's any any problems, any penalties, but on the far side, Brig, Brig Mutley crew have it, no penalties at all, and Brig Mutley crew striding through and taking the opening leg. A couple of fumbles in there, Graham. Yep, a fumble on both sides, but they recovered it, they picked up the ball, and they returned back over the four jumps, so no fault. So Brig Mutley crew on that far side, one, two, the good. Having a very, very good Friday afternoon. Another team from Brig in North Lincolnshire. And a good start as well again on that far side. Brig have it at the moment from carry-ons on the near. Carry-ons making up a bit of ground, very, very close and just in front now are carry-ons. And carry-ons stretching their lead, but there is a fault on carry-ons on that near side, I'm hearing. So although they're in front, they have a fault. And carry-ons go through, but I believe there's a fault on the near side. And Brig win it. So Brig by two to zero. Win it, and what a very, very successful Friday afternoon of the team from North Lincolnshire having. Fault there for the third dog there for the carry-ons, which has cost them. So, so tight. Four pause flyers then on the far side and Brig Mutley crew on the near. And no practice runs at all, so we're straight into this one then. Four pause flyers on the far, Brig Mutley crew on the near. And this is really to decide the Friday champions. 
before tomorrow's semi-finals and the grand final on Sunday when this main arena will be absolutely packed. Four Porsche players on that far side. So this is the final best of three rounds. And on the near end of the freak Motley crew who have looked anything but a Motley crew, they look really impressive thus far here at Crofts. Best of three. Quick turnaround for Brig Motley crew. And we are all set for the first of the three races to decide our Friday Crofts flyball champions. And away we go. Brig, Briggs Motley crew on the, on the near side. Just have it at the moment. Just the Brig Motley crew from North Lincolnshire, but they're probably just trailing by a metre now. This is really, really close, one of the closest races we had. Fumble on the near side, though, by Brig Motley crew. And a fault on the far side for four pause flyers. A fault there, a fumble on the near, but Brig Motley crew on the near side, despite that fumble, go one up. Great racing there, but just a little bit of confusion. Unusual, I very rarely see that. Brig Muttley crew won to the good. A victory away from being the Friday champions. Four Paws Flyers experienced flyball campaigners here at Crufts having to lean on that experience and fight back. So on the far side, four Paws Flyers trailing at the moment. It's with Brig Muttley crew on the near, but four paws have clawed it back and now lead. Four paws neck and neck on that far side. Just with four paws with my naked eye. Look at tremendous speed on the last leg. And four paws flyers. Absolutely brilliant on that last leg. To square things up at one apiece, Graham. What a fantastic leg that was. It was neck and neck right up until the last dog reached him. And then this dog won it for them. Without a doubt, that's the hero of the day for four paws. One apiece, this one, the Friday afternoon flyball decider. Brick Muttley crew on the near side. Four pause flyers on the far. All depending on this, on the accuracy and the speed, and away we go. Brick Muttley crew making a very, very good start, and it's Brig at the moment on the near, still with with Brig on the near side, hopping over those hurdles, and Brig with a bit of daylight now. But they have a fault, they have a fault. I'm hearing third dog has had a fault with Brig, and they're going to come second anyway. Wow, what pace, what pace for four pause flies. Genuine, genuine pace. Genuine contenders for the big title on Sunday afternoon. The Friday afternoon champions. And when it matters, four pause flies, Graham, find another gear. It is, and uh, I think the star of the show for four pause is definitely that lurcher. Save the day for them. Um, promises to be some great semi-finals here, without a doubt. Must pay um, tribute to our judge, Sharon Alcorn. She's been decisive, she's been fully in control, and she's run and, and supervised some great racing today. There we go, a little taste of Friday afternoon fly ball. More to come, of course, tomorrow with the semi-finals. Four pause flyers and Brig, a Muttley crew contesting the Friday afternoon final. And both of them going through to the semi-finals tomorrow. And then it'll be the grand final on Sunday. There we go then. These four will contest the semi-finals tomorrow. Four Paws Flyers, Brig Muttley Crew, Warrington Warriors and Carry Ons. Successful on Friday afternoon at Crufts. Bigger things to come on Saturday and Sunday. Jill Simpson, board member of the Kennel Club, is presenting the rosettes to Team Four Paws Flyers, and you can see just how happy they are. And that Look team... Like even a smile from the box loader there, Jim. Absolutely. Team captain Naomi Pierce, box loader oh, Leslie Garrett, Cat Connor, Sam Borden, Kaz Higginson, 
Maddie Barraclough and Sue North. Four pause flyers, well done all. I have no doubt we will see them again, and I have no doubt they will want to be doing a victory lap of honour tomorrow in the semi-finals, and more importantly, in the grand final on Sunday afternoon. for something in actual fact that looks beautiful for the dog to perform to the dog and the handler work in complete unison and that today's winner I can assure you was very very worthy and you are going to see it now and the young lady actually was the winner last year as well with another gorgeous routine and I think you're going to be really impressed with what you see now that's coming along any moment now we're just waiting to get started And so she's ready to go. Would you like to welcome into the arena, please, Caroline Garrett with Forks. <laughs> the count four kennel club land of the dog is Wild Phoenix of Fire. It's a Border Collie, an eight-year-old Border Collie. And she's performing to, well, the, the outfit might give you a clue. It's Phantom of the Opera by Sarah Brightman and Steve Harley.
I'll, um, I'll never forget the day Hudson and I first met this young puppy, this lively, uh, excitable puppy. Um, and I just knew at that point he was going to be a match made in heaven. My name's Nathan Edge. I'm 22 years old from Mansfield. And with me, I have my guide dog, Hudson. My eye condition originally um, sort of generated when I was just six years old. Uh, I was diagnosed with a condition called uveitis and I was left with about 20% vision. As I turned 18, um, I then started to get additional problems with my eyesight. Uh, the, I woke up uh, in February 2014 and uh, it had gone overnight into just complete darkness. For several weeks, a couple of months, I just went into a shell. Um, I didn't um, leave the house, I didn't speak to any friends, I, I just shut myself off from the world. Although he has, probably has no idea what he's done for me, he is the one that pulled me out of that difficult place that I was in. With him by my side every day, I had that comfort, him being right there and unconditionally loving me and just caring for me. It made the world of difference to me. Since the three years that Hudson and I have been in a partnership, um, I probably would say I've done more in these three years than I probably ever would have done in my whole life. Um, 
It's amazing to think I've gone from being in a, in a room locked away with, without a life to then doing all the things we're doing now. Uh, because now my dream is to hopefully one day represent the Great Britain in the Paralympics. It's difficult to put into words the bond Hudson and I have. The relationship is just... I didn't know it was possible to have a relationship like, like what we have with a dog. He's given me the life that I have now. The future for Hudson and I is looking very, very bright. And I now feel that there's nothing holding me back. You know, I feel free to go on and do the things you know, I want to do. I don't feel like there's any barriers anymore. Um, you know, we can just take on the world and do everything that I've always dreamt of. My husband decided we were going to go to Battersea Brands Hatch and I'm thinking, oh my God, we're getting a dog. What's it going to be? This big white barrel came flying at me and I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm in love. What is this? This is mine. I'm taking him home. He was sent to me, absolutely sent to me. My name is Sally. I'm 27 and this is Bowser, my English Bull Terrier, who is three. <laughs> The speculation is that I've had multiple sclerosis for over 10 years. It wasn't until November 2015 that I got the official diagnosis. Multiple sclerosis is a disease of the nervous system. Every day I have to take about six pills in the morning, six pills at night. Every month, every 28 days, I go for a chemotherapy infusion. Because of the way the lesions are in my brain, it reduces my sense of feeling in my hands, which Bowser helps with, because I can feel myself touching him, even though the temptation isn't as good as it used to be. It also affects my legs, motor functions, my short-term memory is affected. So having the memories and building the memories with Bowser, it gives me something to link to, so I'm always remembering something happening. We'd not long had Bowser and we'd been for a big beach walk. I came back and I wasn't feeling very good and I'd passed out on the sofa. But his dad was outside in the garden doing some gardening and he said, he was just insistent, you've got to come inside, you've got to come inside. There's something wrong. Barking at him, chewing on the stuff that he was trying to use. And when he came in and found me, it was there was a medical emergency and when I'd got sorted and I was sleeping so much Bowser was just laid with me, laid on me, laid on the areas that hurt. He seems to know where the pain is and pressing his weight against me and pressing himself against me. He was just there. He wasn't interested in sitting with anybody else, he just wanted to sit with me. He gives me, he gives me joy. It's more important than what he does for me physically and, you know, nudging at me because certain things don't smell right or don't seem right to him. He's walking along this journey with me and just gives me a desire to put one foot in front of the other again. I am uh, Joel Sir and this is my assistant dog, Caddy. I am uh, inflicted with uh, autism, ADHD, uh, and it's kind of com complicated and hard uh, to be yourself when, when uh, you, you have uh, two disabilities uh, that basically affects uh, every single uh, part of you. He finds the world hard. He finds everything hard. It was hard because everything was focused on Joel. You know, where was he? You know, how is he doing? How is he coping? He couldn't go for walks because he would, you had to hold on to him. We needed help being a normal family. A normal family. Paddy was almost like a light, a light at the end of the tunnel. It was like, you know, yeah, people can see now you know, that we need help and Joel needs help. He goes uh, almost everywhere with me. Wherever I go, he follows. From the minute Joel wakes up, Caddy's there. 
to the minute he goes to bed, except for when he's at school, we, have, we drop him off. Wherever Joel goes, Caddy goes, and they're attached. And Joel's karma, Joel's karma walking around. A lot of times, Joel was left out. Joel, Joel was excluded from things, and still is, in a lot of ways, excluded from things. And that's why having Caddy there as a constant companion for him is, you know, is brilliant for him. The difference for Joel is their smiles whereas before it was just pacing. That has helped him communicate loads, loads, especially as, you know, as, as bringing his words out and everything and talking to people and actually interacting with other people. Caddy's done that. Uh, via, if we're out with Caddy and somebody actually comes and talks, the difference now in four years is unbelievable. Caddy senses Joel's not coping before any of us and he's the one that grabs the toy and he will run upstairs or run wherever if they're not in the same room and actually that alerts us that Joel's not coping and then we can get to Joel but Caddy's always there for us, always there for us. With Caddy by him side, Joel's whole. Joel can connect with the world better. Cad Caddy is a uh... Well, my guardian angel. If I, if I he wasn't here, I wouldn't be here either. My name is Lance Corporal Denslow, and this is military working dog Charlie. Charlie's seven years old, and he's an English Springer Spaniel. Um, Charlie's an AES dog, which means um, arms explosive search. So it basically means he can search pretty much any type of terrain, um, buildings, vehicles, anything like that, and we can go and search for weapons and explosives. So I've had Charlie now for two years. Um, I picked him up um, at 102 Squadron um, when I completed my AES course, so I've become qualified to handle him and he was um, the dog that I got allocated as soon as I got back to the regiment. Me and Charlie will only deploy as a team, so the bond's there, especially when it comes to things like when you're doing, when you're firing on the ranges, you can really see the trust between the handler and the, and the animal. And when he's searching, it's just a big game to him. So what we're doing is we're putting all that trust into that dog and that's where the training comes into it. Yeah, so he's been out on operations now a couple of times, um, different tours of Afghanistan. Um, and what he'll do is he'll just um, give that level of assurance to the, um, to the guys out on the ground looking for IEDs and the bombs in the ground. And that's his just sole purpose, really. I'm sure if you ask any of the guys that have worked with military working dogs before, like any of the infantry call signs, what they'll say is that they love the dog. It's that, it's that level of assurance that a human can't give or a bit of kit can't. The guys are just so much happier with the dogs being out in front of the patrol and got a dog handler with them. You ask him to do a lot of things normal pet dogs probably wouldn't do in this trade and he allows you to do it, especially that bond, and he really does like to please the handler. And I'm quite lucky with him really, he's good. Um, he really does work hard and he really, and he really does enjoy what he does.
It's Crofts 2017, as always, high on drama, high on emotion, and some of the best dogs in the world on show. Hello there, all of you on YouTube, you're very welcome. Continue our coverage. Jim Rosenthal here, and alongside me, we have a Graham Partridge. And Graham, you've been coming here many, many years, I know that, and you are particularly looking forward to what we are about to witness on that on that green carpet out there. I am, I'm very excited, and at my age, I'm not sure I should be so excited, but uh, oh, we are in for an absolutely enthralling competition. Enthralling competition, indeed. Four small dogs, four medium dogs, and nine large dogs competing in the Crofts singles competition. The man who has pulled it all together is our judge, Bill Glover, Bill Glover. Over 20 years, a judge, a very accomplished trainer as well. 
and he's the one who has set this course and we're all set with the first of four dogs in the small section and first to go is Clive Foden with Poppy, six and a half year old Shetland Sheepdog from Whitchurch in Shropshire. Clive, 21 years since he first competed at Crufts. What an achievement for him to be here, Graham. It is. He's been there, seen it, done it, and to be at the top of your game for the number of years he has is no mean achievement. So it's a fairly straightforward start over the walks, a sharp turn back to the dog walk, and then they've got to go over the wishing well onto the seesaw. The seesaw must touch the ground. Then a the difficult bit, they've got to go round the back of that jump. Now towards the tunnel, and then they'll be out of there really quickly over the A-frame. And now comes the really difficult bit. They go over the jump, and they've got to avoid the tunnel into the weaves nicely done not a problem for them and now we come to a very now quick section of this you can either jump jump into the tunnel and poppy agility champion also competed in Italy for team gb and setting a very high standard in the opening round 40.8 and faultless as well well done clive well done poppy first of the four small dogs to go and the other three know it's a single fault, and they will be behind Poppy. <laughs> Absolute class, this one. Bernadette Bay never discount her with Zaz, a great dog, eight-year-old Shetland sheepdog, multiple winner, and this a very, very powerful combination indeed. Off we go. Best of the best on show here in this small dogs. Beautifully over the dog walk, great speed, great precision as well. And the seesaw, tight twisting turn. Well done, Bernadette. Well done, Zaz. We built her up. She's justifying everything so far. Ignores the tunnel through the weaves, skipping very lively through there over that kennel club jump. Now this is such a good, confident, controlled round coming towards the end of things here, and it's a disqualification. Sadly, that is so sad after a tremendous 30 odd seconds before it ran. She was doing so, so well. Just had to push her dog around the Yukonuba jump here. She had to go around the back of that jump and unfortunately just didn't make it. But uh, she's an absolutely fantastic uh, handler and it's a great dog. Charlotte Harding and Teasel. This combination won the British Open yesterday, won Olympia last year. You are seeing some tremendous handlers and tremendous dogs as well. Six-year-old working Cocker Spaniel. Teasel, the winner last year with a different handler. The dog that sniffs victory whenever she competes. Nice. Very low to the ground, very quick as well. Not wasting any seconds, not wasting any time. Oh, this is looking really, really quick. Great appetite for those weaves. 23 seconds and all clear to keep an eye on the clock, it's all important. And they're well up on it at the moment, well up. Charlotte going through, Charlotte's going through, and 35, that is a massive five seconds of the best time so far. And Charlotte Harding and Teasel go top of the pile. Fantastic, fantastic display. Handler and dog at one going around an agility course and showing us just how it should be done. Great display. Ashley Butler, last of the small dogs, with her new young dog, Sullivan, four-year-old crossbreed, and knowing she has to go clear within 35.1 seconds to win the small dogs award. Ashley, such a great talent. Pressure is on, and she knows just a little bit of hesitation there could be very important. Ashley right up, in fact, ahead of Sullivan, this young dog. This is going to be close. This really is going to be close. Whisking through that, that kennel club fence, through the tunnel as well. Just keep an eye on the clock, the same as we all are up here. Keep an eye on it, keep an eye on it, keep an eye on it. Oh, she's done it. 34.3. Absolutely brilliant. That is proper, proper talent. Well, I'm sat here shaking my head, and nobody can see me, I know, but I, I'm just in awe. I, I mean, I've seen Charlotte Harding and Teasel run, and I thought they would really take some beating, but 
Ashley Butler and Sullivan, I take my hat off to you. You've absolutely nailed it this evening. Those turns round, some of those wings were just to die for. Well done. Turns to die for from Ashley Butler and from Sullivan. Four years of age, a lot of competing left in Sullivan yet and in Ashley. And Ashley Butler just 34.3 plays 35.1 winning the small dog section in the Croft singles. Is it going to get any better, Jim? I hope so. But uh, you're not going to get a lot better than that, though, I have to say. Absolutely fantastic display by the, the small dog handlers there. And now we're going to move into the medium section. First of four medium dogs. Becky Sargent handling. Dolly, seven-year-old Border Collie, an agility champion from Warrington. First to go. Dolly, perfect pooch. Absolute privilege, they're saying, to be on the green carpet. Representing Team Dolls, they call themselves. I'm picking up five faults there. And this is confusion, sadly. And this is the end, sadly. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That well that we don't see, don't see too often. Yeah, and we'll talk about that uh, when the round ends and a little bit more hesitation. But Becky and Dolly uh, will complete their way round. And as always, this very generous Crufts crowd will acknowledge how well they have done to be here and give them both an ovation at the end of it. And looking at the way that uh, Dolly is moving, you just wonder how things might have been. A little refusal on that A-frame as well. Go on, Graham, you have an answer there. No, it's such a shame. I think they've decided that they're going to call it a day. Do that last jump. Yes, well done. Real big shame for Becky and Dolly there. They're ultra-competitive, I know. Um, the dog did not like that wishing well. You don't see it every week in competition, but uh, she knew the chances of getting one in the uh, Crufts Arena were good. And three refusals, so it's refused it three times, means an elimination. You're looking at Libby, ten and a half year old, still competing at the top level with Stephen Richardson. Saw him in the British Open yesterday from Wigton in Cumbria. Amazing dog to own. Still very quick, still with a huge appetite for agility. Graham, even relatively advanced years, ten years of age plus. Absolutely amazing that this dog is competing with the best of the best still at ten and a half years of age just shows you how fit and healthy uh, doing agility can be with your dog. And it's good so far, 26 seconds of the time. No faults on the board for Stephen and for Libby. And this is very good, it set the standard, it set the standard in the medium section, 37.2 and clear for Stephen and for Libby. Very experienced, you say, this dog knows what it's all about and they just are a perfect partnership. They've been working together for years and years. Absolutely fantastic. We could be building to an unbelievable climax here. This could be very special. You're looking at maybe seven-year-old Border Collie and Sean Illingworth. Maybe won the Crufts Championship in 2015, European Championship in 2013, won Olympia in December. And if this round is clear, it could be a fantastic competition. And Sean and Navy looking really good. Through the wheeze. Significant step up in style and it's an Ooh, a little pause and it's a disqualification. Would you believe it? Sean Illingworth again from up here. It looks so straightforward. And it's an, an elimination. And um, Graham, I want you on that. How did that happen? Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I think it's a little bit of a handler error then, but uh, when you're pushing to the extent that these people are, I mean, it's just... It, just a moment's indecision means that it's lost. It's that tight at the top. 11-year-old Dizzy, 11-year-old Dizzy, Border Collie, last of the medium dogs, and Natasha... Wise. Been there, seen it, done it. Dizzy three times a world champion, six times and Olympia champion. And picking up five faults there. Would you believe it? An early error. Not what we anticipated at all. And sadly, the round has gone wrong and the crossed arms say that Natasha 
and Dizzy have been disqualified. An air of incredulity in my voice on that one. There is. I've seen Natasha compete a lot of times, and unfortunately, you cannot be 100% perfect all the time. She's 99% perfect most of the time, but unfortunately, dogs are dogs, and you just have to accept that sometimes things go wrong. She'll go away, she'll look at it, and what did she do wrong? And you'll be sure that she won't do it again. And it means that uh, Stephen Richardson in the British Open yesterday has triumphed from Wigton in Cumbria with Libby still competing at the top level. All the other three eliminated. Stephen with the only clear round, 37 seconds. That will do nicely. So, so pleased for Stephen there. Um, opportunity to win presented itself and he grasped it with both hands and what a way for a ten and a half year old to uh, take the title here at CrossFit probably one of his proudest moments I would think We are into the large section, Croft Singles final. First of nine dogs to go. Dave Munnings and Fame, excellent this morning. Great Britain representative too, from Newbury. Incredible dog, Fame, an absolute character, always gives of her best. Setting the style, setting the pace, beautifully through the weeds, Fame. Over that kennel club jump as well, clearing those jumps. Very, very beautiful jumping dog, this one, Graham. It is starting with a clean sheet, and is he going to be clear? Oh, my word, that's going to set the tone for the rest of the competition. 33.560. Now we've got a competition on our hands. They are going to have to push and push to beat that, and that's, he couldn't have asked for a more perfect start. Bonnie Quick and Ivy, six-year-old Kelpie Cross Collie, does one speed we've seen her before in this year's Great Britain squad, fast. From Wellington in Somerset, Bonnie and Ivy absolutely puts the burners on, away she goes with Bonnie. Oh dear, oh dear. Missing that dog walk. Where do I go next? And sadly, sadly, uh, th this round is ruined. Well, she'd seen um, David Munnings go around with a storm, storm and clear round. Um, she picked up five faults for a run pass for turning her back on the dog. She knew the moment was lost. Um, and from there on in, as I say, she just wanted to collect the dog, make sure it enjoys the rest of the round, make sure it finishes on a positive note. Uh, and it'll be good for the next time she competes with it. Absolutely running in reverse order. So these are... Uh, among the slowest qualifiers. Well done, Bonnie, well done, Ivy. And sadly picking up those uh, crossed arms from our judge, Bill Glover. Karen Marriott with Puzzle, nine-year-old crossbreed, Collie Cross Retriever. Competed here for the past few years as Puzzle. Always grateful and proud to qualify Karen from Gainsborough in Lincolnshire. Time to beat 31, 33.5, and of course, with no faults. Tight turn, dog walk, flying on the dog walk. Good contact as well. How about the seesaw? That is good too. Very promising early 15 seconds of this one. Quickly through the tunnel, up and down over the A-frame. Clean contact too, scampering to get into the weeds. Excellent, quick, accurate and legal over the Kennel Club jump too. This looks the best that we have seen so far in this large section. Again, through the tunnel. Well done, Karen. Well done, Puzzle. Got to keep it up, keep up the A-frame. And sadly, sadly, the crossed arms, the pressure telling right at the end there, Graham. What a shame. And you're right, Jim, it is purely pressure. Um, not that difficult, of course, but there's such a lot going on in it, and just a moment, you've just got to look away. It's so difficult. Dan Shaw, great trainer and handler, could well be a contender here, four-year-old border collie geek. Another one really benefiting from Croft's experience. 
from Hertfordshire. Just a reminder of the time, 33.5 and a clear round to beat in this large dogs section. Go! We are off, bounding over that first jump and the second too. Terrific appetite from Geek for this particular competition. Great speed over that dog walk. We're getting towards the rather more complicated part of the course, but Geek and Dan have it all in hand at the moment. Absolutely flying out of the tunnel. The weaves, tail wagging, paws dabbing. Excellent. Good quick turn. Dan and Geek looking looking on form, on song at the moment. Very tight turn there over that jump. And I think they're going to be inside. They're going to be inside at 34.6. They are just, just outside. 34.6 against 33.5. Absolutely amazing. Do you see the way the dog just put in an extra extra pace there? The dog was cued that there was a turn coming, and as a result, he got a really tight turn into those weaving poles. Stephen Richardson from Wigton in Cumbria with Digit, five-year-old crossbreed. Digit's first time at Crufts. Great achievement for Digit to reach this stage. Stephen's had a taste of things in the medium dog section. Oh, once again, that's caused a few problems, that one, hasn't it, Graham? Yes, you don't, as I say, you don't normally see these wishing well in use every day, but uh, they know it's a piece of equipment the Kennel Club uses and authorises, so they should have practised it. Five faults there for missing a contact on the A-frame. Over the Kennel Club jump, over the Yukonuba jump and into the tunnel. And now as we come out, they've got to push the dog around towards the A-frame, but avoiding it. And unfortunately came back in too soon and picked up an elimination on the jump, wrong jump. Such a shame, but he's uh, he's had a great day, Stephen. He has indeed promised a lot, but sadly disqualified at the end. Digit and Stephen Richardson from Cumbria. You want longevity? Look no further. Greg Derrick, 27th consecutive year running agility at Crufts. Rehab's third year, won the British Open in 2015 and a member of the 2015 FCI gold medal team. Rehab and Greg Derrick. Dog and hand are in perfect sync at the moment. Barking, barking away on rehab. No faults. And a very good first 15 seconds. A frame, good contact. Good jump, the weaves, perfection. Greg and Rehab with 33 to beat have now been eliminated though. And uh, no matter how much experience you have, you go the wrong course, you get eliminated. Such a shame, really good effort. And unfortunately came out the wrong side of the weaves. Anthony Clark, top handler with the young dog protest. Four-year-old border collie. Time to beat. 33.56 seconds. Set by Dave Munnings. We've seen little mistakes towards the end of the course proving very, very costly. Sweetly around that area. And out of the top. A frame, that's okay. Good tight turn. What about the weaves this time? That was okay. Very good, very economical handler, very quiet, but he's there all the time for the dog. The dog's totally dependent on uh, Anthony there to show him where to go. And this is a shaping up for a really great round. Oh my word, 35.497. Just a couple of seconds outside the 33, but very respectable and enough to put uh, Anthony and uh, protest into third place and he'll be very pleased with that i know he's still only in third place and you always want to win but this is a young dog very much coming into its own at the moment as a partnership matthew goodliffe with quincy eight-year-old border collie honest dog part of the gold medal winning team a couple of years ago for great britain one of life's happy chappies the dog described as relishing the contest relishing, relishing the competition here at crufts Above all, clear. First 14 seconds. 
and that was swiftly through the tunnel. The weaves have been a bit problematical for one or two of them. Not for Quincy, though. I think he's well up with the clock as well. 33.5 to beat, as you can see at the bottom of your screen. Ticking away. It's going to be tight. It is going to be tight. But just a couple of seconds outside of the game. That 33.5 is a heck of a time. It is, but a really great effort from Matthew and Quincy. This is such an honest dog. Um, Matthew's a great handler, and uh, if you're in a team, you would want Matthew by your side. Last dog, then we're looking at uh, Dave Munnings and Boss. Again, a class act. Again in Great Britain squad and ne needing something absolutely exceptional here to deprive Dave Munnings of victory. Yep, he's racing against himself now. He's trying to beat himself. This dog uh, is capable of doing it. Very long striding and very tight turning as well. There we go into the tunnel. He comes out now and now they've got this difficult bit where they've got to push round the back of the Yukonuba jump. Very nicely done. Is it going to be quick enough? I don't think so, but a great effort. 36.120. Fifth place for that, just couldn't quite hold it together. And confirmation of our result then, Dave Munnings, the winner, fantastic with Boss, absolute class act and winning the Croft Singles Heat for the Large Dogs. Okay, so here we go then with presentation time for, the, for uh, our singles, singles. We're going small, to start medium, with the small and large in dogs. First place. And off we go first of all with the small dogs and that fantastic performance uh, from Ashley Butler, who I believe is going to be a guest on Channel 4 tonight. A tremendous winning performance from Ashley. And making the presentations there we have Laura Richardson just taken over as the uh, manager for the Olympia Stakes, which we have every year uh, in London Horse Show, taken over from Dave Ray, um, who did it for many, many years and done an absolutely fantastic job. And in second place, Charlotte Harding, Charlotte Harding. 
second place in the small section. Fine work from Charlotte. Big guns pushed behind them. Medium dogs. Stephen Richardson's with Libby. Ten and a half years of age, the crossbreed, still competing at the very top level. Well done, Stephen. Wigton in Cumbria. And the winner of the large section, Dave Mun Munnings. So he did fantastic. We had two dogs there in the final. Really well done to him. And the runner-up of the cross singles was Dan Shaw. Really, really great effort. Both Dan and Dave, I know we're going to see just a lot more over the few next coming years. Quality competition then. These are the winners. But everyone can be very proud of what they put in on the green carpet here at Crofts as they take their lap of honour. The Crofts singles is done and dusted for another year. But coming through to all of you watching, great enthusiasm and great admiration from everybody here at the main arena at the NEC in Birmingham. So you join us now in the main ring for the final of the Yukonuba Challenge. You were with us last night for the semi-finals. Now we come to the main event. The final 12 dogs from all over the world, top dogs from their countries. And uh, we're going to see the final 12 competing for the big prize tonight.
From this international field, 12 champions were selected from across three sections to advance to the best of the best finals to begin in just a moment from now. First, please welcome into the ring Johan van der Rijtschurten, Vice President of Pet International Spectrum Brands. He will be escorting our Yukonuba World Challenge Best of the Best Judge, Lauren Pichard. So here comes our judge for the evening, Frank. This is Lauren Pichard from Switzerland. Yeah? He's uh, you're from Switzerland. He's been breeder of American Cocker Spaniels for many years and, and some other Spaniels and Poodles. Highly successful, Ladies and well gentlemen, known throughout the world. We are thrilled to present the contenders of this 10th Yukonuba World Challenge. Now From let's Norway, bring the dogs in. The Greyhound. The first of our finalists from Norway, the Greyhound, Jet's Man in the Moon. From the Netherlands, the Bearded Collie. And from the Netherlands, it's the Bearded Collie. Co the Bearded Collie. Representing the European the Dog Show, by the, the national Chow -chow. flag bearer. And, and the winner of the Euro Dog Show for 2016, the Chow Chow, the King of Finland. Egypt. De Los Perros do Bigo. Now, here's the representative from, Germany, from Finland, the American Mr. Cocker. The Tibetan Terrier is representing the country. From Germany, the from Tibetan New Terrier. Zealand, all the way, it's this Bichon Frise. And Frise. all the way from New Zealand, it's the Bichon Frise. Coming from Indonesia, put your hands together for the Jack Russell Terrier. The delightful little Jack Russell Terrier. Representing Portugal. Representing Indonesia. It's and there from Portugal, it's the Coming Basset Hound, the, the tricolour Basset Italy, Hound. It's this Maltese. The Italian representative in this final, the Maltese champion wins of Fortune Korea. Valentina's it's Magic. The bulldog. Uh, pop a big, <laughs> big cheer for the British Bulldog. Coming all the way from Russia. Come on, it's come this all the way poodle. from Indonesia, from South Korea. And the final contender. And here we have the, the toy poodle the representing the Russia. Evac's watermark. Representing Mexico. And very appropriately for Mexico, it's the Chihuahua. So these are our finalists. And our judge for the evening, Laurent Pichard from Switzerland, is going to be sorting them out to find the winner of this year's Yukonuba World Challenge stage for this year at Crufts 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands once together for the 12 contestants in the Yukonuba World Challenge 2016. These 12 came through the semi-finals last night, selected by now, three other judges. We start, and before we ask our judge to go over these dogs, can I ask the American Cocker Spaniel from France to please step forward? This is a delightful piece of dogmanship, now, of sportsmanship. The American Cocker Spaniel was actually bred in the kennel Wales of our judge tonight, and therefore they're not going to compete. They're withdrawing the their legitimate the place in the competition in out of a Pichard sense of sportsmanship and instead yes. are going to be allowed to do a lap of honour. Yes, it's... Um very sporting. It's uh, too too close now, for comfort for the breeder Pichard to judge a dog he's bred. So that's uh, a great pity that he's got this far, but then has to withdraw. But that's absolutely the, the correct and the sporting thing to do. And a very nice tricolour American cocker. Great style. The sloping top line, so typical of the breed. judging so having a reminder of those finalists of course having watched the judging last night where Liz Cartledge, Carmen Navarra and Jean-Jacques Dupas from France sent through these finalists from the different sections they were in just walking down the line taking in the outline the striking outline of the toy poodle there Full of concentration now, 12, no, now 11 top dogs. And here's the first of them from Norway, Jet's Man in the Moon, three-year-old greyhound dog, owned by Stepanka Harakova, handled by Agne 
is it Gentes? You, it's, you will know. It, it's Ogre Jetnes, yes. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> and this is do dog, dog of the Year for Norway, top dog in Norway. And, of course, um, Espen Eng's Jets kennel, very famous in Greyhounds, superb stock. And this one is a best-in-show winner all over Europe and a best-in-show winner in the United Kingdom as well. These sleek, flowing lines and the elegant movement of the Greyhound. There's nothing to hide on a Greyhound. They're fit-for-function dogs, everything built for galloping and speed. So there we go, moving out round the ring. A last chance to show his stuff. Jets, man in the moon. Had show careers in the USA, UK, Norway, Sweden and Denmark. A very successful show dog is Henry. Now we've got the bearded collie from the Netherlands. Beardy Connections Kenji. He's known as Kenji. He's a big best in show winner, 26 times best in show. Um, so that's a winning in Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, and Denmark, and the Czech Republic. So he's a well travelled dog. Owned by Renus and Annika Otto. Handled by Annika in the ring tonight. Well known to competitors in the Netherlands as one of the top show dogs of recent years. The bearded collie, Kenji. And a best in show winner at their big Amsterdam winners show, which was the, their top show, the equivalent of Krups in the Netherlands. There's Kenji doing his stuff. Five years old now, he's had a long career and a very successful career. Super shot of the expression of that beautiful beardy. Mm, broad skull and lovely expression. Winner of best in show at the European dog show. Ramesses, the Chow Chow, three and a half years old, King of Egypt, de los Perros de Vigo. Owned by Nuria Vigo Nabison, who's handling in the ring tonight. And again, this is another 26 best in shows again for this dog and all over Europe. He was world, world winner in 95. He's won in Italy, France, Spain. Switzerland, Holland and Luxembourg, Gibraltar. So, <laughs> but above all, he's a wonderful dog. He's squarely built in beautiful coat. And, you know, they, they are a wonderful breed, but, they, you know, they can be very stubborn. But this one is a great show dog, which has won him a lot of awards. And that classic rolling gait as he goes. So sound. The... The chow relatively stilted in its gait from a moderate angulation in the rear. It's not a free striding, but it's very correct for the breed. And a blue tongue, always a blue tongue. Judge is very much used to the Improve the World Challenge. As I've mentioned before, he has bred two dogs to win overall. And now looking at the representative for Germany, it's the Tibetan Terrier, Falamandus Remastered Edition. A Tibetan Terrier who's four years old, and uh, the owners are Sabine and Katja Raut. It's Katja who's handling here, and again, he's won everything there is a, a dog can win in Germany, Netherlands, Poland, right across Europe, and also in the USA. Now, the Tibetan Terrier has to be squarely built. Hardy, carrying a level top line. Good and, and nimble on those feet. And striding out well. And they have rather flat feet, Jessica, because that's for working on the, the sands of the desert. They're flat-footed breed. And apparently, Kiwi is not only a fantastic show dog, but a much beloved pet, a fabulous dog to live at home. He steals everybody's stack, uh, snacks uh, uh, at every the, opportunity. The, the thing about these great show dogs is that uh, they are family companions and pets. It's, uh, they just turn on, turn on the action when they get into the show ring. Now, the representative from New Zealand, this is the Bichon Frise image. Shandau, it's all about image. Four and a half year old dog, bred by Elsie Rennie, who I presume is handling in the ring tonight as well. And it's the second Bichon from the Shandau kennel to represent New Zealand in this prestigious competition. 
It's a long way from uh, New Zealand to the NEC in Birmingham, but he seems to have taken it all in his stride. This is in New Zealand, he was dog of the year, and when he was young, top of the year as well. So that's remarkable. Now four and a half years of age. A Mediterranean breed, this Bichon Frise means white dog with a slightly corkscrew curled coat and lovely dark pigmentation there, we can see. Proper little showman. That's image, Shandau, it's all about image, representing New Zealand. Dark pigment and eyes and <laughs> looking a bit its owner. Now representing Indonesia, the Jack Russell Terrier, Sandy Diamond, Arishem the Judge. Now this is a breed which has had classes at Crofts for the first time. Uh, so we had marvellous entry and the, the public have really taken to them. So here's one that was Dog of the Year in Indonesia. Uh, owned by Antony Vijaya. Although they're a breed which was native to the United Kingdom, they were developed as show dogs in Australia. But they look as though they, they've taken off all over the world as show dogs. But still, when you look at that, every bit the little working terry, you can imagine that one, instead of pristine white, scruffy as anything, down and, a hole, ratting going, in the bar. Going to ground, yes, and there's <laughs> beautiful top line and tail. Yes. Great. Super little show dog. The Jack Russell Terrier. Jack Russell Terrier. Mm. Stepping out with style. The public have taken the Jack Russell to their heart at Crofts this year. I think it will be very popular. So next, representing Portugal, a hound this time. This is Yogi Bear de Sete Minos. Yogi for short. He's a dog. He's owned by Raquel Calachau. Is it Calachau? Yes, Calachau, who's handling here, actually. Yeah. And bred in the famous kennel of Jose Hamem de Mello, a famous breeder. A heavy-built dog, but nonetheless one that should be able to look like he could do a day's work. And here's another one that's won all over Europe. A multi-group winner and best-in-show winner. He's travelled to Malta, Portugal, where he's won best-in-show. The Basset Hound, although they're quite sturdily built, they have to have ground clearance so they can move well and they have to be athletic. Nothing exaggerated or cumbersome about them. Super level top line on the move, this one, and just look at that stern going. White tip on the end, so it doesn't matter where he's hunting, you're going to be able to see him. And there's, it's thought that those long ears encased the scent when they had the heads down working. <laughs> Looks like he's got a pair of chamois leather this there. Now, representing Italy, we have the Maltese. Now, this is a a famous dog, Cincinnetta Ian Sommerhalder. Uh, he's almost four now, dog of the year in Italy, a best in show winner in the United Kingdom as well. He's uh, bred by Franco Prosperi in Italy, but shown here by Javier Gonzalez Mendicote, who, who's the usual handler for him. This wonderfully glamorous Maltese with his white silky coat, dark pigmentation. You can see why he's caught the judge's eye in all the countries he's been to. Yes, confirmed a champion in Spain, Croatia, Portugal, Russia, Finland, the UK, Slovenia, Greece, Cyprus and Switzerland. That's quite a roll call. And actually a few years ago, this dog's father won the toy group at Crofts. So he's uh, following in family footsteps. This dark pigmentation around the eye rims and the nose and the lips, which sets off all of the white, white breeds. Now, this is looking really well. This level top line, the tail carried over the back. I think he's looking the part tonight. Beautiful outline and balance. 
rock steady in the top line. A small dog, but full of personality and confidence. And just look at that expression, the determination on that little face. We were so impressed with this dog in the semi-finals last <laughs> night, weren't we? From South Korea, this is Dice Major League, pop -a top roll of the dice, a British Bulldog. And the, <laughs> the, the standard asked for a sour mug expression, <laughs> and that's exactly what we've got there. And of course, he's shown differently from the others. He's not stood side on, he's face on to the judge because the judge wants to see that bulldog head and, and that wide set the, front. And all the, the wide power. front with the low center of gravity so they could stand the ground against bulls originally when they were, when they were bulldogs. And, and bull such baiting. a free moving one, this. This is representing South Korea, of course. Belongs to Ji Sung Koo, handled by Jin Woo Lee in the ring. And this dog has won in the U. United States, China, the Philippines, and Thailand. Marvellous career, he's had. And a great personality. Look at him standing his ground there. Always face on to the judge so he can get the most impressive angle on this breed. <laughs> and, I, and I think a crowd favourite here. So, absolutely chilled out in the atmosphere of the big Well, he, look, he looks yes. like he's taking a trot down to the park, doesn't <laughs> yeah, he? He's not remotely yeah, concerned yeah. about any of this. Super looking dog. Beautifully clean eyes, big nostrils, which are important for the shorter faced breeds. Now, what a contrast <laughs> from the British Bulldog to the Russian representative, Evax Watermark. This is Pitt, a toy poodle. And he's only 20 months of age, so he's, he's done very well and a great career. Uh, he's handled here by Natalia Mankova, who bred him and uh, owns him and co-owns him with Anna Stepkina and they come from Russia but he's also won in Czechoslovakia and he's had 11 best in shows all round Europe now if you want a show dog the poodle's hard to beat they love the show ring this short back this long neck the tail carried high and great driving action this is a beautiful beautiful profile and type on this toy poodle. Because, of course, there's so much more to a poodle than that coat. People at, at home often tend to dismiss them because of the fancy coat. In fact, they are the most intelligent, outgoing, fantastic companions poodle. They're, they're brilliant little dogs. And, of course, the toy poodle is a miniaturised breed, and they come down from a, a, a duck retriever. The standard poodle we used originally as duck retrievers. So we'll talk about those later in the utility group. Very stylish. And the last of our competitors now, representing Mexico appropriately, this is Sonito Sanos Filo Sanchez, a Chihuahua. Now, they may be the smallest breed in the world, but they don't know that. They're full of confidence. They can take on anything and uh, they're unabashed with uh, any situation. Here he is, this little Chihuahua with his dome skull, his large flared ears and those big dark eyes. And, of course, they come in two different coat types. The longer coat, this is a short coat. Nothing to hide there. And the tail carried like a little scimitar over the back with a lovely level top line. Might be the <laughs> smallest in this ring, but certainly full of self-importance. <laughs> That's it. Get yourself together to move nicely. Very excited. The final contender from Mexico. Well. So there we have our Mexican representative, the Chihuahua. All have now been looked at by our judge, Laurent Pichard. Uh, and, and then he will decide who is going to win the Yukonuba World Challenge for 2017. Quality dogs in that lineup, yes, Frank. Yes, I think he's going to have his work cut out here. And uh, very experienced, Laurent. And uh, I think that Maltese looks marvellous tonight. And the Bulldog also. Look, everything. He could go anywhere because they're all full of quality. All, of course, top dogs in their own right in the countries they're representing here tonight. I think he's um, going to send them round. Here, he'll take... That will have been the purpose of uh, bringing them in in size order so you don't have a greyhound running down a chihuahua. They're all going to take a final turn of this big ring. 
This is where the judge will be looking at their top lines, their reach in the front movement, where that they're getting the hops well underneath them. A rather different, different type of movement from the chow, but it's breed typical movement, and that's important. And there is the little Bichon. All of these competitors, look at them, just lifting themselves that little bit in response to the audience, because, of course, they're show dogs. Yes. These dogs have been shown all over the world. They know when they're doing and, well. And, and there is the Maltese. He looks marvellous tonight, and so does this bulldog. Look at that, for cool customer. What and a wonderful <laughs> representative of one of these shorter face breeds. So sound. And the cheeky chihuahua. He last. doesn't know he's the smallest in there. <laughs> last but not least, uh, in, in self-importance. So here we go. Final decisions time. We think we're going to get third, second, and then first. Hold that moment. So this is building up to a climax now. Big prize for the, the winner. And there's the trophy in the foreground. Who's it going to be handed to? Uh, now I see. So a prestigious prize. And we're going to see the third place, that's the second runner-up. So uh, we'll see the third place dog coming out first. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're making us wait. <laughs> there they go. Well, he knows who's good. Lauren's own man, he knows he's given out the awards to the um, to the commentators so this is just a laugh of honor for all of them all 11 who are left Remember? and of course all such deserving winners they're top dogs in the countries they represent here tonight they've got nothing to prove but how fantastic that we get the opportunity to see all of these international top dogs together in the same ring uh, what what's your eye telling you jessica any any well, I, I, I have a hugely soft spot for that bulldog. I think the Russian poodle Balls looks absolutely superb tonight. Ah, little Jack well, Russell. And, and the Maltese looks marvellous. Yes, I think, from here, from here. Anyway, we're not uh, in the ring, but we uh, haven't got our hands on the dogs. Exactly. We're only looking from ringside. Here we go. The boards are out. Oh my goodness! And, and um, runner-up for the Ukinuba World Challenge, Simon Luxmore, the chairman of the Kennel Club, who will be presenting our runner-up. Uh, so here comes Simon Luxmore, chairman of the Kennel the Club, who's going to present and Rafael de Santiago, first runner up, effectively third Vice place. President, Pet Europe Spectrum Brands, owner of Yukonuba, who will uh, bring the uh, World Challenge trophy from Yukonuba. Give them a round of applause. Suitably gigantic checks propped up against <laughs> the, uh, the boards there. So. First runner-up of the Yukonuba World Challenge 2016. In third place is... Big fanfare, who's it going to be? The is... English Bulldog! Oh, oh that's fantastic. <laughs> so Ma the Bulldog is in there. Marvellous. Great favourite of the crowd, he put on a great show. Marvellous for the breed to have a healthy, sound representative like this. Getting 1,500 euros. We'll buy him a bit of dog food to last him, I think, Jessica. Or is that fair? <laughs> In second place is the Toy Poodle from Russia. Yes, the Toy Poodle's in there. Oh, Jessica, <laughs> Jessica, you've spot on the Toy Poodle. Now, 
Marvellous, only, only a young dog, 20 months of age. All the way from Russia. Clever breeders in Russia. Evax now, Watermark. Uh, uh, now, Who's Jessica, be the Mal Maltese, Maltese, a chow, what do you think? They're, they're where I'm leaning okay. myself. Do you want to know the winner? Do you want to know the winner? Oh. <laughs> the Yukonuba World Challenge 2016 Trophy. It goes to... Representing... Italy! It's it the is the Maltese! <laughs> oh, marvellous. <laughs> marvellous. Put on a faultless show. A beautiful dog. Look at that. Champion Winds of Fortune, Valentina's Magic. Worked magic this evening, taking the Yukonuba World Challenge. Spot Ladies on, and gentlemen, Frank. please stand to celebrate and applaud the Maltese from Italy. The Yukonuba World Challenge champion wins a check of seven and a half thousand euros. A prize of three and a half thousand euros goes also to the Kennel yes, Club uh, of Italy, which a marvelous, has selected marvelous this magnificent marvelous victory. dog who has just been crowned best of the best. And actually, Mike, I've, I've got the wrong notes Challenge. in front of me, so it's totally the wrong name. It, it's it's little Trinity uh, Ian Summerhadler. Isn't that from the, the Vampire Channel. Diaries? Yes, 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 yes. She's totally dropped this dead gorgeous from, from, from the Vampire Diaries. Yes. Please now all stand Chinachita Ian to the Summerhalder, the Maltese. Italy. Beautiful winner of the Yukonuba World Challenge. So everybody standing for the this Italian the national anthem in honour of our winner. A winner. So a nice, nice touch, very patriotic, the little Maltese there. The Russian toy poodle, to do one runner up. Lap of there we go, we're going to see them once, the once more. So in the third place, third place please first, is the Bulldog from South Korea. <laughs> and now, if the Maltese can do this, which I'm sure he can, here he goes. The biggest cheer of the night, please. The Maltese from Italy. tonight at the Yukonuba World Challenge. I think you can give them one more round of applause, don't you? It's fabulous. Italy and the Maltese. I think one more round of applause. The Yukonuba World Challenge. Italy, the Maltese. Lots more tonight on Friday night of the world's greatest dog show. We now set the scene for the very generously supported by Yukonuba and our media partner, Our Dogs. It is. Uh, Great pleasure to hand you up to the commentary box to Mr. Graham Hill.
you. Thank you, Nick. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the finals of the Vulnerable British and Irish Breeds competition. January the 1st, 2015, saw the official launch of the Kennel Club's initiative to raise awareness of our rare native breeds and recognize those dedicated to ensuring their continued survival. To this end, the Vulnerable British and Irish Breeds competition was brought in by the Kennel Club with sponsorship from Yukonuba and supported by our dogs. Before our finalists enter the ring, it is my pleasure to introduce the judge for this final this evening. One of the most respected UK all-rounder judges who has previously judged the Terrier group here at Crufts. He's also one of the country's top breeders of Scottish Terriers, the famous Stuain Scotties. Please give a very warm welcome into the main ring to Mr. Stuart Plain. He's escorted this evening by Mrs. Anne MacDonald, Vice Chair of Crufts Committee. Thank you. And now please show your support to all of the vulnerable breed finalists as they come into the ring this evening, led in by the Bloodhound. So there's Stuart Plain, who's going to be judging the vulnerable breeds competition tonight. The first of those entering the ring now, the Bloodhound. Followed by the Mastiff. Followed by the Mastiff. Well, there was the otter hound between those but two that slipped in. <laughs> and now we have the smooth collie. And please welcome the Lancashire Healer. The Lancashire Healer. And now in comes the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. The beautiful little Cardi Corgi. The next dog in is the miniature bull terrier. The miniature bull terrier. And now we have the smooth fox terrier. The Smooth Fox Terrier. Please welcome into the ring the Glen of Imal Terrier. And the Glen of Imal Terrier. And next we see the Irish Terrier. The Irish Terrier. Instantly recognisable red coat. Now we welcome the Kerry Blue. And the very distinctive Kerry Blue Terrier. And followed by the Manchester Terrier. This is the little Manchester Terrier. Next in, the Norwich Terrier. Norwich Terrier, but now the Celium Terrier. The Celium Terrier. Please welcome the Sky Terrier. And the Sky Terrier. And followed by the English Toy Terrier, Black and Tan. Little English Toy Terrier. And now welcome the English Setter. Very distinctive there, the English and the setter. Gordon setter. Hard to believe these are vulnerable breeds, isn't it? Some of them, this is the Gordon the setter, Spaniel. magnificent. And the Clumber Spaniel. And followed by the Field Spaniel. The Field Spaniel. And finally, we have the Sussex Spaniel. Last but not least, the Sussex Spaniel. That brings them all in. So we have 21. And these vulnerable breeds, of course, classed as such because there were under 300 puppy registrations here. in the last 12 months. So these are these breeds that, for breeds one reason or another, are not so popular with the general public, not so many puppies Stuart being Clay. bred or bought. The gene pool, of course, gets and low, and so the chance of breeding more sinks as well. So the before calling out his some of these breeds may not survive, but we hope that they all will. And Stuart Plain now well, taking a walk along this line. This is a straightforward a competition. He's judging the dogs. These are all dogs which have earned points to get here. They've been the top point scorer in their breed, and they have been nominated by their owners and invited to take part in this vulnerable breed competition. This is the only competition uh, Crofts which really does help to raise the awareness of these vulnerable breeds. And uh, if you want to know more about them, you could always take a look at uh, Discover Dogs, the Discover Dogs Pavilion here. You can talk to the owners and find out more about these lovely breeds and how you might get involved if you wanted to save one of them. Uh, they are lovely animals, all of them. And uh, as we say, the gene pool reduces and the registrations get less and less. So now I think we're getting a, 
a short list pulled out. These must have been prejudged outside the ring. We've got the smooth collie. And the cardigan corgi. The Celium Terrier coming out. And the Sky Terrier with his very distinctive head and ears. The English Toy Terrier. And last but not least, the Gordon Setter. So that's Stuart playing shortlist, which has been judged elsewhere. With just his final decisions going to be made in the ring this evening. Lovely to have been able to see them all together. It is, and as you said uh, earlier, Jess, it really is extraordinary the way that you see some of these breeds and you think, how on earth is it that they're so rare, they're so beautiful? Particularly, I, I adore the Gordon set. I just think it's, it's the most gorgeous, those colours are so beautiful. And it's very sad when these breeds get to the stage of making so few registrations that they become what we call vulnerable. So here we have the Smooth Collie. This is champion Clingstone's hot shot at Fox Earth, imported from Finland. A bit, her name's Petra, suitably enough, Peter. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and here we have the, the cardigan, cardigan Welsh corgi. corgi, yes. Next breed we're going to see is the Celium Terrier. This is a dog called Decker, born on the 10th of February 2015, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Bettis. Decker and uh, Denise Bettis took part this year in the Pedigree Paws Unite sponsored walk, walking from Monmouth and the Be Brecon Beacons, re representing the, the breed. Here we have the Sky Terrier. This is champion Brake Mill Barnum, Barney, owned and handled by Jane Curtis in the ring tonight. So now we have the English Toy Terrier, also known as Black and Tan for those characteristic markings. This is champion Sharex Burning Love for Dobra. Handled by Terry Burgess in the ring. And handling the Gordon Setter here, David Alcorn. The dog's called James, born in uh, November 2011. Very Show happy champion dog. Lourdes Fulcrum. So the boards are coming out. We just have uh, a winner and a reserve. And the one who didn't get a name check there was the Celium Terrier, champion Dudwell Double Decker. And here we go, it's going to be the, the beautiful smooth, smooth collie. collie. Love this breed. This is, this is Petra. Well, very appropriate for me, yes. Petra, uh, this lovely bitch born at six years old. Handled by Trevor Haywood. And second, the Gordon Setter, as we saw there at the end. Two beautiful dogs. There's the Gordon Setter, show champion Lord Ace Fulcrum. But Trevor and Birgit Haywood, Trevor handling in the ring, the smooth collie, this is Petra. They've bred 74 UK champions Quite in this remarkable, gorgeous breed. Well, and in rough collies and mini wire dachshunds as well, but 74 in total, absolutely fantastic. Trevor actually judged the breed at Crufton in 1990 in smooth collies and uh, 
His wife, Birgit, from Sweden, she judged Croft in 1995, same, uh, same breed. There it is, the Smooth Collie, a rare breed. I like, very similar, in fact, the standard is the same as the Rough Collie, except the coat, and uh, it's very sad that it is an endangered breed. They're delightful animals, as are the Gordon Setters. But there's our winner in the vulnerable British and Irish breeds competition final. about the border collie, the rough collie, all various collie versions. Now, why is the smooth collie not as popular as all the rest? I really don't know, because it should be. <laughs> Tell us why they are such a nice breed to live with. Well, they're a real family dog. You know, they're super temperament. Not a lot of main coat maintenance. They're easy to train. They're really good dogs. Really good dogs. Easy to train, easy to keep, good grooming. I'm going to go and get one myself yeah. tonight, I think. <laughs> well, many congratulations. Did that, does that feel like um, a, a real achievement to win a best of the vulnerable oh, breeds? And it's lovely for the breed, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's marvellous. Thank you. And hopefully it will give some much-needed publicity to this beautiful breed. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Vulnerable Breeds competition, the Smooth Collie.
turn our attention to the third of our seven groups here at Cross 2017. Well, here we come with the utility group. Frank Kane sitting beside me here. And we're really looking forward to this. This group consists of miscellaneous breeds of dog, mainly of a non-sporting origin, including the Bulldog, the Dalmatian, the Akita and the Poodle. The name utility essentially means fitness for a purpose. And this group consists of an extremely mixed and varied bunch. Most breeds having been selectively bred to perform a specific function not included in the sporting and working categories. And some of the breeds listed in the group are the oldest documented breeds of dog in the world. So it's a fascinating group and really looking forward to it. You too, Frank. Absolutely. And uh, I think we might be seeing a, a, a rare breed which is one the uh, not separately classified before it comes in, but that'll, that'll be interesting. This is a breed, presumably, which it, it is not yet fully recognised. They don't operate and give CCs yet. Yes, they're developing in this country, yes, and getting the numbers together. Fine. Please put your hands together for this year's Crofts Utility Group judge, Derek Smith. And so here comes our judge being led out by Anne MacDonald. It is Mr. Derek Smith. He judged Best in Show last year here and, uh, of course, selected that magnificent West Ham White Terrier. He won his first CC in 1967 and his last as recently as 2014. 47 yeah. years of yes. top-class winning with his own now, rough collies. A real dog man, Derek, winning. yes. We shall now have and an absolute lap of honor excellent from uh, handler. So he's going to have a good time winner. there, I'm sure. But here come the contestants. The and here is from the, any, the import register, the Korean Jindo. Now, this is a relatively rare breed. It's a national treasure in Korea. And, uh, it's a, it's, it's, and, it's, and it sur survived the, the China's overrunning of the country when a lot of them were massacred. They were used as hunting dogs and, uh, and as guard dogs. And here we have uh, well, the Korean the Jindo. The import register, yes. Good to see it. But so now we come ready to the competition to proper. That dog is, of course, is not included. Arena. Please show your appreciation to all of our utility best of breeds as they enter the Crufts main arena, led in by the Akita. And here's the first of the Akita. The Akita, first best of breed from the utility group, the Akita. The Boston Terrier. And the Boston Terrier, cute little chap. The Bulldog! Big cheers now for the Bulldog, the iconic breed of the United Kingdom. The Canaan Dog! And here is the Canaan Dog. The Chow Chow! And here's the Chow Chow, it's a typical gait. The Dalmatian! You can't mistake this one, the Dalmatian. Free striding and wagging its tail. The Eurasia! The Eurasia. Developed from a cross of the ch with the chow. The French Bulldog! The French Bulldog. Huge entry today for this breed. The German Spitz Klein! And here's the German Spitz, the smaller variety, the Klein. The German Spitz Mittel. This is the bigger sister or brother, the German Spitz Mittel. The Japanese Akita Inu. And here the Japanese Akita Inu. The, the bright Japanese colors. Shiba Inu. And it's very much smaller version. This is the Japanese Shiba Inu. The Japanese Spitz. And yet another Spitz, and from Japan, the Japanese Spitz, all white. The Kazond. And quiet today, but they can be noisy. This is the Kazond. The Koikohonji. The Koikohonji from a Dutch breed. Been transferred from the Gundog group to the utility the group. The Laza Apso. And the Laza Apso, popular breed. The Miniature Schnauzer. He is the ultra smart Miniature Schnauzer. 
The miniature poodle. The first of three poodles. This is the miniature version. The standard poodle. And the largest of the versions, the standard poodle, striding out well. The toy poodle. And followed on by the little toy poodle, dressed just as smartly. <laughs> The Skipperkey. He's the Belgian barge dog, the Skipperkey. The Schnauzer. And here is the larger version. We saw the miniature earlier. This is the Schnauzer. The Sharpe. And he is the Sarpe, the distinctive outline and of the Sarpe. The Shih Tzu. And the Shih Tzu, again, a very popular breed. The Tibetan Spaniel. The little Tibetan Spaniel, full of character. Yeah, they're cute. Beautiful <laughs> outline held across the... And finally, the, the Tibetan Terrier. And last, the Tibetan Terrier. Spectacular. I shall now hand you over to <laughs> Jonathan Daltrey and Kim Sillito Beale to take you through the main judging of this utility group. Thank you very much, Marina. I'm Jonathan Daltrey. I'm Kim Sillito Beale. And together we're going to have a look at this exciting lineup of utility breeds here at Crufts 2017. <laughs> And the so Derek Smith is having uh, his first walk along the line. Frank knows the importance of this. When they first come into the ring, it's vital, isn't it, that you get this good look. You see them yes. run in, but then you get a chance to get close up. Yes, he's taking in the outline and balance of the, uh, of the dogs, often the first indicator of correct breed type. The judge is measuring every dog against its breed standard and finding, he hopes, the one which is closest to perfection for the breed. That's how they can judge diverse breeds against each other, it's which a, one is closest to perfection for its breed. It's a question that's often asked, isn't it? How on earth can you judge one of these big dogs against one of these? Well, you don't judge them against anything other than the standard for that breed. Derek's first awarded to first awarded CCs to Rough Collies, his own breed, 44 years ago, and he's judged several times the breed at Crufts. 27 times in total, not all at Crufts, of course. He was at Crufts in 1989. And he actually awards CCs in 30 breeds, which is... In interesting to see all the black poodles together there, sort of uh, clones of each other, but in a different size. And the... All with this incredible clipping. My word, the amount of time. Highly presented, I think, is the best description of the breed, isn't it? So Derek's really taking his time here. He's having a good look. Now he's taken them all in in general outline. Now he's going to have the hands-on inspection. And here he'll be looking at the anatomy of the dog, feeling the shoulders, hindquarters, the body of the dog under the coat. And the first one is the Akita. This one, champion Steckels love at first sight. Um, she's won a big entry today, and she's owned by Carolyn Faye Bevis from the Wirral with Rachel Kaur. Now, the Akita is the largest breed in the group and known for its vivid colors. The Japanese breeds like bright colors in their breeds. Well, this is a bitch, three years old, called Chanel. Jeff Corish was actually the jug, judge for the breed, 102 of them. The Akita traces its origins back many centuries to the polar regions from where the Spitz-type dogs found their ways into the mountains of northern Japan. And, and in its native Japan, it was used for hunting and fighting, developed in this style in America.
Well, on the table, we're looking at the lovely little Boston Terrier. This is a dog, just 22 months old, known as uh, Blanco. That's his pet name. Champion Wild Axe White Sock is its uh, kennel name. Liz uh, Rankin is the owner. This dog's had five cc's and been, uh, was the top dog in the breed in 2016. Very mischievous and lovely. And this is a breed which takes his name from the town, the city where he was developed in America, in Boston. And at one time you had to be to live in, be a resident of Boston before you could be a member of the breed club. They're a real Yankee Doodle dandy of a dog. <laughs> These smart, what we call Boston markings, with a, a, a desirable the white neck, white socks, and a little white blaze. The smallest of the bull breed, which has got his bull, some bulldog in his origins. Now, here is the best of breed from over 200 Bulldogs today. It's Ricatori Roman King. Marvellous. He's a three and a half year old male and owned by um, Mr. and Mrs. Eaton from Staffordshire. And there's that sour faced expression and this deep upturned underjaw. A wonderfully sour face. And one of Britain's oldest indigenous breeds. Yes, only three and a half years old, this dog, and you said called Roman. Uh, its best, most important win is this year. But this breed, the Bulldog, now looks so smart. Well, 20 years ago, you wouldn't have given them house room, really, the, some of them. The breeders have worked very hard to make them healthier and sounder, freer moving, and without exaggeration. That's moving so nicely, and you didn't see that uh, a few years ago. It's wonderful to see. Solidly built the Bulldog. And this is the head of the Canaan Dog. This one's called Asta, five-year-old uh, bitch, owned by Mrs. Ellen Minto, come from Lincolnshire. Best of breed here today and uh, the best result they've ever had. So this is a very loving dog. The national breed of Israel, the Canaan Dog. It's thought that the breed goes back to the pariah dog of the Middle East, a rather a feral dog. They've gradually become domesticated. This one's showing a, they have a watchful temperament. This one full of confidence. It's nice to see one going freely and with confidence in this, in this arena. And very effective uh, guarding dogs. They're very alert, very versatile. And they, they have been used by the Israeli army for mine detection as well. So uh, very useful. Multi-purpose. And here is the Chow Chow. And this one is Bon Triumph Tiffany, and she's come all the way from Russia to win today. So, you see the judges examining her on the table. It's an option to have the Chow on the table or the floor. Beautiful square outline, strong bone and feet. This is a six year old bitch, in fact, called Tiffany. The Chow is related to the Spitz dogs of the Nordic type and actually been known in China where he was kept as a guard dog and also used for hunting for upwards of 2,000 years. I mean, it's a very ancient breed. And in primitive China, sadly, it was, it was an important food source and its coat and skin were used for clothes too. But fortunately, we're now seeing them domesticated and valued as companions. Became very popular in Victorian times in the UK. There we are, beautiful scowling face, the broad skull and neat little ears, blue tongue and gums blue and tongue, dark yes. pigmentation. <laughs> Rather a stilted gait that comes from moderate angulation, so they're not big striding dogs. Absolutely breed typical in its movement, this one. Another breed that is, uh, its movement is very specific 
the Dalmatian. This is, of course, the carriage dog of Regency times. It's a two-year-old bitch called Heidi, this one, and has come uh, from Hampshire today to take part. It's a very bubbly, extrovert dog. And has, these dogs have a very distinct appearance, black spotted or liver spotted, the spots standing out well on the, the white coat, but you never know when they're born what colour they're going to be in spots, because they're born white. Now, the, the, the spotting is one of the desired features. They had to be elegant, they had to stride along aside, alongside horse-drawn carriages. So free movement and decorative spotting made them uh, very popular. They used to guard the stables at night, an all-purpose dog. Now, here's the Eurasia. Um, this is developed in Germany, uh, and uh, it was developed by use crossing a chow with a German spitz. This one, North Lakes Adonis with Cane Felici, and it's come uh, from Hertfordshire. So, uh, another spitz breed. And of course, it's, it is a breed which is specially designed. It's been one of those really successful designs uh, coming, as you said, Frank, from Europe. You can see his antecedents there as you look at him standing. Yes, l lighter than the Chow and bigger than the German Spitz, but with this harsh off-standing coat, this wedge-shaped head and sharply pricked ears and a tail carried over the back. They are the Spitz features. Very, very handsome. On the table, one of the most popular breeds here today, certainly 230 of them took part. This is the French Bulldog. This one's known as Floyd. He's 19 months old and owned by Lynn McGrody from Johnston in Scotland. And again, the most important win of his life today here at Crufts. Gorgeous little dogs, these Frenchies. Now, last year, they were the third most popular breed for registrations at the Kennel Club. And I can understand they're wonderful characters, independent, very affectionate. There we see the typical rise over the loin to a low set tail, lovely head and expression. That one is a brindle. Only four accepted colours, the brindle, the fawn, the pie, that's a brindle and white, or a fawn and white. They're the only four acceptable colours. Sadly, the... And now the first of the German Spitz is on the table. It's the smaller variety. This one, champion Longsdale's Dilemma. Um, it's owned by Dale Francis and Gary Pierce from up in Middlesbrough. They've been very successful. They've won a group here before. This one, this brisk striding action, very typical of the German Spitz. He really is insulated with this coat against uh, all the weather can throw at him. It's a harsh outer coat with a thick undercoat. He's uh, a high set, well curled tail and brisk movements, as you've said. They give him an air of importance that he really doesn't deserve. And, they, size, they, does and they, they come in all colours. Here, the solid black, but you can have them in party colour as well. This is the bigger version. This is the German Spitz Mittel, the middle-sized one. Uh, it's uh, a bitch called Bonbon, six years old, uh, owned by Siru Paiela and Timu Rantanen from Finland. So they've come uh, a nice way for this. This is a world winner and has been uh, had uh, a, a European win in, 19, in 2015 and 2016 and was the best uh, here uh, in Crufts 2016. So this is a big winning dog. Now, the, the Klein Spitz and the Mittel Spitz share the same breed standard. It's only the size which differentiates them. The Mittel, the larger size we see here, between 12 and 15 inches. The
Uh, the distinctive head and ears of the Japanese Akita Inu. This is champion Taiku Goshunyu Kensha. And it's come all the way from Spain. We saw it in, also in the World Challenge. So it's had a very successful crops. Best of breed here as well. And this breed was actually separated from the Akita in the UK in 2006, following the division of the two breeds in most other countries. It's probably closer to the type of dog uh, that was bred in Japan it, rather than the Akita it, we see. It is. It's, it was the original type of Japan, rather lighter in bone, um, but again, the same beautiful head and expression and sharp ears. And again, bright colours, very important. And this one, a red with the Eurojiro markings, this white on the inside of the legs and chest. Those lo lovely ears. And here on the table, we've got a much smaller version. This is the Japanese Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu actually means small dog. This is uh, owned by Mikhail Dunhill Hall and uh, they've been very successful in the ring with this uh, this breed this one is three years old it's a dog called dragon developed in the 19th century in japan when the, there were three different regions which had their own type of japanese shiba inu they when the population went low they combined to get the gene pool extended and built up very nice thick dense undercoat keeps him warm helps him cope with the rain very efficiently and now the japanese spitz champion jani precious gift kokumito uh, it's um, owned by Fiona Alston, Kennedy Bradley, and Adele Bowen from Shropshire. This is a breed which comes only in white, and it comes down from the Samoyed and the other Spitz breeds from the north. This little one is uh, a two-year-old dog. So one uh, quite a lot, actually. 13 cc's, six reserve uh, cc's, has had group two in Bournemouth and group four in Birmingham. So winning and a very smart spitz type dog, as you were saying, Frank. And we can see the Samoid, one of its ancestors in its type and its coloration. Very smart, brisk striding in lovely coat, which should be crisp to the touch. Now we have the Kazon, known as the Dutch Barge Dog. The Kazon takes its name from the Dutch preacher at Cornelius de Geisler, who was nicknamed Keys. This one is an 11 and a half months old, a very young dog called Flash, owned by David Peck and David Matthews. They live in Cambridge. Now, this was a Dutch barge dog, and it was used to guard the barges. They're quite vociferous, Peter. They, you know, they can bark. They like the sound of their own voices. <laughs> and they come in shades of grey. And we'll see these lighter shadings in the coat. The harness markings over the shoulders there. This high set tail. And again, it's another one. It's of the Spitz family. Short, compact, and this tail carried over the back. And again, a distinctive coat, which enables him to withstand most arctic temperatures and he'll take all the exercise you want to give him the spectacle markings round the eyes now here we have a relative newcomer to the utility group it's the koika honji it's a, a dutch national breed and this one is cane bread on Wapa Lukimi to Gundaheim. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. This is orange and white. It says that the orange colour represents the House of Orange in the Netherlands. Another youngish dog, 21 months old. This called Zuri, come from South Staffordshire in England. Sarah Williams is the owner. And uh, this. Uh, 
is when this this breed was in the gun dog group, but it doesn't hunt with the gun, does it? it and it's, that's it's, why it's been it, brought into it, the it, utility it, group. It's a decoy dog. It lures the ducks down the canals for the for the um, for the net. gun for yeah. the net. Yes, yeah. exactly. So it works silently. So it was taken away from the gun dog group. Those little black earrings on the ear are, are a breed feature. These black tassels on the ears. And this very distinctive head belongs to a six-year-old uh, dog called Mitch, who's a Lhasa Apso. Owned by, uh, uh, comes from Holland and uh, in the Netherlands, uh, Holland and the Netherlands, it's the same place, isn't it? And uh, uh, Mrs. S. Robert uh, was here uh, bringing the dog from Holland. This is one of the Tibetan breeds and it was uh, used as a companion for the monks in Tibet and it's a breed which is credited with spiritual powers bringing good fortune to its owners it was known for some time as a talisman dog you wouldn't think actually to look at it that they, they really will happily walk for miles over any terrain it makes a really charming companion a very attractive pet nice jaunty movement which is distinctive now, under that glamorous coat, there should be a hardy dog capable of withstanding the extremes of climate in Tibet. Now, here is the miniature schnauzer. It's Stedlin Avant-Garde, known as Avanti. She's three years old, and she's with her owner, Mia Eierstadt, from Italy. So it's a big winner. That pepper and salt coat, which should be crisp to the touch, the judge just feeling the texture of the coat. That's very important. I think it's understood, isn't it, that this is a, a dog of German origin derived from the Schnauzer and the Affenpinscher, perhaps. And I suppose one can see that. The Three should... sizes of snouts, of course, the miniature, the standard, and the giant. This is very free-moving. It comes from a, a very successful kennel. Sturdy, should not be a, like a terrier. It's got more substance than a terrier. A good forechest, this slightly sloping top line from the withers to the tail. And very strictly three colours, pepper and salt, black and black and silver. Those are the main colours. And now we sometimes see them in white. The white is permitted now, but that's something of a rarity. Now we've got the first of the poodles. This one is the miniature, owned by Miss Melanie Harwood from Blackburn in Lancashire. Uh, regular appearing in this ring. We've seen uh, Melanie here on many occasions. This is, uh, there are three sizes of poodle, this being the miniature one, all with a wide range of beautiful solid colors. But we're seeing today, all three are gonna be in black. Now, this one, Minaret's best kept secret. Melanie here has won a group at Crufts. She's third generation of uh, poodle breeders, her mother and her grandmother, both very successful. Now, very elegant, this long foreface, chisel, chiseled under the eyes. And again, this long neck, short back, great carriage. And of course, one reason why the judge needs to get his hands on a dog is when you see these wonderful coats, because you can't tell what's underneath them until you actually handle them. But that looks magnificent. That coat should be crisp to the touch. It's not a soft coat. The mature coat is crisp. And now it's the standard poodle. This is another female, it's Huffish Rave the Rhythm. It's a, a dog, sorry, it's a three-year-old dog from Sweden. And it's come with the breeder Charlotte Sundell and co-owned with Peter Palmidal. The poodle, I suppose, is known to be a bit of a clown by nature. Its owners do get a lot of pleasure and amusement, but they've got to be incredibly skilled at uh, presenting the dog, a highly presented breed. There's a tremendous amount of work goes into producing a dog in such fantastic condition. The, the poodle was originally a duck retriever, and this this trip, this trim that we see was functional. The hind quarters were clipped, 
to help it with propulsive power through the water. The pom-poms went over the joints to protect it from the cold. The same with the pom-pom on the tail. It gave it a rudder and also protected it from the cold waters. Although so this is the, the cut we normally see them in, they don't have to be that. There's a lamb cut as well, isn't there, which is different? And here's the last of the poodles, another black one. This is the toy poodle. This one uh, is owned by Natalie Mankova and Anna Stepkina. And they come from St. Petersburg in Russia. Uh, wonderful that they've come all this way to compete. And here they are with a dog on the table being judged in this group. And if I'm not mistaken, Peter, I think we saw this in the World Challenge. This, uh, this I think we did. I was over, looking over your shoulder whilst that was going on. I think you're right. Anyway, only 21 months of age. Very stylish. This driving rear action usually uses hops to drive him along. Again, the same standard, but in a different size. One of the challenges is to get the same quality and features in a miniaturised version, the toy always, version here. Always called, of course, the French Poodle, but to understand, really, they probably come from Germany originally. Now, we have this Skipper Key now, a Belgian barge dog. This one champion, Skipdale Orlando and his testament to the lasting qualities of the breed. This one is 11 years of age. That's remarkable. Here with his owner, Jan Mance, from up in Driffield in Yorkshire. Yes, this little dog uh, called Ollie is breaking the CC record at Crufts this year, which is tremendous. It's another of the smaller Spitz breeds. This one originates from the canals of Belgium, where he guarded the barges, a bit like the uh, Kays Hunt. At one time, extremely popular with the shoemakers in his native Flanders. And the, the word skipperkey means little skipper. He was the, like the boatswain of the barge and a distinctive outline. He has this cape of longer hair over his neck and shoulders and these little culottes on his, culottes on his back legs. Wedge-shaped head, brisk action. They are long-lived, as we see here, still very sound, fit and active. Well, Billy here is a four-year-old schnauzer dog and owned by Ian Moore, comes from Bridgewater in Somerset. We've seen the miniature schnauzer and this is the middle-sized member of that family. In America it's known as the standard schnauzer and the home country for it is Germany, of course, where the standard version filled many roles. It was a, a ratter, a drover's dog, stock tender and guard. Uh, utilitarian dog. They, as you said, they could be used for, for herding, but to keep the vermin down. Sometimes a little bit of c pulling small carts. Again, that crisp pepper and salt coat. Harsh and wiry. Now, the distinctive outline of the Sarpe. It's champion Ashaway ready to rock. He's a five-year-old dog, a big winner. And uh, today, um, best of breed here. He is a best in show winner. Now, this is a Chinese breed. Those neat ears, slightly wrinkled head. This is a breed where the, the breeders have done great work for improving the health of the breed. When we first had them in this country, they were over-wrinkled, too much excess wrinkle, excess skin, which had uh, bad effects on the eyes and eye rims. Yes. Now, much, much healthier. Fortunately, the breeders uh, weren't wedded to that look and they've improved it immensely and the dog has far fewer wrinkles, as we've said now. Again, you see the rise in the top line. There is a slight rise from the withers to the hind quarters and the tail curled over the back. It's a, a, a harsh, bristly coat, neat triangular ears. He's uh, holding them a little bit apart there. 
We're looking at the Shih Tzu now. This is Lisa, who is a five and a half year old bitch owned by Mrs. Sophie Paulsen. It's a dog that's come from Sweden as well. And uh, the Shih Tzu, the roots of this breed, are in Tibet, but actually it was developed in China, where these sort of dogs lived in the imperial palaces. Now, this is a breed which should have substance to it. It may be seen superficially as similar to the Lars Apso, but it's heavier in the bone, a different head. This has a rounded skull, large eyes, a broad, short muzzle. And the tail should be carried over the back like a pot hook. Should have some lift over the back and a weatherproof coat. So these dogs weren't imported into the UK until 1931. Now, the owner describes her as a stubborn princess, but she's had <laughs> victory today. <laughs> now, here is a beautiful Tibetan Spaniel. This is champion Torfness Scarlet Fan Fancy. And she's come all the way from Scotland, from Morrisshire, with her owner, Penny Smith. And it's her second best of breed at Crofts. She was best of breed here last year as well. One of the first uh, Tibetan breeds to reach the UK around about the turn of the last century, about 1900. A breed favoured by Tibetan monks and was brought to England by returning medical missionaries. It wasn't until after the uh, end of the Second World War that the breed really came into its own here. A beautiful breed. They're rectangular in shape. Should have some daylight underneath them, so they've got some length of leg. Only slightly bowed in the front. Beautiful quality here. Lovely example of breed type. And they come long in a great variety of colour as well. And a long lived breed and a great family pets and companions. Last dog in the utility group is the Tibetan Terrier. This is Kivi. He's a three and a half year old uh, dog and he's come from Germany with Sabine and Katja Pahut. And we're delighted to see them here. The Tibetan Terrier is not really a terrier at all. It's a herding dog, doubled as a guard for traders as they journeyed to and from China. Our judge just looking at the feet of the Tibetan Terrier. That's a breed feature. They should be flat. They had to go on all sorts of surfaces and they wanted a flat foot to help them to cope. And I'm not sure that this dog wasn't also in, your, in the uh, World Challenge as well. It, it was indeed. S squarely built, a weatherproof coat, a strong skull and foreface, and a weatherproof coat. This was a dog that succeeded uh, not so much by size, but through the awe in which it was held, because it's believed to be the original holy dog of Tibet. And that's the full group. So Derek Smith taking a last look along the line. He's going to make his short list. What's he going to pick? No. Well, he will take a long look along the line here before he makes his pick. Refresh the memory. You've done this many times, Frank. It's a, a nerve-wracking job. And this is a, this is an important time because he's reminding himself of the details he found underneath the coat. This is where he has to whittle down the group to his final eight or so. So you're going to have to pick on fine details to separate the winners from the also runs but all of these of course winners they are the best of their breed in the utility group and he's got to pick now a short list before he can whittle it down to find a group winner taking his time which is very important and now we're going to see the his choices for the short list looks like he's going over to bring out the akita first yes it is the akita comes out he likes the akita and the french bulldog and he loves the french bulldog 
The, the Akita Inu comes forward. A long walk down to the Lars Apso. Uh, the uh, all three oh, of the poodles, yes. Wow. Yep, yep. Strong breeds today, and the Sarpe. And there, and he's just picked his eight. Well, so those poodles, all three of them, get a look in at this. They are spectacular, I have to admit. Derek is a keen lover of poodles, he likes them, and obviously, the quality here. It is obviously excellent to have all three in the last cut. Now, the heat is on now for the the places. So eight very splendid dogs that he's now going to move again. And we start with the Akita. The, this is the three-year-old bit, Chanel. He'll be looking at... Uh, Strong rear action, using its hocks well. And now, next, he's got the very popular French Bulldog. This is 19-month-old Floyd, and he's showing off properly. Yeah, full of determination and character. There's no phasing a Frenchie. Very good back end there. And now it's the turn of the Japanese Akita Inu. This is Taiku, the four-year-old dog from yeah. Spain. Beautiful colours, a big winner all over Europe. Wonderful coat, excellent breed type. Uh, just getting excited there. And now we come across to the... Los Apso. The um, very good top line and nice tail carriage. Clean skull and cheeks. From Blackburn, the miniature poodle. Now we've got the uh, miniature poodle coming out first. And this is uh, the two-year-old Frankie. And Melanie Harwood, as we've said, she's won the group before with her miniature poodles. And the, the standard is from Sweden, from the famous, famous Huffish Kennel. <laughs> Elegant the standard poodle here. Elegance in his carriage, his long neck. Clean striding. Three-year-old Flash, perfectly named for a performance here in the ring. And now, last but not least of the poodles, we've got the toy. And this is the 20-month-year-old dog called Mr. Pitt. And he's come all the way from Russia. Third in the World Challenge. And just one to come, and here's our non-wrinkly or less wrinkly Sarpe, five-year-old dog called DJ. And we can we can see there this uh, clean action, firm hocks without exaggeration of skin, and this rise to his top line. So the boards have come out. Derek knows precisely what he wants here. He's now, putting them into size order for going around the ring. Yes, he's. Yes, this is a, a, an interesting thing. He wants to see them move again. And you put the largest dog first because it's likely to move fastest. And then uh, the ones at the back don't get caught up and overtaken. Short, short legs at the back, as we say. <laughs> short legs <laughs> at the back. And they are short as well. A little French bulldog at the back. It's kind of a job keeping up with the poodle, isn't it? <laughs> but there goes the, no. uh, the Akita, the standard poodle. This is where style and carriage will might just sway the decision. Which one is asking to win tonight? Japanese Shiba Inu, the miniature poodle, the Sarpe, the toy poodle, the Lhasa Apso, 
and bringing up the rear. Yeah. It's a French Bulldog. My word, what a lovely collection of utility dogs. And this will provide us with the third of the finalists for Sunday night in the Best in Show competition. Who's going to go forward? Now, where are your thoughts, Peter? From here, from the ringside. From the ringside, it's hard to tell. I, I've got to say the poodles look magnificent, but uh, I rather like that Japanese Shiba Inu. But, uh, 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 the, the Akita, Akita, uh, Akita Inu, a, a, a beautiful I mean, bitch, the, already a best in show winner and a group winner, and he's looking hard along the line at her. Well, last I seen that the boards were there. He's going to make his decision. And it's going to be the miniature poodle, is it? It is indeed. Melanie it Harwood, yes. Melanie Harwood, it is, yes. Well done, Melanie. The second group here. And in second. And the Akita. The third spot coming out next. He's looking thoughtfully. The Toy Poodle takes to third place. Poodle. Good day for the Poodles. And the Frenchie gets a look in at the end, little French Bulldog. <laughs> Very happy, happy Frenchie. No question who is the winner, though. This miniature poodle owned by Miss Melanie Harwood from Blackburn in Lancashire. I believe her second group win with a miniature poodle. Her lovely animal there, two-year-old dog called Frankie. Congratulations to Melanie. That's the winner of the utility group and goes forward to Sunday's competition. It's a magnificent trophy for the group, but possibly a better one to come on Sunday. You never know. What do you think of that? Crufts group winner. I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm so speechless, I can't believe it. I can't thank the George Derek Smith enough. This is just an amazing feeling. Now, you've been in dogs for over 30 years yourself. And so you're fairly young in the grand scheme of things, but your kennel has been going for a very, very long time. Um, have you ever won such a top award at Crufts? Yes, I won uh, the group here in 2006 with his grandfather. So yeah, this is, this is quite special. So keeping it in the family. Oh yes, keeping it in the family. <laughs> Many congratulations, Melanie, and to your beautiful dog. This is your third group winner, everybody, to go forward to Best in Show on Sunday night. And now we'll see a lap of honour from our winner. Uh, the, uh, coming back on Sunday, Melanie will be very thrilled. Her there, always ready to go. Our utility group winner for Crufts 2017, the miniature poodle, Minaret's best kept secret. So tune in on Sunday to see him compete for best in show at Crufts 2017. Very stylish. A very popular winner and an ecstatic Melanie there.
ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to introduce the second of the group to be judged. So now you join us for the second group this evening. This is the toy group. All the best of breeds from the toy judging today going to parade into this Crufts group ring. We've seen the utility group winner. That's three we've got for Sunday night. Frank Kane's still up here with me in the commentary box. We're looking forward to the toy breeds, aren't we? Absolutely. There's uh, usually a lot of quality in them. And I'm sure with still more to come. Her dogs have been awarded almost 900 chances. The toy breeds are often a miniaturization of sporting breeds, uh, so which, which makes it very interesting. Often bred down. They are, often the weak ones in the litter were given to the ladies of the house, and they kept them small as companions, and that's how we developed many of the toy breeds. So this temperament absolutely group vital group in these little to toy breeds. They are companion and animals first and foremost. Sofa mates. <laughs> <laughs> and bed warmers, actually. The comforter dogs yes, they were known as, true. yes. So here comes our judge for the toy group tonight. This is Zena Thorne Andrews. Her Drakesleet kennel, famous for Irish wolfhounds and miniature wire-haired dachshunds. I think it's something over 140 champions in those a breeds. Re remarkable record. So here they come. The first of the toys, the little monkey-faced Affenpincher. And here comes the Australian Silky, the Australian Silky Terrier. White coat, black nose and eyes, the Bichon Frise. The Bolognese. And another little of the same Bichon family, the Bolognese. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. So you're responsible for the judging today, aren't you? At least of one of the and, sexes. And, 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 and here is the Cavalier King Charles, and uh, he's just looking a little tired now. He showed perfectly earlier. And here's the long coat Chihuahua. And now the smooth coat Chihuahua. And the sp ah, little the smooth. The Chinese crested. Here comes the Chinese crested. The Coton de Toulier. The Coton de Toulier. Still going really well. It's a long day for some of these little dogs. And uh, tail up, happy face. And here's the English Toy Terrier, distinctive high stepping action. Again, looking just a little the bit uh, diffident on the carpet here. Here's the Griffon coming in now. The Havanese. Little Griffon Bruxellois followed by the Havanese. And now the Italian Greyhound. The high stepping Italian Greyhound, a picture of elegance. Certainly one of the most graceful the in this group. Chin. The little Japanese chin. That's a cheeky face. The King Charles Spaniel. Here's the other of the Royal Spaniels, the King Charles. Quite different in the head from the Cavalier. The Often known as the, the Charlie. And the little lion dog, the Lurvchen. The Maltese. And here is the Maltese. White coat, dark black pigment. Now we have the miniature pincher. The miniature pincher. The papillon. The butterfly dog, the papillon, coming next. He is like Pekinese. a spread butterfly. Spread wings of a butterfly. And here's the little Pekingese. A little reluctant to come into the big ring, I think. The perky pom, brisk action, a little jaffa on legs. Comes the pug. 
And here's the pug, always a popular breed in this group. <laughs> Can't make up his mind which side he wants to go on. <laughs> and the last of our toy group, this is the Yorkshire Terrier. Thank you very much, Graham. It's now my pleasure, along with Kim, to commentate for you on the second of the cycling groups here at Grant 2017 on the second day. So, our very experienced judge, so Zena Thorne Andrews taking the opportunity to walk the line and take a look at the best of breeds that have been sent through to her by all the judges who've been working so hard all day today. One of them, of course, are you. There's your Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. How do they strike you, Frank? First well, look. there's a lot of quality here. A couple of them are a bit diffident coming in on the on the carpet, but it's a big ring atmosphere with lots of lights, lots of noise. A lovely outline, the curving outline of the Italian Greyhound. The distinctive hindquarters of the Lurfchen. A very nice papillon. Gorgeous outline, the papillon actually standing there. So the first of our toy best of breeds developed in Germany, one of the oldest toy breeds in Europe, the little monkey-like black devil, the Affenpinscher. Sturdy, short-backed, harsh coat, no trim, of course. We're looking for a small head here, broad brow, and of course, the little monkey-like expression, which is so characteristic of this breed. Lively, strutting gait, lift those feet high, but not a hackney action. And this one's come from America to win. It's an American champion, Darkle Devil's Advocate, and uh, a big winner there, bred in England. That high stepping action, Jessica, we sometimes call it the floating goose step. <laughs> That's a fantastic description. <laughs> So, uh, this should be... There it is, the floating goose step. That <laughs> yeah. is so... It fits it beautifully. This lovely monkeyish face there. Now, the distinctive colours of the Australian Silky Terrier. This one is Limatine Rage in Red. And the Australian Silky Terrier was developed by a cross between the Australian Terrier, a working dog, and the Yorkshire Terrier. And it, it has inherited some of the characteristics of both Terrier temperament and Yorkshire Terrier colours. And that coat should be straight and fine and glossy, shouldn't it, Frank? The colours are very important. They should be the blue and rich tan and a silky texture. They were originally known as the Sydney Silky because the, the breeder, the most important breeder, lived in Sydney. It was called the Sydney Silky. This is champion Pamplona Just Magic, seven years old, so come from veteran, originally from Tenerife, the Bichon Frise, developed in France. We're looking for a balanced, smart little dog, close coat with sort of loose white curls and a plume of a tail, and very characteristic, that contrasting dark pigment. Substance in a small package. This might be a toy breed, but we don't want a lightweight. And the word Bichon means white dog, and the frise is the loose corkscrew curls, the dark pigmentation setting off those dark eyes. Very alert and a lovely outline. Of course, Michael Code, a very experienced handler there with the Bichon frise. Retired for three years, this one, and then come back today to beat the lot. And here we have a, another 
Bichon family breed. It's the Bolognese from Italy. This is Irish champion Little White Wonder Othello Matteo. It's a long name for a little dog. There is sturdy and square, and again the same loose flocks of white coat and dark pigmentation. Although there are similarities, Frank, to look at, the coat is completely different. What's it like to get your hands into? These are loose flocks of coat, and there's no trimming. They just have their feet tidied up. Um, the, the Bichon should be, we've just seen before, has a softer coat, and there's a little more trimming to it. But these are gorgeous characters, sturdy and square, typifies the breed. This is a lovely shape, this one, and full of self-importance on the move. I like it. Very much so, and Otty was the top UK rare breed in 2016, top puppy in 2015. The little Bolognese. Beautiful picture. One of the Royal Spaniels, this champion castle witch rave on with Rusmick, two and a half years old, known as Ronnie at home. The toy spaniels can be traced back to the 16th century. They were such popular companion animals, active, graceful, friendly, that gentle expression, terribly important. And with cavaliers, the skull should be almost flat between those ears that are quite high set. This one, a Blenheim, which is the rich chestnut and white, and it won the, the best male award under Meet Myself today. And uh, Zena's already seen it because um, the two judges didn't agree for best of breed, and Zena came in and chose the dog. However, he's gone a little bit tired now in the big ring atmosphere, which is a great shame. It sometimes happens, the dog's had a long day. Lovely picture, compact, lovely top line and large dark eyes. Lovely steady movement there. He's a beautiful mover. And now the first of the Chihuahuas, it's the long coat Chihuahua, and it's a famous one, champion Holiel Topaz Chancer, four and a half years old, come today to win for Leslie Adams from Surrey. Now the Chihuahua is reputedly the smallest breed of the wo world and it comes from the state of Chihuahua in Mexico. Slightly longer than tall when you look at the outline, level-backed, that high-set tail carried with a beautiful plume in this case, and those ears never stop working, do there's, they? There's flared ears and dome skull and large dark eyes. They're full of self-importance. Beautiful top line, balance on the move. And that long coat should be flat, maybe with a very slight wave, soft to the touch. And now we have the smooth coat Chihuahua, the same breed standard, but of course the coat completely different. This is champion Tiny Toy White Wolf at your own, just 20 months old. William was judged today by Pam Tranter, owned by Mr. Steve Rooney. Small and dainty, but full of character. And as far as this dog's concerned, he's the biggest one in the group ring this evening. The smooth coat and the long coat chihuahua have the same standard. Only differentiation is the coat. This smooth coat is quite a dense coat. Um, the, of course, the long coat has the fringing. But look at the tail carried over the back like a scimitar. And again, <laughs> full of alertness, this large ears shown there. And although they're small dogs, they have to be sound, they have to be well constructed and be able to move soundly to, to allow them to lead healthy lives. Now we have the Chinese Crested. So a very exotic breed. This one multi-champion, Nalufa Molossus Grazzi. Uh, exotic breed with this here the hairless variety hot to the touch with fringing a mane of hair fringing on the ears and protective veil over the joints of the, the pastons and the feet when my kids first started watching crafts 
They used to call this one My Little Pony <laughs> because the hair pattern is similar. Dead level top line, slightly longer than tall. I believe they come in two types, either cobbier or deer-like, the finer, racier ones. Yes. A very happy temperament here. One of the breed features are these long toes, giving them flexibility. And large, erect ears, covered in hair, dark almond eyes coming towards you. And this long, fine foreface, full of quality here. All the way from Russia. The Coton de Tullier, this is uh, the royal dog of Madagascar, comes from the island of Tula. The name comes from the cotton texture of that coat, which is long and fine and single. Many of the coats we've been talking about are double with a finer, softer undercoat. This is just a single layer, black pigment in the nose, round eyes, slightly shorter foreface framed by those high set ears. And this one's come all the way from West Virginia in the USA to, to win. The, the outline of the Coton de Tullia is very distinctive. There's a rise over the loin and a fall to the tail. Now, that is breed specific. The tail carried correctly here. Smart, free-striding action. And actually quite deep-bodied when you get your hands under that coat. This five-year-old dog is called Monkey at home, always relaxed, apparently nothing gets to him, not even the group ring at Crufts. Now, the English Toy Terrier. Um, I've talked about the miniaturization of sporting breeds, and here's an example of one. The English Toy Terrier is bred down from the Manchester Terrier, uh, from the Terrier group finer boned, but sharing the same features of black and tan coloration, but much finer, daintier, and with a high stepping action. The long, narrow wedge of a head topped with those characteristic candle flame ears, very important in this breed. Although they're a toy breed, they're st still very game and could see could still see off the odd rodents, I'm sure. So this is very fine and dainty here. The black and tan colouring characteristic on that thick, glossy coat. And what, what are the things on the front legs? On the tan markings, we just see the black thumb, thumb mark, which is important and a breed feature. A black spot just above the pastern. Champion cat dance mini the minx at Fenimore is a six-year-old Griffon Bruxellois, another one with a little cheeky monkey face. They hail from Belgium with a touch of the Affen Pincher in them. Can be rough or smooth coated, red, black or black and tan. This a gorgeous red. Cobby balanced and square is what we're looking for. And this is one of the great character breeds. They're full of character. They're cobby, big ribbed, and again, this crisp red coat here. The head's quite large in proportion, isn't it, Frank? And a, a wide skull, big dark eyes. And those tiny little ears, high set and folded over. They were used originally as, as um, guard dogs for the stables and, uh, and as uh, rodent dogs. They kept, kept down the vermin in the stables. Hmm. Cheeky little griff on Bruxellois. And now the Havanese, the national dog of Cuba. It is one of the Bichon family, which they sometimes known you as the Bichon Havanese. Um, it is compact, comes in a variety of colours. Again, the fairly broad skull. The top line should rise slightly to the tail set. The judge just feeling the coat texture there. It should be silky. And they should have a jaunty gait. This, this one has come from Merseyside from, to win and uh, with her owner, Mrs. Catherine Muscroft. 
And that can coat, coat can come in any color that's acceptable, can't it? With a, a wave or a very slight curl to it. Mm. You can see particularly at the back of the dog there. Dead level top line. It's um, relatively new in the showings of this country. They've only had challenge certificates, so they could become champions for the last few years. So, But they're very popular, very friendly dogs, full of character and confidence. Small, sturdy, lively little Havanese. Elegance personified this, a greyhound in miniature, the Italian greyhound. Their heritage goes all the way back to Pompeii, although in this country, since around about the 17th century, frequently depicted in old paintings. Fine, long head, rose ears folded back there, deep, narrow chest and that arching top line, very characteristic. Uh, showing off wonderfully the high stepping action and curved loin. They're fine boned and dainty. You haven't to be clumsy footed around an Italian greyhound. Oh goodness, no, you wouldn't want to trip over that. But they've dog. got beautiful coat and skin and they're a joy to live with and love home comforts, but also like a good gallop in the park. And grooming, you groom this dog with a beautiful velvet <laughs> pad. <laughs> Now the Japanese chin, Sangria celebration of Shionag, and uh, as one from a big entry today for Joyce McFarlane, it's a cobby dog. It came originally from China, but a gift to the Empress of Japan meant that the breed became very popular and was developed in Japan, hence the name. Should always be a stylish mover, this one. That coat is long, soft, straight, and silky. They've got such a distinctive head, haven't they? Yes, it, it's, you know, they've got this padded muzzle, this rounded skull, and dark eyes, this lovely padded plushness in the face, and a squint in the corner of the eyes, a little bit of white showing in the corner of the eye. Compact, cobby, but fine boned. They also come in red and white, that's shades of lemon or red. The black and white is the more frequently seen colour. The gorgeous little Charlie, this one champion, a mantra regal duke, almost three years old. He's known as Kenny at home with Tracy Jackson. Favoured originally by Charles II and a relative, of course, of the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. He's called the English Toy Spaniel in some countries. We need him to be cobby. He's refined, gentle and reserved, and that face is such a characteristic of this breed. Domed head, wide set eyes, low set ears that are always really well feathered. The two, two royal sponsors, the Cavalier and the King Charles, were shown together for a long time and uh, separated only in 1945. Um, originally, the Spaniels had longer faces, but in the 19th century, the flatter-faced breeds became popular, and many breeders went for this domed skull. This one, a gorgeous tricolour. And now the Lurfchen, um, champion Giaminelli Cream Cracker, a big winning dog. This is the little line dog, and we see this broad skull, fairly short foreface, and this mane of hair over his forequarters. This silky textured coat. And this, this um, coat is shaved, isn't it, at the back? They, they don't come like that naturally. No. This is the way they're presented, adding to the little lion dog aspect oh, of the uh, name. Of course, they were called little lion dogs, and it was thought that the breed attributed them with the strength and power of the lion, and it, they were protective, therefore, for the owner. So they carried some sort of uh, canine folklore with them. Intelligent and affectionate little dogs. They should be strong and active and always with that slightly aloof, proud head carriage. A beautiful eyes, a beautiful headpiece on this dog. Male, 
instantly recognizable with that flowing white coat, the Maltese champion, Zumanic stars and stripes, come from America, or it's known as America at home, comes from um, Melton Mowbray in Leicestershire, actually, not from America at all, <laughs> known to have been in Malta way back in the Roman times, black pigment, those lovely dark eyes, and this long, straight, silky coat. They can have slight lemon markings sometimes, but always with that contrasting black pigment. Again, this uh, lovely expression from dark eyes. We were looking for a level top line. And free-flowing movement. In the Royal Library of Malta, there's portraits of the breed uh, dating back to 1833 so they're a long established breed plume tail carried over the back and just look at those little round black padded feet kicking out now a judge now looking at the miniature pincher its champion Trenson Fluma Diddle and uh, it's a red dog, and again, the pincher is a miniaturized breed from the working breed, the pincher which we'll see in the working group. Short and compact, a wedge-shaped head, sharply pricked ears, and with a high-stepping action. And miniature pinchers are actually allowed a true hackney action, aren't they? Square in outline. Yes, it's... The high stepping action is a breed feature and it's very difficult to get to high stepping action with accuracy in the movement. But this dog shows it off nicely and the top line should slope from withers to the tail set. A very good top line. This one's still a young dog, only 23 months old, but already a champion. Deep chested and those feet are almost cat-like, aren't they? And. Uh, Sturdily bone, they're a sturdy breed. The Papillon, named for those ears that look like a butterfly's wings. They can also come in the Faline, which is the moth with folded ears, but this one, beautiful ears. French for butterfly, of course. Papillon, longer bodied, slightly level top line high set plume tail and the feet of this breed are described as being hair like the coats abundant fine silky and flowing and this one has come from a very successful kennel in japan the queen blessed kennel i've had winners here at crufts before full of quality we like this when it came in holding itself very well silky textured coat that should be fine and dainty Positive movement there, though, light and flowing, very light on the toes. It was great appeal. The little papillon. In fact, that's the personification of a toy dog, isn't it? Beautiful. Fa fine bones, dainty, this lovely elegance in its long foreface. Now, the Pekingese, our judge going over the sturdy body. This is a a young female, only 23 months of age, Gidoron Kara. The judge picking it up there, they should pick up heavy for their size. And most of the weight of in a Pekingese is at the front. They're broad chested and heavy. A true aristocrat, the Pekingese, dating back to the Tang dynasty in China and owned by members of the imperial court. No commoner was allowed to own one at that stage. And this uh, broad chest give them, gives them this wide front action, slightly rolling because it's lighter in the hind quarters. That is a breed typical feature and breed typical movement. The flat skull, broad under jaw, and very important that they have wide nostrils like all the flat faced breeds. Gorgeous, large, round, dark eyes should give them that expression. The cheeky little Pomeranian. This one, Lariva's Tarquin Fly the Bear, just 22 months old. Owned by Avril Cothera Purdy and uh, 
judged today by Julie Sparrow, developed here in Britain and first popularized by Queen Victoria was the pom, bread from the German Spitz originally, compact, described as buoyant, a little pocket rocket of a toy dog. They should have a foxy look, shouldn't they, a Frank? Fo a foxy look and expression and this shortness of back, of relatively sh this was spinning around with excitement and a brisk action, absolutely straight coming towards us, which is correct. Neat little prick ears appearing from all that abundant mane of coat. It, it's the smallest of the Spitz breeds. I always say that the orange ones look like a little Jaffa on legs. <laughs> and that coat, surprisingly, is quite harsh, it, isn't it? It, sh it should be straight and stand off, but it's not soft to the touch. It should be harsh to the touch, like all the Spitz breeds. The little Jaffa Pomeranian. Now, yes, the pug showing typical stubbornness, wanting her own way here. Um, the, the pug is Catrelma Gina Lola Brigida, and only two years old, and uh, winning best of breed. Two judges today, but again, they couldn't agree for best of breed, and our toy group judge here, Zena, was called in, and she chose the bitch as best of breed. It should have a relatively large head, almost round, short muzzled, and a little wrinkle, especially around those, um, uh, the, across the forehead and around the eyes. Black velvet ears, either rose or button, aren't the, they? The, the breed standard calls for multum in parvo, which means a lot of dog in a, short, in a small space. So they are substantial for their size. And they have this rolling gait full of self-importance and a tight twist to the tail. Look at the breadth in that body for such a small dog. And neat black velvet ears, so uh, dark eyes. <laughs> Look. And this is the last of our toy best of breeds, the instantly recognizable Yorkshire Terrier with that beautiful blue and tan coat. Paramount importance in this breed. Long, perfectly straight, glossy, that dark steel blue with the rich, bright tan. Relatively small head for the size of the dog with a flat skull and V-shaped ears, bright in expression. See the lovely tan coloration in the head furnishings. Three shades of tan, darkest at the root, fading to lighter at the ends. Steel blue body coat and a good Yorkshire Terrier coat is cold to the touch, like cool silk. And this is very jaunty in its action, very nice front movement and a lovely head and expression and very good top line. Dead level and quite a nice compact body should, there should be, shouldn't there? Terrier-like, terrier-like in temperament, sturdy. We saw the judge brushing the coat out to feel the texture and the colour. So Zena Thorne Andrews walking the line. She's had a chance to look at all these best of breeds in detail. Who is she going to choose to win the toy group? Again, Zena is always a very decisive judge. Great knowledge. Walking towards the beginning end of the line. And gestured in is the 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 silky and the bichon, the long coat chihuahua, the coton de tulia. In comes the Italian greyhound. The Lurfchen comes in. The Maltese comes forward. Ah, and down to the Yorkshire Terrier. So there is our shortlist for the toy group. The smart outline of the Bichon and the long coat Chihuahua. Distinctive rise over the top line of the Coton. The elegance of the Italian. The clipped hind quarters of the Lurvchen there.
So they're just reorganizing themselves so that Zena can see them move again. Her short list. Starting with the Australian Silky Terrier, Limatine Rage in Red, three and a half years old, called Maddie, belongs to Jonathan Malt from Crew in Cheshire, handled by Lisa Malt today. And then we have the Bichon, Pamplona Just Magic, seven years of age now, so uh, lasting well and still full of full of life and vigor and showing well. And we see the little black pads driving away from us. Dark pigment all the way down. Oh, what a picture, that little long coat chihuahua standing there, all to attention. Champion, Holly L. Topaz Chancer, Jeffrey, the little long coat chihuahua. This has gone really well today and is in peak form. Still putting on a really good performance. And now it's the turn of Dr. Handelaide. The jaunty action of the Coton de Tulia, American Grand Champion, Hope Press Monkey Business. Looking really well, actually. Now, this Italian greyhound has gone really well. High stepping, but still coordinated in its front action. Full of quality. Looks Graceful, like a lightweight, but still with substance. You can still see the greyhound in miniature there, can't you? There the, we see why it's called the little lion dog with the, the mane and the clipped hind quarters and the plume tail. The, and next. the Maltese is full of beans. <laughs> Wanting to go. Champion Zamanic Stars and Stripes, a big winner, group winner before. Compact, level backed, high set tail. <laughs> and still enjoying the day. That's lovely to see. And the last of our finalists, the Yorkshire Terrier, my precious JP Kagayaki. A toy with the temperament of a terrier, full of confidence. Perfect tail set and carriage. And come all the way from Japan to compete here at Crufts. Holding off all the other Yorkshire Terriers to come through to the group tonight and be the last of our finalists. So the boards are being called out. Zena's ready to choose her toy group winner for 2017. It is the Yorkshire Terrier who's come all the way from oh, Japan. Yes. Look at her face. <laughs> Very happy, Odie. The, the, the Yorkshire Terrier put on a great show with wonderful top line and carriage and lovely colour. My precious JP Kagayaki. The long coat chihuahua takes second place. That's Jeffrey Holiel Topaz Chancer from Surrey. Michael Code with the Bichon Frise takes group three. And for fourth, fourth place, it's the Australian, the Silky Terrier. There's a nice win for the breed. So it's the Yorkshire Terrier which will be coming back on Sunday to compete for Best in Show. The Yorkshire Terrier. A little oh, <laughs> owner looks absolutely stunned. The dog's not phased at all. The little Yorkshire Terrier winning Best in the Toy Group for Crufts 2017. Ah, uh, there's Mark Henry presenting the trophy. A dog photographer of great pedigree. He's been photographing British show dogs for many years. And a lovely shot with the owner and the Yorkshire Terrier. My precious, it's called. It'll be even more precious now. Congratulations. You have come all the way from Japan, I understand. Yes, so I'm 
so happy and I'm so I, I don't have any words. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> just go, oh my gosh. Now this is the first time visit for this dog to the UK. Uh, no, I have, uh, I have been to many times here. Then this is my f first time for her. Oh, anyway, oh, God. <laughs> so that's her first CC in the UK, but is she a champion in other parts of the world? Uh, yes, she, uh, she won the international champion and Japan champion, and uh, I, I, I'm sure I was showing at the Westminster. Then she won the best, uh, best of winners. So she won a lot. <laughs> so very well traveled. Shizuru, you must be over the moon. <laughs> yes, so, oh my God. Congratulations, Shizuru, the Yorkshire Terrier, the winner of the toy group. So there we have it, Shizuru Kadawaki with my precious JP Kagayaki, all the way from Japan. And wonderful to see her joy at winning. That's marvelous to see. I love the fact that she's just given us a list of all the things this dog has won, but the pleasure of winning best in group at Crafts is unmatchable. And I'm sure she'll be enjoying this lap of honor and still full of running, wonderful carriage. And there we have it, our toy group winner, who of course will be competing in the best in show ring on Sunday night. So what a day it's been at Crafts. Here we're going to have highlights to show you tomorrow on YouTube. Of course, there's all the show dogs that we're going to see. Tomorrow is going to be such a busy day with all the gun dogs competing. So I hope you'll be able to join us again. Our coverage, of course, more or less wall to wall on YouTube. You're not going to miss anything. And you can join us also on More 4 and on Channel 4. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>